Do you want to conserve your wealth the way of Allah and His Messengers using the same method established by the Khalifa Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu and implemented by Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu? Then consider purchasing gold and silver coins and bullion bars from sunnacurrency.com where they use astonishing Islamic designs on mint 24 karat gold in pure silver. Sunnah Currency is now certified by and a proud member of the Islamic Monetary Council IMC. This is the Islamic solution to the current global uncertainty. This is what Allah made halal for us. Invest in precious metals in the way of the authentic sunnah which has intrinsic value. Protect your wealth by having it in your hands and not someone else's. Please use the link in the description box to get a special endgame discount on your purchase and get it dispatched today. By using the endgame discount code during your purchase, you can also help us build and progress on our projects for the Ummah, inshaAllah. Yes. Sorry, you were saying about um hold on, let me just admit brother Sean Noor as well. Sean Noor. Salam alaikum. Uh yes, so everyone should be muted and the recording has begun now. And um uh yeah, but but I'm not getting into this, I'm just uh just chatting for a few minutes. So um yeah. Sorry, brother Yahya, you were saying about reflecting the sun and the moon. Yeah, no, I was saying that every time uh, you approach this topic with someone and you mention to them that the sun and the moon appear to be the exact same size and their immediate response is, oh no, it's this big and it's this far. Mm. But that's that their eyes have been deceived because, like I said, they appear to be exactly the same size and that's further proven mm. by the eclipse. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, subhanAllah, like I mentioned, that everybody needs to go do their own study and uh, truly reflect and ask Allah to open our hearts and uh, guide us. Yeah, I mean, I mean, inshallah, yeah. And um, I think it's only by um, something like this taking place that when they start hearing like people like you speaking, you know, uh, with your voice, your where you're from, uh, your background, your experience, and all of this starts to come together in a way where um yeah basically people don't see it as necessarily being something sectioned off to a misguided small group or a crazy small group you know it makes all the sense salam alaikum uh, yeah, good to see brother shah Noor and uh brother Sadi. Oh, good, it's Sadi. good to see you bro i i apologize man i didn't see the the, the new group on the on the telegram okay uh, and i, and I, 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 I like how, i like how you are like that for me that's probably how you manage to keep up with all of the social media. For me, my attention goes to everything. I see everything. So, yeah, I, that's why I have to switch off. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, and then I just saw. I was thinking, wait a minute. I thought, I thought, I, I thought you might uh, be on the on the um, on the end game group. And right. I was waiting. Then I thought, oh my god, what am I doing? I was looking. No. And I saw the no group. Yeah, no. Uh, actually, brother Farhan mentioned uh, to create a new group because. Um, it's more probably for those who are interested, for those who are kind of connected to this kind of topic. You know, there's still a large group that are still with us, yeah. but aren't necessarily feeling this topic. Uh, yeah. So yeah, all, all respect to them. But that's why a new group had to be created. Salam alaikum, brother Sadi. Yes, unmute, please. Yeah. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Yeah. Did I did I miss much? No, no, nothing's happened yet. Nothing's just uh, it's like um. It's like a pre-meeting. Salam alaikum, brother Sadi. How are you? Salam alaikum, brother Shah. Good to see you. Alhamdulillah, you too. You too. Finally. <laughs> yeah, we, finally. We meet. Alhamdulillah. That's true, actually. You know, the funny thing is, yeah, so... Meet. <laughs> yeah, meet exactly. <laughs> this sense, absolutely. Honestly, I was just thinking, even before I just got started with this, I was like, I would much rather be face-to-face -face with these people in a room with a, a projector screen or something and doing it like this. But... You know, here, Alhamdulillah. At least you got this. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, very good. Inshallah. So, Adi, so you're uh, having a little bit of a easy moment after a very intense period studying. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing your thesis, yeah. right? Your thesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. thesis. Yeah. 
PhD. But sorry, no, 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 no. Ma masters. Masters. PhD. Okay, mashallah. mashallah. What, what are you doing? I'm, I'm studying like biomedicine. Okay. Okay, mashallah. So he he has a very close uh, perspective on everything. <laughs> Yeah, I I'm working with nanotechnology as well, so I have an insider uh, perspective on all of this. <laughs> I I it would be interesting to pick your brains on. Um, I mean, obviously, like just to jump into it, but you know the whole graphene oxide thing and the, and the yes, actually, I have worked with graphene oxide. So okay, inshallah, wow. one day it will be very interesting to have a discussion about this. Inshallah, yes. yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah of course. I saw this. Um, I saw this guy with a vial, like you know, it's like it looked like a clear liquid. Mm. Then he takes mm. a magnet, and then suddenly he starts putting it there. And then, and so this is basically it's the graphene oxide inside. When he puts the magnet in, suddenly you see this kind of like it's this black type of, yeah, um, like it's almost like it's it's like a, it looks like a ghost, and it starts mm. coming towards the the magnet wherever he comes because it's all like uh, it's it's all. How do I say it? It's all coming together, isn't it? And when he takes the magnet, it just disappears. And then when he exactly. puts the magnet back, all, all of that black graphene oxide comes again. Um, I, yeah. It's because we're, we are made of carbon. Like you, you living things are mostly made of carbon and graphene is all carbon. So there's, a, there's, a, there's something to think about, you know? Like, yeah. Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But today we talk about the bigger picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy for, uh, for everyone to be a little bit comfortable and you know, kind of speak their mind a little bit. Um, but just you know, with what I have in mind, at least there's some kind of structure of what's planned to go through. You know, you know, um, voice. I think, yeah. uh, like, um, maybe mentioning it, maybe on the smaller uh, end game group. I think yeah. because I, I mean, maybe. All right, look, this is, is going to go on YouTube anyway for those who miss out. It's gonna go on YouTube. They're gonna be on YouTube. All right, but but the thing is, I I was thinking that there might be some brothers who may not obviously be on 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 this, right? Mm -hmm. But they might still be interested in joining in the discussion. I've kind of sent enough feelers out. Uh, I know what you're saying. Uh, I've sent the community post. I've sent the emails. I've sent the Telegram. Um, I've you know, it's been people like are just people are just shy. To, yeah yeah but i mean that's what i'm saying so wherever people have shown an interest because there are people who have not been on this topic uh but just at the last moment they have shown that i'm interested in what you're gonna show so for that reason i've kind of included those it's not it's not like a like some people say a bubble of people who all think the same and believe the same um yeah so i have included some of those and the rest they'll get to benefit on uh, youtube inshallah yeah yeah, so anyway, um, okay, so um, actually I'm just going to get started. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> okay, Bismillah. All right, so anyway, so the book is uh, still the same title, inshallah, when this finally does come together. Uh, this is going to be the title of the book. Uh, is the protected Quran the absolute truth? Is the earth level? Yeah. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, but always, I just want to say because since this will be released on YouTube, yep. that uh, nobody should judge anyone's uh, disposition about what what they believe in because what we're presenting here mm. is just skepticism. It's not because we haven't seen the absolute truth we ha yeah. nobody has seen the absolute truth yeah. so unless you see the absolute truth you're only left with skepticism and questioning because it's it's not definite so we're not saying that what we present here what we talk about here today is set in concrete it's not it's I, I, but it comes from a place of being skeptic being uh, because being skeptic is what differentiates us from the animals. Mm. Animals don't question, we question. Mm. And upon questioning, mm. you peel back the layers. So this is all, all we're doing. We're just trying to peel back the layers and trying to question, question, question. That's it. I think, um, brother, I just add to that. It's a bit, I think it'd be a bit more than that because I think there are some truths that you can 
quantify yeah. and quantify. So I think we should be clear that there will be there will be absolute truths that we're going to be supporting. That's true as well. Yes, there will, there will be those which are based on, like you said, skepticism and analysis. Absolutely, and more <laughs> imagination, right? So I think mm -hmm. that should be both. Clear, both will be covered. Yes, you're right. Yeah, both will be covered. Yeah. Um, salam alaikum, brother Shah, my local brother Shah. Um, yeah. So you're chiming in, I think, whilst you're on the train. <laughs> um yeah when you're trying to connect the audio okay yeah so we're just we're just keeping this kind of a little bit flexible and i'm just going to get started and um yeah what you said brother sadi uh what i thought of when you said that was yeah it's the it's the questioning it's the skepticism that then makes that knowledge and information your own because you've questioned it and then you've thought about yes. it now it truly is your own thinking and not what someone's telling you to think you know so yeah so i love what you said about the questioning and skepticism okay salam alaikum brother shah yeah yeah so we're just going to get started yeah no no yeah let's get started let's get started is it is, it, is, um, is, is brother shah's audio on or off i think he's not he's not connected i can't hear you brother i know you've unmuted but there's something about your mic yeah nope nothing Nothing. Don't worry. Inshallah, inshallah, you'll get you'll get it connected. Yeah, there's nothing coming through. But anyway, it's good to see. You. Uh, before uh, we start, brother Ways, you might be well served to explain your choice of title because it's an it's quite the title, honestly. Really? Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It's a good title. Well, well, basic. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I have to say, um, most of the credit goes to Sheikh Imran Hussain because um, he really has pushed, at least in my life, for the experience from late 2019, returning to this Quran, and then looking at everything with a whole new lens, um, and just trying to connect to it in a way that people have tried to prevent us from connecting to the Quran. And one of the biggest things that he's emphasized is that this is the absolute truth. So people might be might be familiar with me using that label, absolute truth, when did those couple, few interviews with Sheikh Imran Hussain, because it was from him speaking and saying the absolute truth that that stuck with me. And when he would quote the Quran ayah about this being absolute truth, so that really stuck with me. And I know it annoys some people, because those who are the skeptics or rejecting what we're saying, they want to say, I will tell you the absolute truth. <laughs> you want to know the absolute truth? But really and truly, I'm not saying that I know the absolute truth, but I do say that the, what do you call it? The, the Quran has the absolute truth. Salam alaikum, brother Yusuf. Salam alaikum, brother Yusuf. Wa alaikum salam. Can you hear me? Yes. Norseman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Norse. That's Norseman. I'd like going to on, see guys? with your ex. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. You guys just start the presentation now. Yeah, just kind of just comfortably getting in, just uh, saying a few words and uh, oh, yeah. Wow, mashallah, is that, that you? That's Yusuf. Yes, that's, Yusuf. that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam, brother Shah Noor. How are you, man? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's good. Originally, originally from Canada, I'm guessing. Was it originally from Canada? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, what? I don't want to interrupt you because you just gone into the presentation. So continue on. I'm going to mute myself now. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this is going to be the title of the book when it, when everything is complete, inshallah, uh, because right now we're about to go through part two today. So part one was covered, which was the earth. Part two is the heavens. And I think part three will be all of the celestial bodies up there, uh, the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars. So that will be part three. And when that is done and everything has been refined again and again and checked and corrected, eventually this will be published and it will be made free, inshallah, um, as long as there's funding to get it all published. But anyway, I won't try to get too ahead of myself. Who knows even if that happens. But yeah, so I'll get started with uh, the heavens now. So before we get started, uh, I just want to remind myself that we are kind of nobodies here. Yeah? Uh, well, I am and uh, don't really know much. Well. Yeah, don't really know much. Uh, so let's not assume. Yeah. Uh, let's not assume anything. So even everything that I've got, I will try not to assume that I know, and I will see how everyone kind of responds and reacts to that. Um, because you know what happens when people assume, right? Yep. Uh, I won't go into that. 
Anyway, so Nahmadu wa nusallila Rasulul Kareem, Fama Bad, Fawdu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, wa Yasirli Amri, Wahlul Ukda Tamil Lisani Yafka Hukali, Allahumma Arin al Hakka, Hakka war Zuknad, Tid Ba'ah, Wa Arin al Batila, Batila war Zuknad Tinaba. Oh Allah, enable us to see the truth uh, as truth and give us the ability to follow it and enable us to see the falsehood as false and give us the ability to refrain from it. Okay. And, right. So um, these are the, still the contents. For oh, God is true. Okay. So I won't go through the contents. Unless anyone does want me to go through the contents, or shall I just go to just uh, you can just run through it. Yeah, okay, all right. that'll be good. So, so introduction for God is true and every person lies. That's from uh, the previous scripture, but I find that it's interesting that it seems mm. to uh, highlight something that seems to be quite true these days, uh, and especially in the last couple of years, that we really don't know uh, what people are telling us is true, but we can rely on what Allah has said. So ultimately that resonates for me. Um, so that, that is expanded upon. Um, part one, the summary. So if anyone does, because this is the first time it's going to go on to the main Endgame Islam channel, but really part one has already been done, which is the earth, the description. Uh, mm -hmm. the you know, just to, just, to, yeah. just to stop you on something, yeah. just in that, just the, la just the first point, for God is true and every person lies. That's actually a, uh, that's actually a fundamental truth about uh, when it comes to Hassan in that every person in the existence is a lie in the sense that it, it's it, you're you're pointing to your own uh, creation but what you what, what you are is uh, is uh, is is a creation imperfection yeah this is so allah exists but you don't exist in that sense that's, so that's this is what i'm saying so for god is true and everything else is just uh, is, is is creation you see Absolutely. and, yes. and and that's uh, and that's actually a part of your son as well that wow. you get to the point where you don't exist anymore that should be the objective you see so every and that's why when we make istighfar we say astaghfirullah mm. part of saying astaghfirullah is just existing mm. we 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 make we make uh, we make uh, we ask allah for for forgiveness for, for for just existing does that make sense yeah 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 absolutely mm -hmm. i never connected it with the son but, but what you're saying i'm i'm seeing that yeah yeah, yeah. So, so, so then going back to God being true, God is the truth, and that's that's another layer of truth upon His word as well, wow. right? So, you know, yeah. Any, anyway, so, so that just no, no, no I appreciate that. I appreciate I just that. thought that was uh, interesting. Yeah. So um, we'll be going uh, quickly into that anyway um, in the introduction. So part one, uh, as I was saying, um, I had to release it on my own personal teaching channel because uh, YouTube gave us some strikes. So I had to put it on there. But basically, for those who aren't familiar, I have covered part one uh, on another channel, and it's the earth, uh, its descriptions, and all of its connotations in the Quran. So I've done the, I've done pretty extensive work going through everything connected to that. So if anyone wants to know how Allah describes the earth, but I'm going to go through a quick summary for those who didn't see that. Um, and then yeah, part two. So this is what today is really all about, which is part two: um, Noah, the heavens, and the waters above. So, as I said, part two is really about the heavens, but as you can see, I've put included in that, I've included uh, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam and uh, the waters above. I won't give anything away, but as we go through this, people will realize the significance of these two connected to the heavens, inshallah. Um, yeah, so being firm and uncompromising on clear verses. Uh, yeah, so it's about, uh, as Brother Farhan mentioned earlier, and as we were speaking, as you were talking about, um skepticism so it's about so it's really about um yeah uh, focusing on the ayat in the quran where allah talks about the muhkamat and the mutashabihat so the clear and the unclear so this is a common theme even to this day whether you have seen that uh, ayat from the quran or not that everything that you think about should be addressed okay is this clear or is this not clear so it's a very important issue as well before we get into that and then uh, we will be going into the signs in the horizons, um, returning vision to the heavens above. So as you can see already, um, yeah, it's best if I just go into that. So I'm just going to read these out. Returning yeah. vision. Yeah. 
Yeah, returning vision to yeah, the room. Yeah, go on, sorry, Sadi. Yeah, it's a just just go run through. Them. Yeah, because I'm yeah, it's gonna be ruined. I've just gotta, yeah. Uh so signs in the horizons, uh, because this is all about cosmology. So horizon horizon is the middle part between the heavens and the earth. So I've covered the earth, the horizons uh is the meeting point, and then we'll be going into the heavens. And there's an important issue about returning our vision itself to the heavens above. Um and uh, yeah, uh, seeking insight in the days of confusion. I don't know about you guys. Do you guys agree that we're living in a very confusing time? <laughs> yeah. It, it gets worse by the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and does anyone look into the heavens? Or... For, for those who think, obviously. For those who are not thinking, it's just yeah. lie. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So what about returning vision to the heavens above? Are people looking up or are they looking down? They're looking at their screens. They're looking at the screen. <laughs> um, yeah, so then five. It's just, it, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just this morning where um, I was just listening to Shah Hamza Yusuf. He was saying that people have stopped looking into the sky mm -hmm. and because of light pollution, they mm -hmm. don't see the stars anymore. And yeah. the stars were one of the biggest, uh, one big sign that people, even in the past, like uh, people who are not uh, Muslim, like, you know, they look up at the stars and they feel God just yeah. by looking at the stars. Yeah, and now, uh, you know, returning, of course, Absolutely. the vision to the sky. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this all began for me a couple of years ago when um, when this whole thing happened. And you remember when we were connecting with Sheikh Muhammad Folds in the early days. My thinking back then was that, yeah, I know already we've got a problem because I remember watching that um, Christopher Nolan movie. What was it? In Interstellar. <laughs> Interstellar. I, we, we know it's all based on a lot of <laughs> rubbish. But there's interesting things to gain from there. Um, and I just remember that what resonated was that part where Matthew McConaughey says that we've stopped looking into the skies. You know, we don't look, we don't look up anymore. And that always stayed with me. Um, yeah, Ironically, so it's my favorite movie. What, Interstellar? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's a it good is, one. It is. It's a good one. Yeah. It's made very well. Um, yeah, there's a very important connection with the Nolan brothers and what they're doing and uh, Elon Musk, etc., etc. But anyway, won't go into that. Um, yeah, so number five, part number, part five. Assalamualaikum, brother. Uh, anyone else that has joined? Um, so yeah, if at any point anyone feels like that they want to chime in, go ahead. Okay, so part five, uh, the greatest, most difficult creation. Um, again, I th I've got a feeling that most people don't know this. Um, my mother, she's very well, um, no, she's very well uh, educated in the Islamic uh, field, in the Quran, in the Arabic, and so I would test her as someone who should know these things. And I was glad to hear that she did, but it was, it, you could clearly see it was something that was forgotten almost. Um, so, do you guys know what Allah says is the greatest, most difficult creation, or, or can you even imagine that Allah says that you know He uses the word difficult? In creating something but anyway we'll get we'll, we'll get into that uh the, yeah so the, i've seen that there's some kind of significance between the camel the raised heaven and the fixed mountains um then we get now we're getting really into the meat of it which is the seven heavens uh mm -hmm. and how it took two days allah says it took two days to create those seven heavens and there's a significance that allah mentions about the lowest heaven um then we go into the insight in the seven strong heavens so that's another thing people don't realize that why would allah describe the heavens as being created as strong yeah there's no other mm. oh yeah so it's more there's a few descriptions but one of the main ones is strong why would allah say that um so yeah and, yeah 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 and about taqwa as well god consciousness the connection to insight to taqwa to looking at to thinking about these uh, seven strong heavens um then i found that there's some kind of significance as well about the pairs being mentioned uh with the ships uh mm. with the seas and uh with the heavens yeah there's a very big significance of this emphasis of pairs but it's connected with the ships the seas the heavens then i go into the orbits which by the way the word the arabic word for orbits is almost identical to the arabic word for ships yeah uh, but I'll be going into that anyway. 
Um, swimming, there's a significance to the whole swimming as well, being described in the Quran. And um, yeah, basically, once you get to this point, you start to think, okay, what are they swimming in? Because if Allah says clearly that it's swimming, <laughs> what do you swim in? Yeah, it's obvious. You swim in water. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. and uh, yeah, this one, we'll see what people think. Uh, but there's a part where Allah is talking about um, using the Quran as uh, as what is it uh, doing a jihad with this Quran and a great jihad yeah against the disbelievers but there's a close uh, mentioning of this with the two opposing seas um, no fatigue yeah so I've got a section emphasizing this as well for those who do believe in the Bible um, to uh, realize that yeah Allah, Allah clarifies things in the Quran yeah things that are there is a lot of truth in the previous scripture but what is not true is clarified in the Quran. And uh, one of them is, for me, is this whole idea that Allah rested on the seventh day uh, that they say in the previous scripture. Whereas, why would Allah make a significant mention in the Quran about there being no fatigue after the six-day creation? Because for me, mm -hmm. that's wisdom behind telling them that, yeah, that's an insertion from Iblis or that's a thing, something that you've got wrong. Um Okay, so I'll try to speed through the rest of this contents. The waters above meeting, the waters below. Um, uh, Isa alayhi salam returning in the days of Noah. Um, yeah, okay, so this is the last page of the contents. Visual perception of the concepts of raised and high. Because again, Allah uses these words. Yeah, Arabic word for raised and the Arabic word for high. Yeah. Uh, do you know those words by any chance, Brother Shanu? Raised and high. <coughs> no okay uh, we'll, we'll get into that um and the uh, heavens Iman, are... you contribute to that we yeah please Iman, who's uh, yeah. from from jordan mashallah yep yep sorry i might have missed sorry, was, that, yeah. was that for me oh okay salam alaikum brother wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah nice nice to have you here today how are you doing alhamdulillah thank you um yeah so sorry you're you're from uh where are you from brother from jordan jordan and your name is yaman oh, sure. yaman yeah yaman okay <coughs> uh, yeah so feel free to uh chime in at any point if there's anything that maybe uh you feel like you know uh would be beneficial uh please do go ahead and sure. yeah okay okay um i'm just going to I, I mean ex exactly this is interesting mashallah. like what what I like that you've done, Mashallah, is very experiential, like visual perception of raised and high. Right. Um, I mean, that's th th this is really good. So I I, I just want to ask something. Like, is this is this your like um this for 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 the for the book or how you how you're going to be structuring the the book? This is you, is this how you're going to be following it? According to the heaven point. section will definitely be like this. I will be refining the earth one, but the heavens is going to be like as you see it is in the book. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Inshallah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh yeah, so the heavens as a protected canopy. Again, these are Allah's words, yeah. Uh, in the Quran. Uh, this one is particularly interesting. Yeah. Protected yep. canopy. Yep. yep, absolutely. Um and this one. Alhamdulillah, see, this is what I'm grateful for doing this project is coming across things like this. So if you look at number 17, is there any God with Allah? In one of these ayats where Allah makes it clear about the earth being firm, yeah, a firm abode, and the mountains being firm as well. In this same one ayah, Allah mentions these two, and he says, A ilahumma Allah. Yeah, and just in case I forgot, Audhu Billah min shaitan rajim. He says, A ilahumma Allah. And he says that five times consecutively in each ayah yeah we'll get into that so there's something significant to that allah doesn't repeat anything for no reason, for uh, no reason. Allah, and it's along with this topic as well um so yeah and the other thing that's mentioned in the ayah as well do most of them know yeah and most of them don't know so what is that telling you as well um again uh, people are free to uh, tell me if they see something different um, okay, number 19. Are we assisting the disbelievers? Um, so yeah, now now at this point, uh, I'm going into some contentious areas. So I've tried to keep it cool for a while, 
but at this point now <laughs> be a little bit contentious no you're yeah yeah because i mean at yeah. the end of the day this is a very important issue uh it's not about trying to provoke anyone it's about just trying to clarify what it is that's going to make us successful and help each other um especially we're looking at how the ummah at large has been asleep with everything that's happened for the last couple of years right anyway um so are we assisting the disbelievers and then i've got a section on the lying deceiving denying and conspiring hypocrites i know it's a bit of a mouthful that one um then number 21 the heavens being off limits so this was mentioned at the end of the last part of the earth the heavens being off limits because it goes back to surah rahman uh the ayah number 33 that uh, me brother sadi very familiar with from very early days um uh, where Allah's made it very clear that they cannot pass the heavens and the earth without his authority so anyway so there's a section on that and now this was probably the biggest find this was the most amazing find and I'm still I still get chills as I even think about this one but we'll I'll we'll save that for that uh when we get there but the lamps so this this is a topic on the heavens today and in these heavens Allah makes it very clear there are lamps yeah the bimasabi or so, uh, something like that al misba the so, um so there's the lamps and the job they're being given to do is to god yeah so the heavens is being given two jobs to contain the lamps to god the heavens which we've just been told that is off limits yeah and what happens if they try to come near allah makes it very clear as well what happens missiles are sent yeah the word is missiles and in uh, surah an surah an nur um, in that ayah where lamps is also mentioned there's also the description of Allah's light um, being in a glass container as crazy as that sounds even as I utter these words but we'll get into that inshallah and finally yeah uh, the the ultimate big picture so yeah as you mentioned earlier today uh, Sadi that this is the big picture right we're avoiding the carbon and the graphene and the all of that stuff yeah that's the what's it the microscope no, no. isn't it yeah. is the big picture but really and truly the biggest picture is i think in surah nisa those five ayats where um the description is being given of what happened when shaitan um was cursed by allah you know and the response was that he's gonna he promises to take a portion to hell so that's the ultimate big picture for me uh so to finish off with that okay so that's quite a lot isn't it yeah but uh yeah so any thoughts before i get into the introduction any thoughts brothers take take over just for a minute uh Asmana, i i mean go ahead brother no no i, I, I mean <laughs> go, on, go on no 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 go 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 ahead go ahead i just had one thing to say like people uh some people you know people nowadays they have short attention spans so even even when they see the title of this video, they might say, "Oh, these these people are anti-science." I mean, we should just def we should just say, "What is science? Science is the quantification or study of anything that is observ anything that is observable. Some things are just not observable. It's like you have to use intuition. And also, science is true until it isn't. There mm -hmm. have been many long-standing theories in science." that were kind of held as religious beliefs almost. But then later they, they got disproved and then people changed their views. Yeah. So science is the study of, science is true until it isn't. Yeah. So yeah, basically that's, uh, yeah. This is, uh, th and some, this is something else as well. I mean, there's two, uh, there's a very influential book that um, actually is my dad that introduced me to, you know, Thomas Kuhn's um, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, right? Um, and he was a he was obviously a, a philosopher, and that what, what I find it amazing is that as Muslims we need to come back to the philosophy of science more than Absolutely. science itself, right? Absolutely. The, yeah. You know the underlying uh, you know the underlying ethics, the morality of science, all of these things we have to come back to. Mm. And something else is that you know like as as the as, as the Prophet said that awesome. the you know the, what will fix the end times is what fixed it in the first place, right? So it's it's the first generation, the second generation, third generation. You find that within those generations, 
in terms of how you know obviously how the Quran was compiled, how the hadith was um, you know uh, categorized and it was um, you know systemized, right? Fiqh was developed. All of these look. This was this was a building of philosophy. This was building a philosophy of 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 knowledge of of systems of of intelligence, right? And born from that project came our 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 scientific um, uh, pioneering spirit, right? You yeah. find that a lot of the um, pioneers of Islam, they they went against the grain. They 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 tried um, amazing new things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and what and you find that they were very religious people. Mm -hmm. You know these polymath people. They were they were shuyukh in you know in in Arabic and and they, they, they I mean in, in Islamic um, in fiqh, but but they they were also like in mathematics and and uh, you know they were highly accomplished people and they were very God fearing people, mm -hmm. right? So I find it very interesting that you know in parallel to to, to now, right, where you find that it's the it's the most ungodly people who are making mm -hmm. the, the the biggest. Um, discoveries, right? But mm. in the early part of Islam, it was the God. Or are they? Or are they making discoveries? That's very interesting. Exactly, right? So on the on the surface, but what you find truly is that it was the most God fearing who were making these amazing discoveries and amazing, uh, mm -hmm. um, like uh, you know, leading the charge in terms of uh, scientific discovery. So yes. when pe if people, uh, you know, have this thing about oh why why devote so much time to something so arbitrary, something so um, you know, like, uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't capturing the mainstream. It's not, sorry, it's not something that's trendy. It's not something that's fashionable. Mm -hmm. Then we have to say as Muslims, this was how it was in the early period, right? So, you know, and, and, you know, that shouldn't, we should be, we shouldn't be held to, uh, you know, to, to whatever the mainstream is dictating, yeah, in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, uh, so as Muslims, we should be independent of that. Yeah. And, uh, and that was the spirit of the early generations, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, I like how you, how you brought up a philosophy of science uh, for anyone who wants to know a, just a bit about this topic. Uh, Firaz Zahabi came on the Joe Rogan podcast. I was going to uh, mention that, yeah. The first time, and he he talked a lot about this. And you can, Joe, you, can, you can see Joe Rogan uh, feeling very uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> he didn't want to, he didn't like what Firaz was saying. And it went on Everybody for, should, well, it went on yeah. for long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, watch that. Yeah, that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. And I think gravity, look, right? Gravity and general science, but gravity yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. It was just science is like nothing like it's not untouchable. You can yeah. well, well you, you can destroy it and it, you can recreate it. This um, is the so this is you guys are bringing this up because um I just heard yesterday that science apparently was um pushed by these uh, Luciferians, I, I think it's closely connected to Kabbalah, uh, Kabbalism, and a lot of what they promote coming from science is closely related to the Kabbalah. It's almost uh, indistinguishable, you know, when they speak about what their version of the universe is, the atoms, all of these things. It's very interesting how they say it's basically what we have been taught has basically been Kabbalism. Uh, that's what they've been teaching us through science. But I, you know, I'd rather not go into that. And the other thing that was interesting was that they say that uh, Shaitan apparently has used this to play on man's pride and arrogance. You know, the whole um, measuring of everything, the whole, um, see, when does Allah say that we should necessarily do these things? You know, nothing there, like there's, this. There, there's, there's something very interesting. Sorry. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, in, in, the scene, in the sunnah, um, whenever there was a mujiza, like a miracle, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the, like, if you think about the Prophet, he is mm -hmm. the beloved of Allah, right? So he is Allah's most beloved, yet the most difficulty was given to the Prophet, mm -hmm. right? but mm -hmm. deliberately, intentionally, right? Mm -hmm. He was deprived. We and he was put he was put into a, he was put into a very kind of difficult position mm -hmm. where he was forced to rely on Allah, right? Mm -hmm. Not just that, not just he was forced, but the sahaba. Mm -hmm. But Sometimes a mujiza would occur. Like for example, there would be somewhere there's no water, there's no food, and then suddenly there's a miracle, right? So for example, from the bucket, the Prophet has put his fingers in the bucket, and then water was coming from his uh, under his um, uh, nails, right? Mm -hmm. the, these are these are authentic hadith where mm -hmm. the Prophet would would um, you know have a bit of food, 
-hmm. and then he would he would do something and then suddenly like a thousand people are eating from just a just a handful of yes food, right? Absolutely. right and then the prophet also he what he said was very interesting he said he said he said when when for example uh, a a mujiza like this occurred he said uh, it would have continued as long as you don't see the source, as long as you don't try to discover the source. Ah, of it, interesting. Right? Yeah. So, for example, there was a there, amongst the Sahaba, there was these incidents that occurred where, for example, from a from a sack of flour, um, like a flour started coming up, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And it started continuously, and then jugs were being filled with mm. with this, uh, you know, with flour. Mm. But then, when the when the wife of the Sahaba wanted to see one day where this is coming from, so she opened the bag and then she looked in, and then it stopped coming, right? Mm. And the Prophet said to said to her said to them, "Had you not looked into the bag, Allah would have continued producing flour from that bag until the day of judgment." Mm. Right? Wow! You've just completed my understanding. See, look, this is what happens when you try to uh, be too clever, in a sense, you know try and measure everything that exactly. Allah has created or try to yeah because yeah this just exactly. makes sense to me yeah and, and and exactly so this is the this is the thing about also like not divorcing ourselves from the divine and mm -hmm. and having a connection with qudrat mm -hmm. right and this is why i said what was very interesting that first point you said about devote like uh, eliminating yourself that allah mm -hmm. is truth but you are not truth mm -hmm. and that's why some of the Akabirin or some of the earlier traditions say that you should make istighfar for even existing, mm. right? Meaning that I exist I, and and I and I, Ya Allah forgive me for existing, right? Mm -hmm. In the in the sense that everything is Qudra, everything is Allah's power, right? right? So so part and and it's almost scientific that part of you existing is to just believe in in the power of God that you don't want to search for the sources of your sustenance mm -hmm. that you will be. Uh, provided for if you have belief meaning if you have iman if you don't have iman that's when you start searching right then right. you start looking and then allah leaves you to the creation right See, that sounds right to me when we're told that we are both significant creation of allah and we are insignificant you know when people put them mm -hmm. both for me that's the right balance yeah. see from their side what they're teaching is that we are insignificant and for me, what I kind of get the feeling of, I might be wrong about this, from the previous scriptures, from the Ahlul Kitab, the Christians, there's the feeling that they are the special creation. Uh, and I'm not denying that, but it's like there's a lack of the focus of the um, humbleness that you said comes from this understanding that we are nothing as well. You know, um, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> It's, and, and that's the thing. This is the, the, the interesting aspect about this is that the material world, right? The material world is finite. It's something that is, um, it's something that is weak. But when Allah breathed the spirit into um, uh, Adam and Islam and then brought Adam and Islam down, the, the spirit is, uh, is that's, the, that's the secret ingredient. That's what gives humanity power over this world, right? Mm -hmm. That when you start actualizing Iman, right? Right. when you start actualizing Iman, and especially when you have iman and which is then um, uh, mixed with quran so if you if you combine your 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 ruh, your soul with the word of allah mm -hmm. then you start then you then you've actualized your vice regency on this earth right, 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 right. and then mm -hmm. suddenly, for example mm -hmm. uh, surah uh, then ayatul kursi starts working then surah yasin starts working mm -hmm. then all of these ayats start beginning to have power over the over the world right. over the earth right, right? And that's, a, that's something, that's why, for example, understanding cosmology is very important because Allah talks about the sun, the moon, the earth being his ayat. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and if you don't have the correct cosmology, then you're not doing justice to the Quran and thus your iman is deficient. Your iman, re remember, your iman is what's ne needed to actualize your power Absolutely. on this world. And if it's deficient, then you'll never have that power, right? Yeah. Or you'll never come to the, to the pr proper degree of mm -hmm. that power. And the Prophet mm -hmm. said that, yes, that that iman is um, is iman is on levels, right? So some people have less iman, some people have more iman. Mm -hmm. And for example, Prophet said, if you don't believe in a certain thing, or if your if your if your actions are deficient in a certain way, then your iman is deficient. Mm -hmm. So so the more iman you have, the more power you have. Mm -hmm. And if you are deficient in one aspect, meaning the material world. Mm. your understanding of cosmology then that's a big part of your iman which is missing i agree and hopefully hopefully this presentation will be confirming and emphasizing on what you've just said that i mean i mean what, what, what i understood brother shah from that story you said about the bag of flour producing unlimited <clears throat> flour is that 
the point through which Allah was continuously replenishing the flower, that could have been a point, that could have been a channel between the unseen world and the seen world. Because mm -hmm. from, from, there, from, from that point, Allah is producing this miracle. But when we human beings who are material beings, yeah. we have spir spiritual aspect as well. But here on earth, we are strictly material flesh. When we try to observe with our senses what is going on, we are not meant to see the, or we, we can't even understand what's going on because there, there's a link between the seen and the unseen. Mm -hmm. So when, when you try to observe this, then Allah just, you know, Allah, puts Allah an end. is, what's interesting is, yeah. exactly, Allah is one of his, uh, Allah's name is Al Ghayb. He's the unseen, right? And so if you try to start seeing the unseen, then mm -hmm. this is like, for example, Prophet Sallallahu said in the Salah, um, like he warned, don't look up, right? Yeah. Because in the salah, you, you come in front of Allah. Right. And he says, don't look up in case Allah snatches away your eyesight. Mm. Right. Interesting. So, so, so there's a, and, and the thing is, what's interesting, like you've said, mashallah, brother Saadi, is that in the bag, for example, a link has been created. The, where the, where in, in the Hadith Qudsi, Allah is talking about his treasures being unlimited, right? And, and literally, there is no weight to his treasures, meaning because it's all unlimited. It's from the eternal, the, this temporal pocket is encased in this, uh, like in mm -hmm. eternity, this world suddenly exists, like in a pocket. Right? Absolutely. So there, there, there is an internal, um, like a link to the, to, the, to the eternal, and then there is an external link to the eternal, right? And that's where this, the material world is important, because one of the theories that what we believe is that, the, for example, the horizons, and I know that um, Brother Wiss is going to cover this, but what we believe, the, the horizons are potentially infinite. That when you get to the horizons, meaning where the earth meets the sky, that's mm -hmm. where eternity begins. Absolutely, yep. I so, think so, yes. you're right on that. I, I, I was speaking with Brother Farhan yesterday, but I said that we will try to stick to what is definitely clear, and we'll keep this for more private discussions. And, and, and on ex this Exactly, exactly. But just because why this is important, for example, because in um, Surah Fusilat, in that verse, you know, that we will show you our signs in right. the, in wait, the wait, 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 let me get to it let me get to it let me get yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that but 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 the point is is that the 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 signs the sign or the ayat of allah are meant to indicate something phenomenal or something outside of the ordinary right, right? and and that's why like brother Saadi was saying if you look into the bag if you look into certain things then that's where that's where that's where that's where the sign is like that's where the that's where the magic happens that's where the magic is yeah. right right yeah i think, I think brother yusuf's got a question before i say that uh salam alaikum brother uh ahmed noor uh just joined us um yeah so we're slowly just getting into the presentation yeah, bro uh, brother yusuf wants to say something and then brother yahya was, was going to yep, say yep. something right. and then we'll right. start whoever whoever wants yeah uh, yahya okay um can you guys hear me from Perlu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, it came to my mind that um, when uh, believers gather uh, for the remembrance of Allah, there are many traditions uh, that uh, state that uh, actually Allah causes a gathering in the heavens among the angels to take place, and He remembers us as we're remembering Him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those traditions. Yes, yes, I, yeah, I used to hear it a lot, but it, it feels yes, good to uh, be reminded of this, alhamdulillah. Uh, yes, may Allah, and bless, I, may Allah bless us. And then I, I mean, and then I wanted to just add the last thing is that, um, you know, may Allah cause us to see reality as it really is. I mean, I mean, in this I mean. gathering, inshallah. No, mm. that's right, that's right, absolutely. So, okay. I think that's Brother well, Shah scribbling, scribbling on my screen, if you can. Uh, try not to do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I will let you guys get on with it, though. Right. Yep, yep, cool. But yeah, we are, uh, please feel free to uh, do exactly what you just did there. Yeah. Brother Yahya, want to say something? Uh, yeah, 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 inshallah. I just wanted to mention, just to tie them two aspects together with the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah in uh, when Allah mentions uh, billahi min rajim wa Ibrahim Rabbi Arini Kaifa Tohil Mauta, as in asking Allah to show him that Ghaib aspect, Ya Allah, how do you give life to the dead? And then, subhanAllah, Allah's response, Qala awalam tu'min, 
do you not believe you know subhanallah mm-hmm. so him being of that high level of faith yani ibrahim alayhi mm-hmm. salam our father who our prophet alayhi salatu wassalam is told to follow his millat mm-hmm. he himself is questioning ya allah i want to see this al ghaib and then subhanallah through the uh, you're uh, you're mentioning the story of the birds right Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, قَالَ فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِنَ الطَّيْرِ Take four birds and then put them on the mountains. So, uh, subhanAllah, he, he experienced that غيب, uh, maybe with these uh, physical material eyes. And then him being of that high level about, you mentioned, I think, with the about the levels of Iman and him um, being exposed because the prophets, uh, they did experience that on many levels, right? The غيب, whether it's the the sea parting or uh, Isa alayhi salam, the, the ni'am that he had, or Sulaiman alayhi salam, his ability to hear them, the ant kingdom, you know? So, yeah, uh, so yeah is, I just and, got to and, and, and Brother Yahya, mashallah, you mentioned it very well, mashallah, because that is like, uh, that is, um, that, that is a, that's a scientific uh, endeavor, right? Um, one, he made an inquiry and then Allah gave him instructions. And he followed those instructions, and then he then he observed he something, there. right? So um, an observation was given. So that is that is an actual that's an that's a scientific endeavor. But there's there's something so beautiful about this. Also, is that um, when when Allah told Ibrahim and to take the birds, crush them together, like kill them, crush them, and then put them on the four mountains, meaning there's an exertion. He has to put the pieces on the mountains, and then go to the center, and then call them. So he didn't see the birds actually being formed. And then come, but he said, call the birds and they all came back to him. So he didn't see the act of recreating them, right? But he, but the birds came back to him. So thus, look, I can bring back the, the dead from the, um, the, the living from the dead. But, Because you have to remember Allah's first uh, question to Abraham, do you not believe? Yeah. So uh, Allah doing this actually would reinforce Abraham's belief yeah. uh, rather than him seeing how it's done. And, 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 but the thing is, the thing is, look, so exactly as Brother Sadi is saying that there's a, there was a certain need and the need was met, but then you have a different occasion when Ezra, you know, Ezra, Ezra is, uh, which prophet is Ezra? Um, you know, the, the, the I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I, yeah. I know the book of Ezra, but I've never linked the book of Ezra. It's so, so book, book, is, is it not Uzair? Uzair, Uzair, that's it. Uzair, Uzair. So Uzair comes to a, a, a broken city, a, a, you know, a, right. city, a dilapidated city. He's on, yeah. his, he's on his donkey and then he's, and he has with the food and he said, how can Allah bring this place back to life again? Right. Yeah, and then Allah caused him to to sleep or to die. Right. Yeah. And then um, then uh, then that's he... actually the ayah before the one I just mentioned. Subhanallah. So uh, within Al Baqarah, that's that's the ayah mentioned uh, yeah. prior yeah. to the Ibrahim alayhi salam. So yeah, Subhanallah. Yeah, absolutely, you mentioned a very and, good and, point. And and the thing is here, but in this in this story in this story, Allah actually shows Uzair um, the the donkey coming back to life. Yeah. Meaning mm-hmm. it was it was bones, mm-hmm. and then Allah caused the the flesh to start growing on the on the bones again, and then the and then yeah. the muscles started forming, and then the skin started coming, and then the hair started growing, and then the donkey yeah. got up. <laughs> And it, and it was alive. What, what does science have to say about that? Exactly. What does science have to say about that? That's yeah. one aspect. But then next to it was his food, and his food remained untouched. Right. I like this. So so yeah. this so this the meaning meaning the, the, that's that's him with his uh, with his eyes seeing yeah. a, a you know the, the a, miracles a, the miracle like an absolute yeah. manifestation of Allah's yeah. power because this the word a, even used there is one word. As in to look, observe, you know, another exactly. to see. Oh, no. So he did. Subhanallah. He he was told to to see and, and he witnessed it. Yeah, and and as as for, so for Muslims, this is a big um, like vindication that the fact that we some of some of the th- some of the things that happen in creation, we c- you can't you can't rationalize them. Meaning you can't like uh, you have to ascribe a certain divine power to these things. Some people there was a, even a theory back in the like in the 1800s and stuff that. You know, um, like uh, where does where do where do where where does pestilence come from? Where do rodents mm. come from? Where do mice come from? Suddenly, in mm. some places, suddenly they just they just explode, right? Or or certain kind of pestilence comes from somewhere, mm. and so so we try to rationalize and say, oh, there's migration of insects and mm. and rodents and things. But maybe it is that Allah just causes 
uh, like, you know, just spontaneous uh, creation to grow. Sometimes we think, oh, there's a cycle of water, you know, the water cycle and all of these things. But could it be that Allah really does send water from the sky to replenish the, the water of the earth? Could it be that, you know, in terms of to, to remove the filth of the, of the world, Allah causes it to dissipate into the ground and then Allah brings fresh water from the sky? Is, mm -hmm. there, is, the whole, is, it, is it strictly a closed system? You see what I'm saying? Like, th these are the yeah. questions. Like, and, and, and it has good legs. Like, for example, when you have oil, you know, like the oil fields are being replenished all the time, right? And, and then how do you get rid of it? Like, uh, if I were to ask Oase, when's the last time you saw a landfill? Right. A landfill. Yeah, a landfill. Few months ago. Yeah. Where did you Where did you see it? Um, I think is it Beckton? Is it Beckton? Okay. All right. Yeah. You saw You saw a landfill, right? Yeah. Now imagine, not many landfills, right? Not there are not many landfills, and we're talking about hundreds, if not thousands, of tons of waste are going to these landfills every single day, mm. right? But where does it go? Right. Where does it go? Meaning, are you telling me to remove carbon footprint? We, you know, we're going to just be burying all of this stuff. No, there's incinerators all across the country. Mm -hmm. And this is a big source of electrical energy is from incinerating the stuff. Right. So if we're producing this much carbon, mm -hmm. right, is the carbon, you know, that climate change thing? Is it really true? Yeah. yeah. yeah? Do you see what I'm saying? We, a big part of huge, we're talking about like like i think the second know, biggest lie ever yeah exactly <laughs> biggest lie. and and that's the thing so this this oil that's being replenished is being burnt mm. and then that is producing electricity mm. and the and the, and that's producing carbon waste which then just dissipates into the air yeah right you see what i'm saying so we are not I'm with you let's, let's quickly try to get back to this though yeah. anyway so so just uh just yeah just uh just uh just you know just uh giving a bit of no no no, no. I, i'm loving all of it in fact i want to add to this but i just want to get a little bit of this done yeah, as of course well. of course yeah. um okay so just very quickly the introduction this is basically um the why yeah so if we look at surah al-asr uh billah rajim wal as in al insan lafi khus I've gone through this in previous sessions, but I'm just doing a quick reminder. Uh, for me, this is still very strong on why we do what we do, uh, because uh, if we agree that we are living, if not in the end times, very close to the end times, then that is in comparison to the time of Asr in the day. Uh, and um, the the advice is being given to us very clearly what we should be involved in and if we're not involved in that then we are one of the those who are in loss that's from what i can tell here so yeah one of them is us sticking to this truth and being patient doing good deeds and making sure just everything that we just mentioned earlier about our true iman you know what we believe in this big picture of what allah has created that's belief isn't it so that's about iman so sticking to the hug and there's this passage in uh, the book of Thessalonians, where for me, it's a very good uh, explanation on what happens to those who ignore the truth. Um, yeah, so I don't know if anyone is familiar with this, but what is said here is um, they perish because they refuse to love the truth. Yeah. And what happens for this reason? God sends them a powerful, strong delusion so that they will believe the lie. It's very, it resonates massively with what's happening today. You know, those who say, yeah, that's not really important, is it? You know, and what happens? You find out that they've poisoned themselves because they think it's not mm -hmm. important. You know, what happened there? They gave over to the delusion. They believed the lie. Um, but then, yeah, so there's this ayah from the Quran as well, where if you think that it, that's from the book of Thessalonians, so again, Shaitan says that he will do the same thing in... Um, the Quran in Surah Nisa 120, uh, where he says that, uh, where Allah says, but Satan does not promise them except delusion. So my question mm -hmm. to you is, is delusion and deception not the same thing? You know, if you're deceived, you are deluded, you're believing something wrong. You know, it's the same thing, basically. And that's why it's good to look at the Arabic words, because people use different definitions, but ultimately it's the same Arabic word. Um and do not mix the truth with falsehood, nor conceal the truth. So if us guys on this call, we know certain truths, yeah, then should we uh, keep them to ourselves or should we make it known? We should make it known despite be, uh, facing alienation from people, society, friends, whatever. Yes. Right, right. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay. Salam alaikum, Brother Shah. So we're just getting into this, uh, just in case uh, you've just joined us. Uh, third Shah. So there's three Shahs. <laughs> yeah. Um, three three kings. Yeah. There's three, three kings. kings. Two kings. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, for, and just I think one more or two more. Very quickly. Basically, I've just got this collection. I'm not even going to go through them. I've just got this collection for what resonates with why we should be doing what we're doing, sticking to the truth. Um, and yeah, ultimately it will free us because that's what I feel like it does, especially this truth that we're speaking about now. I've never felt more uplifted, more freer in spirit, at least. Of course, the tests are there in the dunya, but in terms of your soul and your spirit, definitely you feel a lot freer, I, I feel. Um, okay, so as, I, as I mentioned, um, I did go through part one in detail, but just in case, Unfortunately, I didn't have time. This document is still being refined. But for those who aren't familiar with what I did cover in part one, I'm just going to go through a quick summary. So the earth is described in the Quran as having a width. Yeah, I've got the references here. But unfortunately, I didn't have time. I will be putting in the, the Arabic and the transliteration in the future, inshallah. Can everyone see this? Yep. So, yep. so Allah describes the earth in the Quran as having a width as having, having been stretched, as having been extended, as having been widened. And by the way, that widened one is the one that they still somehow jump to an ostrich egg, yeah? All right, so I don't know how they jump to that ostrich egg, but I'm glad to hear that Muhammad Ijab also says that we should, get, we should move away from this. So that tells hmm. you that they know themselves that there's some... What's the word? There's that, some... Could some? You know, in Urdu, kuch pura hai. Like, it. there's yeah. something brewing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. There's something, <laughs> yeah, something being played with. Um, so, yeah, I'll carry on. Allah describes the earth uh, has been uh, having been leveled, yeah? Um, having been laid out. Not laid an egg, yeah? Laid out, <laughs> yeah. Um, as having been made into an expanse. Now, this is the one that is a noun. So when they say the ostrich egg is a noun, this is the one where Allah mentions a noun. And that's an expanse. So even if someone says Allah made it expansive, that's wrong because that's a description. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Allah wow. made it to an so expanse. This is a noun. This is a, the expanse is a noun. So even that's if they say thing. expansive, that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. This is very interesting. It's an expanse. It's a. Expanse. And what? What? what, and what do, you, do you know the Arabic word? Um, I've got it. Yeah. Now that you ask me. Yeah. No. Having made it into an expense this is a noun. Yeah. What was that? That was seventy-one nineteen. Bisapa. There you go. There it is. Yeah. Bisata. Yes. Th thank you, brother. So here it is. This is the expanse. Can you see this here? Yeah. I can see yeah. it. Yeah. It's in Surah Nuh. Wallahu ja'ala lakum al arda bisata. Subhanallah. So that is the noun. And that's why I said, even when you see some translators saying like a carpet, you can't even say like because it's not a description. Yeah. You can, say, yeah, carpet, exactly. you can say carpet, but you can't even say like. You know, so this way is th thanks to, uh, you know, brother Abu Bilal Yaqub. You know, this was really emphasized in my mind about the specificity about the Arabic language. The, mm -hmm. That's the divine nature of this Quranic Arabic. You have to be very specific uh, because Allah is very specific. Um, this is why, this is why sometimes... So, I, like, so I, had, I had a question. Sorry, yeah. Brother Shah. Yeah, I think... Uh, just, just quickly. Perhaps, um, so, 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 sorry, Brother Sadi. I just wanted to say, um, this is why, you know, some of the... Um, more simplistic translations are actually better because they stick to the literal, um, like mm -hmm. the literal understanding of the Quran. They don't try to confinement. Yeah, they don't try to be clever. They don't try to put their own ta'wil or their own um, uh, interpretation onto the verse, right? So it's I very don't, interesting. I don't necessarily blame them either because yeah. in those days, see yeah. the way the English language is. I think most people will agree. It's almost like the more you speak, the more uh, intelligent it sounds the more fancy it sounds, mm. you know, the way the English language is. Mm. And they just say so much, but really they're saying very little. They're, they're saying nothing at all sometimes. They're right? saying nothing at all, yeah. right? Mm. So when it came to the translators, they felt like that they had to add these words, which I understand to some extent, to make it make sense in English. 
but maybe because of the nature of the English language, they got carried away with some parts as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I'll just carry on with that. So I'll I'll describe... brother, 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 brother Saadi wanted to say something. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, perhaps I'll ask later. It's fine. Uh, it's yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on. Okay. So it's fine. Uh, the earth in the yeah. So it's being described as having been leveled, having been laid out, having been made into an expanse, a place with carpets. Yeah. A place for us to find rest. You know, and in that word rest, you'll find cradle, bed, grave. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. It's just amazing. I've gone through this as well. You know, that if you look at how Allah describes this earth as being mahda, I think it's mah, mahd, yeah? Um, you'll find that, yeah, cradle, bed, grave. And it's interesting because these are what we go through in our life stages. So that's what Allah has created this earth for, for us to be born in, for us to find rest in, for us to sleep in. For us to go into a grave you know it's it's amazing but anyway so allah describes the place the earth as a place to find rest a firm abode so i didn't have this in part one i stumbled upon this whilst i was doing the heavens one so i did not realize that allah actually describes the earth as being a firm abode and i've gone yeah, through yeah. in part one as well what is a synonym of firm it does not move yeah so so i emphasize in part one about the firm mountains and then people will still say yeah, but that that mountain is firm, right, on a moving earth. On a okay. moving earth, yeah. Okay, but now Allah describes the earth as being firm. Yeah. So what you... What uh, num uh, when Allah says the earth is a firm abode, it ties into uh, him saying Allah has made it into an expanse as well. Right. Because expanse means it's just... It has already been expanded, and right. that it's that is that's its true. nature. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, when you right. say yes, I'll have to relook at that. Having been made into an expanse, seventy-one nineteen. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, meaning that it's something that's been done. Yeah, it's something that's been done. It's not in a. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is why I like this is exactly meaning it's already an expanse. Right. Like you yes. know, this is like it's a noun as well, meaning it's an object. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's an expanse right right and yeah. then if allah is describing as an expanse then it must be massive like it must not be an ordinary type of expanse it must be something exactly. that, that befits his majesty in terms of describing mm. it as an expanse yeah right? so yeah. i find the, very the same root word is actually one of allah's names as well right al basit ah, ah. ah. The one so okay. uh okay, what, look, what look, brother look, yahya says this is amazing yeah, this yeah, is, ties uh, into what I was thinking that when yeah. people like to mock to mock people uh, like skeptics like us, people say, "Oh, why don't we fall off the edge?" Uh, you can <laughs> just say that you know it's it's so it's such an expense. How would you expect yeah. us to like just go oh, and really? try to fall off the edge? You know, I, I, I like, look look at this. Look, silly. At this. look the, this is amazing. So what just Yahya just did has has been amazing because. Because we believe, like for example, like the, one of the theories that we have is that the that the horizon is infinite, right? That that the expanse of the earth covers the entire seven heavens, meaning it's not just the first heaven. The earth covers the mm. second, the third, the, and it's such a vast amount of space that mm. it's potentially infinite. Now, if that is also tied with Allah's name, mm. that gives the the material a, a, almost like an an, an an, an infinite kind of that strengthens the that's argument right, that's right that, that this material it, expanse is infinite right? yeah. it could it's also infinite. be brother shah that uh, the expanse just links to the heavens at a certain point mm. so there is no cliff to like fall off of it's just it's just it, it, it's 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 enveloped by all the all the heavens uh, i mean of I mean, course the, the, there is of course there has to be a separation between earth and sky I mean, yeah. sorry, uh, there has to be earth and sky, right? So there yeah. has to be. I prefer to use the word heavens, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Because this is my, because I'm doing this, I'm, I, I will try to make people not use the word sky, please. <laughs> true, true. Okay, inshallah. So, so there must be a separation between the heavens and the earth, right? So the heavens must begin from sometime. So the earth has mm. to, ex the expanse of the earth needs to be, you know, before it becomes the heavens. There must be, mm. you know, there, there, there must be a segue. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if Allah is talking about the earth being expanded, then we're talking about the earth. Mm. And if the earth is potentially infinite, mm. right? What is the what is the boundaries of the earth? What is the something to dig into? Definitely. Something. Exactly. Is is there even a boundary to the earth? That's the that's the question. I, I will immediately go out on a limb 
and say that when Brother Yahya uh, said that the root word for Basit, mm. I mean, it, it's also uh, a, a name of Allah. I mean, that root word comprises a name of Allah. I can immediately go out on a limb and say that the NASA model does not fit, fit. this description at Absolutely. all. Because yeah. And my instinct, yeah, yeah, like yours. It's, not, ba it's not Basit. It's something that is quantifiable. Right. You, you, I mean, didn't NASA already calculate everything about the Earth? Yep, yep. If so, then how how is it an 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 unimaginable expense? Because that's right. That's right. I yeah. agree. My instinct says you're right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So finishing with the summary of the Earth. So as I mentioned, a place with carpets, a place to find rest, a firm abode, uh, possibly being one of many. So this is the interesting thing. Possibly being one of many Earths. Yeah. That could be like one of seven, because if you go to this ayah, Allah describes the earth after he dis after Allah mentions that he created the seven heavens and he created the earth like thereof. What does that can, mean? Can, can can we go into that, or you're going to go into that later? I'll try. Yeah, I might, I might, I might go into that later. But right now, I'm just going to summarize. It, but yes, okay. yeah, and yes, and so just but then because, because these are these are deep these are deep areas you know to go into. Of course, of course. But Absolutely. just really quickly. Yeah. What what even if Ibn Kathir even says this, right. um, and 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 even Abbas Radilan goes into detail that it's right. the earth below that these are earths right. below. Right. So these are seven earths below. Not that there is on, on the horizontal plane. There's more earths here, more earths here. Right, right. But rather, there's a one on top of the other earths. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yep, yep. So I've I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go on, go on, go on, go on. No, no. I've I've heard. I've seen this model that someone drew, and uh, it was described to me. Uh, that these are yeah like how you said but again it's like um something uh still i'm trying i'm trying to stick to just mentioning what allah has said and leaving those deeper areas for later or for others to do because i just want to stick to what is but i do want you to mention the questioning or what you know but just to not go deep into those areas uh that isn't absolutely 100 percent clear uh, brother Ahmed Noor. Brother Ahmed Noor, I think he wanted to talk about the ad Admiral Bird. Go on, brother. Yeah. yeah. Go um, ahead. When, when um, Brother Shah was mentioning how how like huge the expanse was on Earth, it just reminded me of Admiral Bird when he said he saw land bigger than the USA. Yeah. And it's making me think. I mean, I don't know if this is for, too like like far stretched, but it's like towards the end of time. The, like disbelievers, they made the earth seem so small, even though in the Quran, Allah said that um, worship only me, indeed, my earth is spacious. Mm -hmm. But they've they've kind of like now, like you can't really research anymore. You can't find any new more things because they they have a grip on everything already. Mm -hmm. So perhaps maybe Allah is saying my earth is spacious. He's saying all this. And Admiral Bird was like, there's land bigger than the USA, but all this is on lockdown. Mm. Even when the pandemic came, everything was on lockdown straight away. So who knows? Maybe because we're living in the end times, mm. we we don't really know to like how far. Like, remember when you were saying that the seven heavens were like the whole of Earth covers the seven heavens. Mm. So I don't know, but I'm I'm just thinking about that something like to do with that. I hear what you're saying. It's not clear cut, yes, but there's a few interesting uh, ideas of. Uh, I, 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 what what that could be. I, yeah, I, 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 like, I, I like what Ahmed, uh, Brother Ahmed was saying, mashallah, which is very yeah. true that sure. this, the, this, this, you know, the, the current power paradigm at the moment in terms of like, you know, this Western supremacy and this Western, uh, how do I say it? Like this monopoly over, over our intelligence, right? Over our information. Our, uh, over information mm -hmm. so we're, we're being given a model of the world and like Ahmed's saying it's very confined it's very small it's very you know yes. like in comparison to what we now are, are, are contending with like yeah. a, a potentially infinite just world. open your minds just yeah. open that's even, the main thing even yeah, open, open, open your mind but also the fact that the world is open it's yeah. not closed yeah. right? even with medicine who mm. knows that tree outside your house could be a cure for something, but because yeah. we just don't know, we just we're just walking around. We're not. Right. It's like we've lost. Yeah, as, it's as like, long you know, Adam he could name all the names and he knew everything, but us, we, it's like it's just 
it is gone. It's like we don't. It's like I don't know how to explain it. It's I, like, I, it's I, I like I like I like I like what you're saying, Ahmed. Is that not just that we can find in space, but we're also in, in confined in our minds as well. Absolutely. Because the the medicine is only from a certain place. The food is only from a certain place. Yep. The you know your friends, yeah. your what's say what's regarded as safe is only on a certain. And also, place. also all of it it is fake. It's synthetic. Everything. Yep. yep that's the none of it's from nature. Yeah. But Allah's but Allah's world, meaning Allah's world, is expansive, and yeah. and so go out and and you know don't be confined. Basically, yeah. I like that, mashallah. But what it what is clear, or no, no even this isn't clear. Uh, I shouldn't say that. So when we mention about the seven earths and the reason for there being more support of that in the Quran is this ayah where Allah describes the earth as having rich soil, a place called athara. So athara. Uh, when you look at that, that's rich soil. And if anyone can, if anyone thinks I'm saying anything wrong, please do correct me. Uh, so the rich soil. So yeah, and athara is just like al ard. Yeah, if you look at ard, if you look at the word, Arabic word ard, it's clear that they didn't come up with the name earth. It's from the Arabic ard, earth is the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. al ard is earth. Yeah, it's just slightly different. That you know, uh, languages and dialects. Um, same thing with this Athara. Where did they get Terra from? You know, terrestrial, extraterrestrial is from this Arabic word in the Quran, Athara. So Allah does allude to that. Allah does mention that. So something to look into. But anyway, I'm just quickly finishing this summary of uh, Terraform, Terraform. I think right, right, right. Exactly, 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 exactly. So I, I could be wrong, but if there is seven earths, then apparently we live on this rich soil that is called Athara. And therefore, when they talk about these extraterrestrials, they are after our soil. I mean, they are beyond our soil. Yeah, these extraterrestrials, which would fit in line with the whole Antarctica, you know, Admiral Bird. Wait, uh, sp speaking of Admiral Bird, he, uh, I read somewhere, he he did see the land bigger than US, but he also uh, met other civilizations that would be like alien, alien civilizations. Really? Like, oh, I've, not, uh, I've not heard any of this. And then, yeah. and then he yeah. tried to uh, relay this information that we're not alone. In mm. fact, the ones who were who were searching for on other planets are right here, assuming mm. other planets. This is you know, I've I've heard this as well. That apparently Admiral Bird's you know very fantastical uh, journey, you know, he took him to a place where there were giants. Apparently, mm -hmm. he came and he he came into contact with giants, and that's very interesting because. Like even in uh, you know Tabari's uh, you know because I always in refer Nephilim. to Tabari's uh, tarikh yeah so he says that the the remnants of the Ad and the Thamud they were pushed to the edges of the world right and now they, they that's where they live right they wow. live at the edges they live at the edges of the world of of this first heaven so it's very interesting that this and this is what uh, Ibn Abbas says in the and the, and he says that there's a he says that he narrates from the Prophet Sallallahu that had it not been for the great uh, noise that the people at the edges make, then mm. you would have he heard the crashing of the sun as it sank into right, the right. earth. Right. I, yeah, I will ask, uh, sorry, uh, because we've got quite, we've got great minds here and that, that can be a problem <laughs> as well. Um, so I will just ask if- Yeah, we've got tons to cover, yeah. yeah, yeah Matthew, Matthew. And, and, and that's fine. I'm not, I don't even necessarily have it in mind to cover everything. If, if we can, Alhamdulillah, yeah. uh, I, I really do hope for that. But I do want. Yeah, and this is and this well. could be an ex. This could be an excuse to meet your brothers every week. So I'm <laughs> yeah, quite. And why not? This, there's so much content. Well, like, there's so much content. Yeah, here. I know, I know. But the thing is, the problem is, it's like um, for me today was the only day. I'll be honest with you that I could do this, and um, yeah, it's like maximizing these opportunities that do come. But anyway, yeah. So um, let let me just quickly go through a little bit of this, inshallah. So. Yeah, as I mentioned about the earth could be like one of seven and what we're living on could be what is called a thorough. So I've put these references here. People can check them out. Uh, but ultimately, what is definite is that this place is a container. So it's in Surah Al-Musalat in uh, Ayah 25. Thank you, Brother Yahya, who's on here. He sent me this Ayah. And when I looked into it, uh, what is it? Wal Arda? Wal Arda? Wal Arda? Kifata. I know it's Kifata. I can't remember if you can remember. So it's kifata. Yeah, kifata, that's right. Kifata, yes. yeah. So the word is kifata. And if you look at it, it's it's absolutely 100% that Allah is describing this earth as a container. But anyway, I've gone through this in part one. I'm trying not to go into detail into any of this. Um, and yeah, a container uh, to detain, yeah, to keep. Yeah, you have a container to keep something in there. 
And what's interesting is that Allah is saying this to to the Muqaddibin, who are the same, who are the same people, the same deniers, deceivers, who are repeated 31 times in Surah Rahman. So the, for me, the connection is the same people that Allah is telling that you cannot pass beyond these heavens and the earth um, be, uh, without my authority. It's these same people that Allah is also telling in Surah Al-Musalat that have I not made this earth a container? Yeah, for those who think you cannot pass and this earth is a container. But anyway, as I go through the heavens, you'll see, inshallah, that these heavens are, forget unbreachable, forget unpassable, then impenetrable. <laughs> They're impenetrable. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, and lastly, this is the big one. So Allah describes the earth as with the night and day coiling, spiraling over each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty confident with this. If you if people want to choose round, that's fine as well. People will be happy with round. All of the globers are happy with round as well, right? But they cannot say ball. They can say round. Uh, so that yukowiru, that famous yukowiru, that makes people think that it's a it's a ball. It's you know. Um, so if you look at that, if you said round, fine, that's fine. But it doesn't help uh, move away from the globe. Um, so with the night and day, rounding. Let's just say rounding is okay. So with the night and day, rounding over each other. This is the bit they forget. Um, over each uh, other. Sorry, can I just mention something? Yeah, you know, yeah. I think they, they might have a bit of a counter here, you know, because the same word you call it. Yep. Uh, yani, uh, surash, uh, that's right. That's right. You know? But that's, that's obviously mentioning about Yom Al-Qiyamah. But even mm. like them surahs that are surrounding that, you need the sky, like, Yes. Like it kind of like denotes that you know, it's a structure and it will be torn or even broken. Yeah. Like if it's this open vacuum space that they keep telling us, like it doesn't fit the narrative, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. So what you're talking about there, brother, I've got it here, as I did in part one, what you mentioned about Kur, yeah, Yukowiru. So if you look into the roots, um, and brother Shanur, he actually helped out with that. So I've I need to update it, and it's true. I looked into the dictionary that this kur is about the wrapping of the thing at the imama or the turban. Yeah, mm -hmm. that same description is given in the dictionary, so that seems to be the most appropriate, which is the wrapping of a hemisphere, like how you said, brother Shano. Um, so your, your your half your head is so if you do say wrapping, because yeah, wrapping is another word in Arabic. See, this is where the problem is. Yeah, if you look here, I've got gulf here. Wolf. That's wrapping, you know, when their hearts are wrapped or mm. um but anyway, I've gone through this in part one. But what he what brother said here, so if you look in cool, you've got round, you've got ball as well, you've got spherical, you've got roll, you've got coil, yeah. So for me, as far as I can tell from the evidence we've seen, that sun and moon is going around us, but I don't want to go into uh what is you know exactly what it is. But the point is moving away from the globe. That's the main thing. Moving away from the globe. It, it, look, look, but, but exactly moving away from the globe. And yeah. you know, just to just to quickly add, like you know, your head, of course, mm. is a hemisphere. Is half yeah. is a half a sphere. Yeah. And and the the wrapping is around your hemisphere. And yeah. the way the way that the uh, the coiling is done or the wrapping is done, it's not like this. It's actually right. like diagonal. One diagonal right. and then the other one like that. Okay, right? interesting. So, so, so like this, this is the kind of wrapping, like this. Right, right, yeah? right. Like, so it's yeah, very yeah, it's possible, it's possible, yeah. Um, I hear what you're saying. So yeah, um, but, but check this bit out. So even if we disagree on that, if you look at that ayah, how does that ayah begin? Oh, oh just, just hold on, just one, and one thing as well, that, that the head, remember the head is the heavens, is meant yeah. to, is to, you know, it's meant to symbolize the heavens that the, the sphere, the half the sphere is not the sphere of the earth, but mm. rather the sphere of the, the half the, the hemisphere of the dome. Right. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Do, do, do you okay, understand? Now you got it. Yeah. Now you got that it. makes sense. Right. That's what that's why I was saying an envelope, because right. I was make, trying to make that link. Yeah, right. yeah. So have a look at this. Have a look at that entire ayah that is contentious. Yeah. How does Allah begin the ayah? Can you read on screen? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How does Allah begin? He created, he created the heavens created and the earth heaven in truth. Heaven. Okay, so we'll pause there. We'll pause there. So what is this ayah about? Is this not the topic of the ayah? Yes. Do we, this is the topic of the ayah, yeah? Yes. yes. So now tell me when Allah says, 
that he wraps the night over the day. We've gone over that bit uh, and wraps the day over the night and has. Tell me about the subjected bit. That's 100%. Sakhara, yeah, it's subjected. What is Allah saying? He's subjected what? Sun, sun and, and the moon. moon. Sun and the moon, yes. The sun and the moon. Am I right? Wa, yeah? Yes. Wa. Ashams, walkamar. So it's both. Yes. yes. Okay. What are they teaching us? The, the earth and the moon is rotating around the sun, right? Sun and the, yeah. Right. Yep. So are we in agreement that Allah is saying very clearly here? I mean, this verse uh, con completely contradicts the accepted. Uh, exactly. You just have to look closely enough. Canonical model. Yep. Right. So both the sun and the moon are subjected to what? What did the ayah begin with? Yeah. Heavens and the earth. Uh, 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 but some people. Earth, uh, earth. Look, can you see the earth? Look, look, at, look at how even right from the beginning, you got, right. you got, there's a distinction between the heavens and the earth. Right. right and the bodies yes. but, but, exactly. but then look but then look in reference to that then allah talks about the sun and the moon although as though it's secondary to the earth right thank and you so, that's another one that's another way the, of looking at it as well yeah, this is very interesting look the right. heavens and the earth are, are yeah. almost equal in the in terms of their value right, right? right. and then he wraps the night over the day so this is another two there's two mm -hmm. here and then he's got the sun and the moon right that's the two and so, but, if, but does everyone understand that both of them are equally subjected to the heavens and the earth? Yeah. yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see that? Right. Okay. Look, see, amazing. So see, this is this is absolutely this right. Is right. Wait, wait. Just a little bit more on that. Just a little bit more on that. If you're not sure about that, right? What does Allah say? Kullu. Yeah. What does kullu mean? All. All. More than more than two. All. Yeah, all running, yeah, all running. And that word is definitely running, yeah. So mm -hmm. both of them are running, yeah. Both the sun and the moon are running, yeah. This bit is not in there in the Arabic. That's why I've got it in brackets because they add that to explain it. But they're both running. This bit is in the Arabic for a specified term, meaning that Allah designed this to do its, its running around until a certain time that Allah decided for it to stop, which is what Brother Yahya mentioned when Qiyamah comes. That is probably the, I'm guessing, the end of that specified term when, yes, so when he mentioned about Kur, maybe the sun is wrapped up then. And right now, the wrapping. So it's possible there is wrapping, but just not the wrapping that we're, that they're selling us. The, the, there's, there's something interesting here is because Kul, Kul uh, here, Kulun, yeah. is, no, is not the, it's not the dual. It's not, it's not um, referring just to the sun and the moon. It has to be more than, than right. two. It has to be more than three, three or more, right? right. And here, What's being mentioned is the night and the day, right? Yeah. As and the sun and the moon, each yeah. running its course. So the 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 two meanings that we get from that is that the night and the day is also part of the running. That the night runs uh, mm -hmm. separate to the sun and the moon, and the right. moon and the and the day runs separate to the sun and the moon. And that yeah. that strengthens the argument that daylight and and night is not dependent on the sun and the moon. It's actually independent, right? right, right. And some and also. If you if you if you were to think of just sun and the moon, what's the third component, right? Yeah. Because it's not it's not just reference to the sun and the moon. It has to be more than two more. People say it means the earth, but it's not. Just yeah. as you can see right from the beginning, yeah. Allah created the heavens and the earth in truth. So Allah already is establishing there's a distinction between heaven and the earth. It right. can't be the earth. So right. what is the third? What what's the third? What right. do you mean the third? So wait, hold so, on. So the here pair, he wraps. He wait. Hold on. So it's the pairs. I can see the pairs here. Allah created the heavens and the earth. That's a pair. He yep. wraps the night over there. That's that's, that's another pair. pair. Yep. He wraps the day over the night. That's a pair. And yep. has subjected the sun and the moon. That's a pair. And yep. each. So for yep. me, Allah is speaking about those pairs. Uh, but I think you're alluding to the stars. Am I right? Exactly. Exactly. Right, exactly. So pair. that's that's another. That's one of the other strong meanings. Is that it yep. means sun, moon, and the stars. Right. Because right. so Allah doesn't mention that. We'll, we'll, um, that will be part three, but we will be touching on that later as well, inshallah. Yeah, of course. Okay, uh, Brother uh, Ahmad Noor, I know you wanted to say something. Uh, if it can wait, that would be great because I want to get through some of this, inshallah. Okay. It was just about this ayah because I'm using it in my document as well. And Allah well, well. says, I did not create the heavens and the earth la'ibin in play. I created it in haqq. Absolutely. Which means that it's going to be judged. So that it's going to, everything's going to be concluded. Nothing's going to be for like, Mm -hmm. for, for just play yes. so that's why then Allah subhanahu wa says for a specified term because to make to, to show us that you know the connection between the haqq and the specified term because mm. it's not for play it's going to be concluded and we're going right. to be judged 
Right, so that's, right. That's, the, that's the meaning that I got on um, my yeah, own. Thank you for that, because I'm going to be getting on to why we should be looking at this as well now. So, so yeah, so this is the summary, if you like, of part one, uh, that Allah created the heavens uh, and the earth in truth, each of them running. And I believe they're running like a circuit, like a racetrack, because if Allah uses the word running, yeah, um, and I feel like that they are going around us, and I know Brother Sean just mentioned slightly different and how they're going. Um, but ultimately, I feel like Allah is using the word running, meaning how we run around a racetrack. Allahu alam. Um, but anyway, so, okay, so doing, I just made these notes, doing our best not to add or take away or interpret anything from the Arabic text. Uh, but yeah, the main thing is to go through what is clear and um, yeah, basically stick firm on that um yeah some of this should not be up there <laughs> okay because i'm still going through this document um okay part two now you can you can carry on talking on on that side of things i mean i know there's a few bits and pieces probably are a bit rough on those notes but um if you wanted to carry on like looking at those uh notes that you made yeah going over them no 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 um i will have to pass this because i didn't have time to add on to this so this is about the muhkamat and the mutashabihat um, I will have to skip through this, but anyway, I'll begin with this one now. So the signs in the horizons. Okay, uh, so Allah says, "Qul ara aitum in in kana min indillahi thumma kafartum bihi man adallu min man huwa fi shiqaqim baid." Say, if you see it, meaning the Quran is from Allah, then you disbelieve in it. Who is more astray than he, the one who is in extreme defiance? So that's the whole point uh, also what we're doing here, that we're just simply pointing out what Allah has said. So if we agree that the Quran is the truth, um, then we have to take all of it, you know, whatever Allah says in the Quran. And then in the next ayah, Allah says, soon we will show them our signs in the horizons, what you mentioned earlier, Brother Shano. Soon we will show them our signs in the horizons and in themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. Uh, it is not sufficient concerning your Lord that he is over all things a witness. I think I've got some notes here. Yep. So although the introductory chapter details why we do this kind of work in attempting to clarify the deceptions we unfortunately believe in today, I wanted to begin this chapter with another reminder to us all. A reminder that if we believe in this Quran, then we believe in all of it, or we don't. There is no picking and choosing. That applies to me as well. Whether I understand it yet or not. It's all about the signs, the ayatina. Yeah, this is what Allah mentioned, uh, speaks about the signs, and this is what it is. The signs are in the horizons. Soon we will show them our signs in the horizons. That should be in itself enough for people to really think about, you know, whether this is an important topic or not. To think about the shape of the Earth, to look out in the horizons. Does the horizon curve, or is it just a flat, straight line all the way throughout? Um, so no, and, this, and, 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 and something interesting is that Allah talks about, uh, he says, our signs, right? right. Our signs, in, because, you know, they're saying my sign, and then there's our signs. Oh, okay. and, our, and, and one thing very interesting about that is when, when, when Allah refers to himself as we, right, yeah. this is Allah is referring to all aspects of himself that we have access to, meaning like all, all aspects of himself in terms of the internal and the external, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of all of his attributes, and what, what, what we have to realize is that there is an external reality and an internal reality. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Allah talks um, specifically from his internal reality, right? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes Allah will talk from his external, yeah? Right. But when, when, you're, when he says, ayatina, like, you know, our signs as in, um, like, uh, you know, inter sorry, uh, obviously his signs, but our signs, he's, he uses the plural, right? Right. right? Then, then that is encompassing both the external and the internal and it's very interesting that in that ayat allah refers to the external which is the horizon and the internal which is the self interesting right? yes so, so allah is saying signs, both both i agree both, yeah. from both sides we will show you all our signs right, right? right it's very interesting so um so as i said in and in this case the signs we can see in the horizons so the word in the quran is al-afaq yeah al-afaq so soon we will show them our signs in the horizons. So in, um, see with our own eyes until the truth becomes clear. That's the point that I'm emphasizing on. If we really want to know the truth, where is the truth going to be found? Yeah, it's there. 
Can you see what I'm kind of pointing to? In the horizons. Yep. Yeah. Allah is saying the truth. The signs are in the horizons. Uh, see with our own eyes until the truth becomes clear. Although these verses are addressed to the disbelievers, so I'm not denying you know, what previous scholars have said, um, although these, these verses are addressed to the disbelievers, I think we who claim to be Muslims should also take heed of the warnings throughout the Quran, as you'll see unfold in this presentation, inshallah. So the last presentation was on the earth, and now the horizon was just mentioned. The horizon is the meeting point between the earth and the heavens. And just before I present the first ayah on the topic of the heavens, I recommend that people keep in the back of their minds whether being obsessed with the one true accurate design of Allah's creation is a good thing or not. Yeah. So I want people to keep that in mind uh, as we go through this. So part three, returning vision to the heavens above. So there's, there's this ayah in Surah Baqarah, ayah number 22. The one who made for you the earth a carpet and the heavens a canopy and sent down. Yeah, these are the words. These are Allah's words. Yeah, sent down, and the earth is a carpet. What are you picturing? You know, what does a carpet look like? Uh, what does a canopy look like? What does sending something down look like? Uh, from the heavens, water. Yeah. So we should also remember that. And people do say sky. So this is the this is the beginning as I'm mentioning this now. Oh, and look at what does Allah say here. So do not set up rivals to Allah while you know. I'll get into that later. It is a contentious issue. It's very interesting. <laughs> right. Um, so is the sky heaven itself? Where did this word sky come from? I, I'm genuinely asking. I haven't wasted my time in doing the research, but I'm genuinely asking because for me, it sounds like it's another play to get us to remove ourselves from the concept of heavens itself. Because what happens you ask someone where is heaven a lot of people tr struggle where is heaven mm. it's not it's not the opposite of hell it's not the opposite of hell the heavens is the skies above yeah the opposite it's of heaven a, i think the skies are transitory yeah. points to the heavens that's right, right. Maybe, maybe. 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 That's, that's very good Sadi. that's yeah. that's why i believe as well and, and that's the thing heaven if you were to if you think about jannah mm. then it then it literally is above us he wow. literally is above us and then you keep on going until you get to the seven heavens and under the arsh of allah that's with the heavens you know that's where the highest heavens are you know so so yeah so of course the heaven it's the heaven right yeah. uh, but my question is if the word sky exists as in like that's something else when allah have mentioned that in his creation that you have the sky to look up to but, but, but then allah, up to the well, allah says by yeah. by the earth and the heavens and everything in between mm. right so, yeah. so that space in between is actually maybe that space. Maybe that space. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, my question is, and if so, have we unwittingly mixed heaven and paradise together? Because the opposite of Jannah is Jahannam. The opposite of uh, uh, hell is gardens of paradise. It's not heaven. Yeah. This is a confusion that seems to have taken place. Mm. Um, are you, are you, are you getting are you, are you following yeah pa paradise is just like a, a utopia yeah. it's not something specific it's just but it's always garden that paradise is always yeah. garden yeah jannah garden um even adam and hawa uh, you know um, I, I i need to ask something it was yep. did have i have i have i kind of uh swana have i kind of raised the contentious issue in terms of like un understanding um because for me the paradise is in the heaven right in the sense that there there, there are constructs of the heavens you and could be right i'm open to it i i don't know yeah so so, so that's the thing so my what my belief is for example the prophet Sallam, when he went up on the miraj he mm -hmm. passed the first second third heaven so each one has its mandate each one has its reality mm -hmm. um and they're physical they're one on top of the other right. until he reached the uh, the sixth and seventh heaven that's where the paradise was right, right. that's where paradise actually uh, like is in the in that place yeah and then above that then you have the sidra to muntaha and then you have um, uh, then you have like uh you know then right. his meeting with allah and this is why i need people like yourself because i haven't looked at these things i, I don't know. yeah so 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 this is the thing so we believe we mm. believe that there is a there is a material kind of reality to it meaning there is a physical uh, ascension to the heavens and then to allah himself meaning after the arsh then obviously that's when the eternal begins yeah and then you have a brother uh, go on, go on, yeah. and then and then you have like a metaphysical link so for example because we have the raw 
the ruh can exist in paradise as well as simultaneously being on the earth at the same time, right? The Prophet ﷺ said that when he was praying, the, the paradise came in front of him. And then if he said that if he was about, he was about to reach out for, the, for some grapes, and he said that had he reached out and grabbed those grapes, he said you would have been eating from them until the day of judgment, right? So, so there's a, do you see what I'm saying? So because of this, uh, an, another aspect of our reality, of our internal ruhaniyat reality, there is a, there is this kind of, a, there is a link that we have with the, you know, above the seven heavens, right? Or all the heavens. So we, so mm -hmm. we exist in multiple realities at the same time, but in terms of the physical reality, yes, yeah. there is a, there is a physical material um, uh, ascension. Right, right. Or, or, that, make, that makes sense. You know, well, the, the Sidratul Muntaha would be the extreme most of the, the ex existence. Yeah, the extreme uh, of existence. But if someone was to tell you that uh, uh, what you're saying that after the Sidratul Muntaha you have the Arsh and everything, uh, like if someone says that would be anthropo anthropomorphizing God, mm -hmm. what, what would you say? Because I, I, would say I would say that first of all, no, because um, what what you're doing is you when you have the creation the arsh is still a creation allah is not creation right mm -hmm. so by allah creating the arsh it's not that allah created himself on the arsh right mm, okay. but rather yep. it's that allah created the arsh and the arsh is meant to be a reference point right it's meant to okay. be that mm -hmm. for example because the arsh isn't a ball it's an actual chair and a chair has a a seating area meaning there's a there's a definitive up and down to it yeah mm -hmm. so everything below the arsh is you know the the the, the footstool creation. and everything yeah. like creation and then allah is signifying that this is the the pinnacle the point. Of creation yeah and then mm -hmm. and allah is above the arsh and allah says that the, there is the the arsh expands over the the, the seven heavens all right so meaning that's the the extremities of creation is the arsh and the biggest meaning the biggest thing the biggest creation is the arsh right so if you were to look at them if you were to look at the material creation the biggest thing that exists is the arsh, right? All right, and 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 what is the arsh? The arsh is meant to signify Allah's authority, right? Because who does the arsh belong to? It belongs to the king. And then Allah, then it has a then it has another aspect is that from the arsh, Allah, um, Allah, Allah commands the creation, right? Allah commands the angels that not even the angels will see. Not the angels do not see Allah. All they do is come um, in front of the arsh. And before them in the arsh, there's all of these, uh, there's all of these, uh, what do you call it? There's these veils, right? Veils. And, and even exactly. Jibreel Alisham said that had I, had I um, come close to, had, I, earth, had yeah. I come close, I would have been burned. I would have been yeah, burned, exactly. Like so meaning, meaning it's meant to signify a place, a place where um, you can be addressed by Absolutely. the king. You can, you know, like the court of the king for the, for the, for the heavens. It begins at the arsh, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah? Absolutely. Yep. So that's what it is. It's not. There's no anthropomorphizing here, right? Because to Allah, our belief is um, the arsh and everything below the arsh is nothing to Allah, right? Because hmm. even the arsh is nothing to Allah. Get it? Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, like a reference point, like you said. I like yeah. that. And okay. and 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 just to just to end on that, just to end on this one, is hmm. for us, it's a mercy as well because if we use our imagination. We think of this uh, this world compared to the next as like a grain, mm -hmm. and the and the next compared to the next um, uh, heaven is like a grain, like a like Prophet Sallallahu said, like a ring in the desert, meaning the, the 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 expanse is so big, right? And then when the seven heavens compared to the kursi is like a ring in the desert, mm -hmm. and then the kursi, like the kursi, imagine how big this thing is. The kursi compared to the arsh is like a ring in the desert, mm -hmm. and the and the arsh compared to Allah is nothing, mm -hmm. right? So, so this is uh, this is meant to give us an idea of just how powerful Allah is and just how insignificant the creation is, right? Yeah, careful with that word, the insignificant, because I'm moving away from the strength of that insignificance. I agree with both. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that's right. No, no, you're you're not you're not wrong because unfortunately they've they really pushed on this insignificance as well. I I I I understand that. I understand it, but I think like because we need to understand that there will come a time when Allah will destroy everything. Mm. Meaning even the heavens will be in 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 destruction. Yeah, yeah. You will be left in destruction as well. Yeah. Meaning Allah is Allah is showing that look, all of this to me doesn't. It's nothing to me. Like yeah, yeah. I can I can create and I can destroy at will. And but I, I think in this, in this research that I've done, it's become very clear to me that Allah has created three things significantly, which is 
the earth, the heavens. So if you look in that six days of creation, which Allah emphasizes, and uh, but anyway, we'll get into that uh, chapter where you know what was what was the most difficult creation. So just very quickly, um, yeah, just very quickly. So where am I? Yeah, returning vision to the heavens above. Okay, yep, yeah. and. Yeah, so because there is a lot of resistance, ridicule and mockery on this topic, yeah, I will keep returning to the issue of whether we should perhaps be focused on the true design of the heavens and the earth that Allah created. So let's have a look. What does Allah say? If people say, why are you, why are you talking about this so much? Yeah, what does Allah say? Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of the night and day are surely signs for those of understanding. Yeah, so why would Allah make a significant attention being paid towards the creation of the heavens and the earth you know because that's what the some of the claims are made isn't it why are you so stuck on this topic um so for me that's that's a sign in itself what allah says and he carries on so allah carries on have a look at this so the signs in the heavens have a look at the next uh, those who remember allah while standing and sitting and lying on their sides and they reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth, saying, Our Lord, you have not created this in vain. Glory be to you, being above such a thing, then protect us from the punishment of the fire. So this is all about, as far as I can tell in these two ayats, it's about reflecting on the creation of the heavens and the earth. And, and just to add, just to add, look, in the ayat, Allah is saying, standing, sitting, and lying down on the side, meaning constantly reflecting. In all, in all states, Thank whether you. they're whether they're walking, whether they're sitting, whether they're even I didn't, sleeping, I didn't see that, but yes, you know, they're, they're constantly, constantly thinking. And sometimes I find myself constantly thinking, mm. I, and it, and it strengthens my iman. Like I'm lying down and I'm thinking about the heavens. I'm, mm. I'm sitting and I'm drinking coffee or something, and I'm thinking about the heavens. Yeah. Right? This is a this is a good endeavor. And mm. I'm not saying that in all Agreed. states they Agreed. are thinking. Agreed. Agreed. And where is that's the other thing, by the way. They want to teach you the meditation of nothingness, yeah, thinking of nothing, emptying your mind and having no thoughts, which is, which which it doesn't exist as far as I can tell. Those who believe in right. Allah, that's you right. empty your thoughts of nonsensical stuff. You empty your thoughts of time wasting stuff, but you never have no thoughts. You think about Allah. I I actually and I'll tell you something. You contemplate, contemplate. Yeah, and and this is something very interesting. Is that just even contemplating on the arsh alone mm. has has filled me with awe. Yeah. To the point where this world has become so insignificant. Yeah. When I think about the Arash, yeah. and I think about just in terms of the size difference, we're just talking about the size difference, the material size difference. Mm -hmm. Where the Prophet said, for example, this world compared to the next, to the next is like a ring in the desert. So when you do reach the seventh heaven, this mm -hmm. world is so small, it's even less in size than a literal atom, right? right? Meaning that's how small this world is compared to the what's happening in the seventh heaven. Yes. So when you think of the Arsh and the Arsh is expanding over all of this, mm. meaning this world that we're so preoccupied with and being, you know, like, uh, like it's, it's taking us away from worship, it's taking us away from all of these things. It's literally nothing mm. uh, that the people in the heavens, they will be in such a state where they will pick up a grain of sand. This is what I used to think. They'll mm. pick up a grain and think this, the, 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 the heavens, the earth that we were in was smaller in size than this grain of sand. Mm. right right so that again for the sahaba i used to imagine that it must have been such a powerful lesson for them to know that this one that they're living in is so small and so insignificant prophet mm -hmm. is telling us for example that there are, there is a tree in jannah that mm. it takes 500 years for a fast rider to come out of the shadow of the tree right. and then he mentioned then he mentioned the ayat in quran in surah waqiyah um, um the, the the long shadows yeah that the long shadow it's so long it takes 500 years to get out of the shadow of this tree this earth must be nothing compared to this shadow right 500 years in which time this so, so in earthly this time? time of earthly time that if you were to go for 500 years to come out meaning 500 years ago that was when the renaissance was happening so since mm -hmm. the renaissance until now we would have still been riding to get out of the shadow of this tree right so i find it very interesting that the prophet Sallam, is giving us these size differentials but then how would you enjoy a tree that's so big that you can't even see the end of the shadow of the tree mm -hmm. unless you yourself was increased in size unless Allah <coughs> would you in size get it so if you're that big you would take up a grain and then think 
the earth was nothing. And why, so why was I being preoccupied with this earth when it's nothing? Mm. Right? So yeah, so this Amazing. is... Uh, this so is we, are, this we are, sorry, yeah, Brother Yahya, if you want to add something very quickly. Uh, uh, I'll try to be quick, inshallah. Yeah, just a passage that you're actually mentioning these ayahs is uh, Surah Ali Imran, right? Just a bit of context, uh, uh, the Prophet والسلام, was with his blessed wife Aisha radiallahu anha, and he sought her permission to go and pray to receive these particular ayat. And then in prayer, when they came down, it was almost a time of Fajr. And uh, Bilal, radiallahu anhu, he came and he saw the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, his beard was in tears and he was calling him for the prayer. He said, Ya Rasulullah, the, the prayer is about to start. And he said, it's narrated that he said, um, Ya Bilal, how could I raise my head when these ayats have been revealed? These ones starting with Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard. And it's just so powerful. Yani the Rabbana du'as that follow it. Mm. Like from the con- from the conclusion that these, these people are saying, or these people who reflect, Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batulan subhanaka faqina adhab an nar. Mm. And he saved us from the hellfire for us not to realize that this was not created all in vain. Mm. The, the, the power of these ayat, you know, yani they're reflecting for those who are Ulil al Bab who who possess this this lub this this intellect. Mm. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, Jazakallah Khair, absolutely. Um, yeah, so as I've said here, people of intellect are supposed to be reflecting. Just furthering what you're saying, brother Yahya, people of intellect are supposed to be reflecting on the signs of Allah in the heavens and the earth, and in the way that the night and day move around us. That's that's what you can take away from these two ayats. What Allah is mentioning. Uh, Surah Al Imran. And can I can I can I ask a question as well? Just to, uh, Ulul Al Bab, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what what is the root meaning of Al Bab, or what is where does that I word come from? Checked everything out, but you can let me know if you. I, I would be. I would hold on. I, I would be. I would be interested to know if it comes from doorways or opening doors, right? Because okay. Bab means door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, ah, so, right. So Al Bab means doorways or, or multiple yes, doors, yes, yes. right? So the people of doorways, it opens up doorways of understanding, yes. right? So this is a very interesting gates of understanding. Yeah, yeah, gates, what we're saying, gates. open your mind, open the yeah. doors of your yeah, mind. Yeah. Exactly. So ulul al bab. I used to always so the gates. Exactly. So there are gates. Mm-hmm. So imagine if Allah is talking about certain internal realities, internal gates, right? Those that, with doors open. Yeah. So they can only be opened through certain kind of activities, and one of them is, you know, one of the biggest ones is uh, is the is the reflection of the cosmology. Mm, absolutely. So, yeah, so I think we should specifically be doing this, reflecting on the signs of uh, Allah, you know, in the heavens and the earth and the night and the day. We should be doing exactly that. But Allah does not mean watching Richard Attenborough or what BBC shows us. Yeah. So I'll put that bit because that's what people have. No, honestly, uh, it, it's a joke, but at the same time, it's not a joke because uh, what, what is it that people who are asleep are obsessed with? Richard Attenborough and the BBC shows, you know, Frozen Planet and all of that. But rather than the reality of what our own eyes see outside there, which is what Allah is telling us, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's crazy. It's bizarre. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so then the next ayah. Um, and how many of a sign in the heavens and the earth do they pass over it while they are from them, the ones who turn away? Yeah. How many of a signs in the heavens and the earth do they pass over it while they are from them, the ones who turn away? So now tell me, are we supposed to be obsessed? Are you turning away yeah, uh, from these signs in the heavens and the earth? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so they're turning away from them. Yeah. yeah. And they are the ones who turn away. Yeah. Pass over them. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to uh, get a little rhythm going with this, with this theme right now. Please, please carry so, on, carry on. Mafie, Mafie. We only turn away from these signs because our attention is being grabbed by these authorities and institutions that are against Allah. Yeah. And these authorities and institutions, yeah, are these are they telling us the truth? Where can we go to seek the truth? And if you look at the next one, yeah, so Allah says in Surah Ar-Rad at the, from the beginning. So these three ayats, I think I've got three of them, yeah. Um, Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra. Uh, these are the verses of the book. And which has been revealed to you from your Lord is the truth, but most of the people do not believe. Yeah, we have to. There's going to be an emphasis on this about what Allah says about the majority and the minority. 
Yeah, most of the people do not believe. Uh, Allah is the one who, so look at the context in which Allah says that. Most of the people do not believe. What does Allah say straight away afterwards? Allah is the one who raised the heavens without pillars that you can see. Yeah. Amazing. Then he established himself on the throne and subjected the sun and the moon, each running its course for an appointed term. He arranges each matter. He details the signs so that you may, so that you may, in the meeting with your Lord, believe with certainty. This is amazing. Wallahi, man, this is so, so because this is, Allah is referring now to the physical cosmology, the material right. cosmology. Right. This is absolutely amazing. You know that I, I absolutely find this absolutely astonishing. You know that. So this is the point. This is the point. He's going back to that question, returning our vision to the heavens above. Yeah. Why? Because Allah is telling us, don't turn away from them. He's telling us, reflect on them. He's telling us, most of the people do not believe. And believe what? About Allah is the one who raised these heavens, uh, established himself on the throne, and this, this contentious issue about the whole subject in the sun and the moon. It's back to that again. So that Yukobura ayah has got the same thing here. The subjected sun and the moon. Where is it? Was Sahra Shamsa Wal Qamar. Yeah. Did, and that Yajri is that running again. So this what? is the description. They're running. Each is again, Kullu. Each are running. So this is a different ayah. Not the Yukobura ayah from Surah Zumar, uh, ayah number five. This is from Surah Rad, number two. So Allah said this again about the sun and the moon. Again, here it is. What is it subjected to? Tell me at the beginning of the ayah, what is it subjected to? The heavens. Because heavens. the heavens is above us. So those things are subjected to the heavens, which we understand. And we are down here. They are subjected to us going us. So this I, 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 I find it amazing because on the heliocentric model, the moon is subjected to the earth. Yep. Right? The moon is subjected to the earth. And then the earth is subjected to the sun. Right. Right. Can you see? So there's this kind of in this this kind of messy confusion. Like call it confusion. confusion, but but also you think about it, what's subjected to what? What is do you see what I'm saying? Like this is completely it's not in the Quran. This is not Quran. Mm -hmm. Heliocentric model is not Quran. Yeah. All right. And and you say you hit the nail on the head, look, and which uh, which is revealed from uh, which is revealed, um, sorry, and which has been revealed to you from your Lord is the truth, but most people do not believe. Meaning we are taking our scientific model of cosmology from people who do not believe. Right. right, and Allah is Allah, Allah is telling us that this. Look, enough. That should yeah, be that enough. should be enough. And then the directly the verse after is talking about cosmology. Right, but the people who do not believe, yeah. you're you're subjecting yourself under their idea and interpretation, understanding of cosmology. But Allah is telling you that they do not believe in His ayat. That's right. So when Allah is giving you something, that why are you taking it from these people, right? And so it at this point, from the point that you just made, yeah. why are we following them? Yeah, exactly. Why are we following them? This is why I feel as though just, just generally we have so disconnected from Quran. Like we are so disconnected from Quran. Absolutely. It's crazy. This is why I'm can, trying can, to can I chime in for a second? Can I chime in for a second? Yeah, yeah please, yes. You know, uh, brother Shadno, when you when you mentioned that, that it possibly means that the night and the day are independent of the sun and the moon. Yes. That point completely blew my mind yeah. because I've been thinking about age and how we age and get quote unquote older and we seem to uh, synonymize our aging with time yeah. but what is time it's just it's it's it's, it's a miraculous thing right it's so, a miraculous thing yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not the time that's making you older aging is independent of time allah yeah. is causing you to age right yeah that's right and Allah actually refers to that in the Quran. Allah refers to old age as an aspect of His uh, His creation, in the sense that, and Allah specifies old age, right? Because you see, you see man becoming old again, right? He becomes great. Why doesn't He not continue to grow? Why doesn't He not continue to get bigger exactly, and stronger? Exactly. You know, There's a specified amount that you get to, and then you reverse that, right? Exactly. And also, yeah. and also, you, we like we mentioned in the beginning, there are different like the sleepers of the cave. They slept literally in their bodies for three hundred years. Uzair, I think he, I think either he slept or he died, right? And then he was resurrected a hundred years later. Right. Yes. You have the food. The food was unchanged, meaning it yes. wasn't affected by time. It was like That's in right. a pocket of its own. And then the yes. donkey was created from Allah is teaching us that that even I even your independent creatures can be can be have their own pockets of time. They can be they can be you know independent of the rest of the world. With you, Allah. Yeah, and, 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 and sorry, one last point, Shah, uh, Shah Um 
you know, when you said that the uh, night and day could be independent of the sun and moon, when I thought to myself, well, subhanAllah, this is opening up possibilities of trying to model the non-spherical earth. Yes, yeah, mashallah. Yes, right. it opens up tons of possibilities. I, 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 yeah. Go on, I, I will stop now. No, no, no. I, I mean, if you want to finish that thought, sorry, brother Waste, if you don't mind. No, no, no. I'm, I'm happy. Go on. I'm happy. I'm go, go on. You, you the carry, next... on. Ca carry on, bro. Yeah. No, no. It's, I've had trouble uh, in my mind trying to conceptualize a non-spherical Earth, and I've seen different models that sort of get everything right up until a certain point, and then mm. it misses out on uh, a few things. Okay. And other models that what they get, what, what other models get wrong, other models get right, but then it switches over the vice versa. So they miss something. Out. And the thing that's missing out always is the sun and the moon and the night and the day. Yeah, mm. that's right. That's right. Yeah. This is there's something very interesting. This is why I, I myself I I'm very interested in doing a completely like a presentation. And I love if we waste can come on this. But the first yeah, volume yeah, we'll of, of Tabari's Tariq. That is an absolutely ma magnificent, like, um, because of everything that we learned, mm -hmm. Ibn Abbas's account of cosmology is amazing. For example, he says that the night and the day, for example, night is a being, it's like it's, an, it's, a, it's a tangible thing, mm -hmm. that, that there's an angel with, let's say, a container of night. Mm -hmm. And what he does during the day, Allah sends the angel from the, from the west, from the, from the east to the west from the east to the west mm. with a, with night in his hand and then he spreads it throughout the sky mm. right and he's only got a limited amount of night and so when the day of judgment begins for example that's when the night would have run out right mm. this is what this is what even abbas is saying well, right? this, this, this would make sense because we can see the sun when it's dark and we can see the moon when it's light exactly and and something amazing is that for example when the sun rises from the west it will be it will lose its luminosity it will lose the light of the sun but you still it will still be day right? right so the sun will lose its light on when it rises from the west but it will still be daytime mm. right and so this is something uh, one thing we have to understand is that day and night could also be something that exists in the heavens mm -hmm. right it's not just something that's confined to this earth because when you think about um, when you think about seeing the moon during the daytime, you see it's it's like it's it's in blue, like you see it in the blueness, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's why, for example, some scholars say there are there are there are scriptural evidences for this, but also the the physical evidences for the moon not being within this heaven. It's in the fourth heaven, mm -hmm. right? And it's shining actually from the fourth heaven. So mm -hmm. it's it's being filtered throughout all of these different heavens, and oh, so the oh, 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 I'll have to correct you on that one actually. Okay, uh, cool. Would you, say, would you say the moon being in the fourth heaven, being in the fourth heaven, or being not in this heaven? It's being in one of the heavens above us, right? Okay. So 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 again again, I'm I'm open. I'm open to everything, right? No, no, I know, I know. The reason why is because this is why because I want to do this model with you. But yeah. only once everything from what Allah said in the Quran has been established. Uh, and, and, uh, okay, yeah, I understand. And, and this is the point. And the point is that, that the night and the day, for example, daytime is blue, right? Mm -hmm. If the default position, the default day is blue, right? The sky is blue. Mm -hmm. And so they say, why is the sky blue? It could be that day and night exist in the heavens mm -hmm. as a separate um, entity. To yes, the Allah moon. mentions about these lamps in the lowest heaven, as sama yeah. dunya yeah um, so, so so and 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 one thing uh one thing very uh, you know one thing amazing is that um the uh in terms of the the sun and the moon like uh in that second ayat um like allah is the one who raised the heavens without pillars that you can see and he established himself on the throne and subjected the sun and the moon so ibn abbas for example says that the that the light of the sun is taken from the arsh and the light of the moon is taken from the kursi mm -hmm. right and that's one of the reasons why they're so significant Mm -hmm. Because if you if you try to compare them to the rest of creation, then you think what is so significant about the sun and the moon, mm -hmm. and and for us in terms of an intimate relationship with Allah, in terms of this ayat, the throne, and as soon as as soon as the throne is mentioned, Allah mentions the sun, mm -hmm. is because the, the light of the sun is taken from the arsh, mm -hmm. and the light of the moon is taken from the kursi. This is what Ibn Abbas says, right? right? And so that's why I'm saying that there there needs to be we have to investigate, we have to go we back to these sources, yeah. right? So to, right to, now, to, right now, I'm restricting myself to the heavens, so yeah. then we can clear clarify in the heavens. Of course, but these topics you can't speak about the heavens without speaking about night and day, and yeah. without speaking about sun and moon. And I respect that, uh, but I am really trying to anchor yeah. this Matthew, one Matthew, the heavens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so just quickly going back on those ayats that I mentioned in Surah Ar-Rad from the very beginning, Allah saying that most people do not believe, and then he's talking about the heavens uh, in the next ayah, uh, he's talking, Allah's talking about the sun and the moon, um, what else, the signs, so that you will believe with certainty. So in the previous ayah, Allah's saying that most will not believe, and then Allah's telling us what he's given us, so then we will believe, that's what I see here, so then you will believe with certainty. So the counter is there. Most will not believe. And at the same time, Allah is giving us signs for what will make us believe. And if that wasn't enough, if you look at the third ayah in Surah Ar-Rad, um, and he is the one who, so I should change that, by the way. I've actually refined some of my, I think, in my learning. Stretched is okay, but I think it's more accurate to say in the English language extended. Yeah. So I'm going to change that one. Uh, because it's the same word that Allah uses to describe how he extends his hand out uh, and give, blesses uh, people. Of course, we don't take that literally, but it matches with this extending. So, But the point I'm making here is it's about the reflection. So I don't know if anyone can follow with me on this. So in the first verse, Allah says, Those, uh, most do not believe. In the second one, Allah is giving us what the signs are so that we do believe. And then in the third one, it's for me, it's clarified. And he is the one who extended the earth and placed in it firmly set fixed mountains and rivers. And from all the fruits he made, they're in two pairs. Uh, he covers the night with the day. Indeed, in that surely are signs for people who reflect. So the point I'm making here is the emphasis on reflection. Okay. Returning vision to the heavens above. Um, okay um so number four now any any thoughts any questions before i move just on just a, just a, just the last point that you made can, can you just uh just speak a little bit more on that the last point the reflections okay so basically uh this is all about returning vision to the heavens above and just in surah arad alone if you look at this there's emphasis on allah saying that most people do not believe in this book and uh, the next ayah, so it's for me, it's like Allah is telling us how we can believe with certainty. So what's the what's the thing? لَعَلَّكُمْ بِلِقَائِ رَبِّكُمْ تُوْقِنُونَ So with yaqeen. So I... Keeping us, yeah. Okay, this is amazing. Look, look yeah. what he says. He details the signs so yeah. that you may believe. Right. right. So that you may believe. He did, meaning, look at this. This is the doorway. This is That's one of the I'm doorways saying. to belief, right? Yeah. Is that you, like... Look, you see what I'm saying? So this is amazing. This is this is the one of the gateways. You can say Ulul al -bab. But can you see that? The in bab. the first one, Allah is saying the most people do not believe, and then he's giving us the antidote. And and exact and he's and not just this, he or says the cure. He, yeah. he details the signs so that you may believe in the meeting with your Lord with certainty, yeah, yeah. with the the tuqinun, yeah, with yaqeen. Yeah. yeah. And this is amazing. This is amazing because uh, not just is there a deliberate construct, but also it's like a clock winding down. Right? right. So from the creation, you should be able to know that everything is coming to an end. Right. right? right. So so meaning the, the one exactly is, is counting down. Everything is counting down. So there is a deliberate type of ending to what's happening. Mm. And if the thing is, if you believe in this magnificent creation and it's winding down, then whoever created it, that you're going to have a meeting with that person mm. or that being. Mm. Right. And so it's almost like just through the external or the material world you will be able to come to the conclusion that the that the creation is ending and then you will have that meeting right, right. so this is very and it's all in that verse yeah well and, look at the look at the third verse so i just showed you the first and the second yeah. most people do not believe and then allah is giving us what we can use to yeah. believe and then look at the third one yeah it's about reflecting on the firmly set fixed mountain oh that's amazing well like this is absolutely this is so yeah so and he is the one who stretched the earth and placed in it firmly set mountains and rivers and from all of the fruits he made there in two pairs of course because all creation is in pairs all creation is in two the, the divine two meaning all creation is two it can't be one because allah is one right and allah is al ghayb you can't see allah but you yeah. can see his creation he covers the night with the day indeed in that surely are signs for people who reflect of course mm. of course i mean this 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 is just elementary now do you know what I'm saying? Uh, if you think about it clearly, right at the end, Allah says night and the day. So, so, so it's the, the meaning is counting down. Time is time is continuously mm. um, 
uh, moving forward, right? right? And 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 night, day, night, day. These are the two opposites, the perpetual yep. opposites, right? And uh, the binary. Yeah, yeah the, the, exactly. Meaning, it, or, it, it's a, uh, it's it's it, not just is it binary because male and female binary, everything fine, yep. binary. But the fact that this is the perpetual clock, right? Right. That the binary system is indicating that time is moving forward. That mm. there is a there is a there's a finiteness there is a right. you know there is uh, what, what I, I find what I find very interesting is in Jannah when mm. we are in Jannah there is no night right, right? there is no night there, mm. the, like it will be perpetual um, day obviously Allah will Allah will you know create enjoyment of whatever yeah, yeah. the situation is but meaning there is no there is no counting wow. down anymore there is no time right. going right. forward interesting. anymore interesting. it's just it's just you see what I'm saying this perpetual yeah. day and mm. It's very interesting that in the hadith, it's actually what will indicate nighttime and daytime is like a light. There will be like a, a light that indicates um, like day and then like night. It's not it's not like the sky becomes dark and then it becomes light. It becomes dark. Right. It's perpetual uh, day. Right. Right. So, so I just thought I learned that. But, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. So, um, OK, so number four, seeking insight in the days of confusion. There's another one I have now. Uh, so if you have a look at some of these ayats that I've got here. Um, okay, so it's in Surah Qaf. And if you look at the first ayah of Surah Qaf, it, what is it? The, this glorious Quran. So Allah describes the Quran as being glorious. It still appears to be capable of bringing us amazing things through warners amongst ourselves that appear to be ordinary people. This is what Allah says in the Quran, uh, Surah itself. Um, ordinary people, yeah? Things coming from ordinary people. Is what people should be also thinking about. That does all of our insights or information or knowledge have to come through this hierarchical structure or this clergy? You know, does it? I'm not sure because Allah shows us examples of how it comes through ordinary people. Yeah. Um, so this is how Surah Kaf begins. There are, however, these verses from Surah Kaf that I have selected which raise an important question regarding the heavens. So it's all about the heavens. So before we move on to that, I think just to just to touch on ordinary people, mm. um, you know, of course, in Surah Yasin, we know about Habib and Najjar, mm -hmm. right? He was a warner of his people. He said to his people, believe in the messengers. Right? Yep. He was he was like regarded not just an ordinary person, like an as a, almost like an outcast. He was he was almost as someone on the outskirts. He lived on the edge of the city. Right. And he ran to his people. And because of telling his people to obey the messengers, that's what that's what gave him distinction. Right. right? That's what made him, that's what gave him distinction. So it's very interesting also that we have to understand that uh, the wilayat, because Allah says, Allahu aliyun ladina amanu, that Allah is the friend of the believers, right? Mm -hmm. And that there are wilayat, meaning if Allah is your friend, then that means you're Allah's friend, mm -hmm. right? So a wali of Allah isn't just a, uh, someone like Seth, like he's, he has to be an alim or he has to be this. He could be anyone, right? right? And 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 uh, Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah, through His mercy, He spread His friends amongst everyone from all mm -hmm. types of people, from among the slave class as well as the aristocracy. There mm -hmm. are His friends amongst the ordinary people, right? And uh, and it's very interesting that it's not from a set type of people. It could be anyone. Anyone could be a friend of Allah, and they themselves don't even know that they are the friends of Allah. Yes, right? that's another interesting point as well. Yeah. That's right. They, yeah. they, them, they don't. They themselves don't know that they're the friends yeah. of Allah. Yeah. yeah, so I just thought that was May Allah make us all amongst the. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, yeah. So I've got this from Surah Kaf. So that's how it begins about this coming from ordinary people. But from ayah number five, but they denied the truth when it came to them. So they are in a confused state. So I find this interesting that Allah said this connecting <laughs> when you deny the truth, you don't have clarity. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what uh, that's telling me. If you are denying the truth, you are not in a clear state in your thinking. And if you look at the next ayah, so what does Allah say about that straight away? Deny the truth, so they're in a confused state. And then in the next ayah, they do not look at the heaven above them. They do not look at the heaven above them. Yeah, How we structured it and adorned it and not designed for it any breaches. Right? You won't find this in the translations. This is the problem. I've looked into this root word, Faruj. For, for and, and this is just another, like, when people say, oh, why are you talking about cosmology? Allah is saying, do they not look at the heavens? That's what I'm saying. Them. That's why I'm doing this. It's amazing how much all of this is in the Quran. And it's no wonder we're disconnected because it's mostly, from what I can tell, what Allah speaks about. It's mostly. Um, 
but yeah it's very it's very high level stuff it seems um so yeah allah says they do not look at the heaven above them how we structured it and adorned it so two things how it's structured and adorned and not designed for any breaches what are we believing in i'll i'll get to that so um let me just finish these ayats and the earth we have stretched it out again yeah and cast therein firmly set fixed mountains and made to grow therein every kind of beautiful thing giving here it is again basar yeah giving insight and a reminder for every slave who turns to allah so can you see the significance of this again it's the heavens it's all about the heavens yeah the heavens the heavens the heavens <clears throat> upon reading these verses the question could be easily raised to us today do you want to deny the truth and remain in a confused state or do you want to be one of those who want to gain insight insight might also be described to be the blessed water that comes from the heavens that brings all life all to life and flourishment so that's in ayah number 9 as you go further in surah qaf um so in this age that we live in the need for insight appears to be of paramount importance in being able to recognize the false messiah um along with the need to also see through the deceptions that come with the antichrist the depopulation injections and the manufactured war are just the beginning it seems yeah so these are distractions obviously and uh, and for me i'm i'm done with these distractions i'm like this is clear now why people are distracted because you're distracted from this bigger picture this cosmology yeah if you knew this you would not even be interested in these distractions let alone fall for the tricks um so yeah busser 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 why did i say that i think it's there three times is it three times okay so, or is it but this is but this you know what this is one thing i've realized um just to connect it with what we spoke in the beginning in yep. terms of building a philosophy of science or bu- mm-hmm. building a certain ethic in terms of why and how we're going to be studying um cosmology is yep. that lies making it very clear that there must be a connection between the external and the internal that right. whatever internally we believe or when inter- internally we have a you know whatever we have yearning for you need to satisfy that by doing the 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 investigations you have to be looking you have to be contemplating you have to be connecting the external with your internal the material <laughs> reality with your immaterial self you right. have to bring that connection merge, merge that, the two merge the two. you have to merge the two and that's when basira happens that's when all sorts of um, openings happen that's right, right. The, so, they, they've, they've made a heavy they've made a they've made a real big effort in separating them and absolutely, uh, absolutely. and burying one yeah mashallah and it's amazing because honestly just being able to look at these verses with you as a group mm. it, it's it's more it's i'm actually i'm paying attention now right, right? Okay. like because i understand in what context i'm looking at these verses right and right. it's it's and that's it's, that's the difficulty that's the difficult yeah. part these yeah. sections that i have labeled why am i bringing these up because people can keep popping out i hurts but you have to say why you kind of bring these together is difficult um so yeah uh basar i can't remember, i can't see the ayats but there is a part where allah mentions basar three times and allah mentions basira allah mentions basira yeah three um, times i don't know why i've not got it here but anyway okay so anyway the point is that this is for me this is the only way to block out the illusions yeah the attack our pineal gland uh the sixth chakra blo- blocking our path to taqwa which is god consciousness Uh, to the sixth and seventh heaven, which I believe could be a sun. Again, I'm not clear on any of this, but I'm beginning to find correlations between this: the seven chakras, you know, raising your condition, uh, trying to become um, one of iman, one of a sun, uh, trying to become one of taqwa. All of these seem to correlate to me, and it seems to be connected to the seven heavens. Um, so the point is, how can we truly be aware of Allah if we are not even aware of what He created? or what he revealed to us see that's the two things it's what we're looking outside as well as what we're reading what he what Allah has given us in the Quran can uh, I, can i explain there are there are times when Allah mentions insight yeah mm-hmm. and there's, a, there's actually a few verses as well alhamdulillah yeah. um so obviously should i can i can i go through some of those verses yeah yeah go for it yeah, yeah. so surah al imran verse uh, 138 mm-hmm. allah says this is an insight uh, this is an insight to humanity a guide and a lesson this meaning the how the um a bayan lin nasi yeah this is a inside of like a talk uh, a kind of um like a like a lecture for humanity a guide and a lesson to the god fearing this quran is an insight for humanity a guide and a mercy for people of sure faith 
that, can you that's give me the reference? Uh, surah, can you give me the reference? Yes. Yeah. So, so Surah Jathiyat, verse 20. Yeah. Hada yeah. basirun lin nasi. This is a basir for for uh, for for uh, for insan. Yeah. And and uh, and a guide. Yeah. Wa huda, um, wa rahma, and and mercy. Li qawmi yuqinun. And a yes. guide of mercy for people of sure faith, yeah, with yes. people of yaqeen. This that verse alone in Surah Jathia, verse 20, is amazing, right? Amazing. Yeah, because look, Hada Basirun in Nasi wa huda wa rahmatun li qawmi yuqinun. I mean, this is it's all there. Do you understand? Yeah. Like that is the that is this that's what we're doing now. This is and your then, doctor's prescription. Yeah, and in Surah Sa'ad, verse 45, and remember our servants, Ibrahim. Ishaq and Jacob, السلام, the men of strength and insight. The men of strength and insight. Allah says there, um, well, absar, they're absar, they're men of insight. Yeah, it's amazing. And if you look at Ibrahim, just for example, Ibrahim himself, right? What was his, you see his journey and some of the things he did and some of the, some of the like interactions he had with Allah. You look, you look at Yaqub, السلام, who from the beginning of Yusuf Alayhisam's story, he was told that, you know, your, your son would become a prophet, right? Mm -hmm. And even though he didn't see his son for years, they say decades and decades, some say 40 years he didn't see his son, mm -hmm. but yet still he believed, even though everything around him was telling him, um, like, you know, your son is dead, your son is dead, right? right? Yeah, and then you have all of these things, like um, Allah in Surah Qaf, verse 8, as an insight and a reminder for every servant who turns to Allah, yeah? Um, in Surah An-Nur, verse 44, Allah alternates the night and day, the, the day and night. Surely in this is a lesson for the people of insight, right? Surah Yusuf, verse 108, say, O Prophet, this is my way. I invite you to Allah with insight. I and those who follow me, glory be to Allah, and I'm not one of the polytheists. So here's, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أُدْعُوا إِلَى Allah. Yeah, for, say this is my way. I invite to Allah, ala basiran on on basir. This is upon basira, so it's upon insight, right? So the way of Rasulullah is actually through deep penetration, and th this is in the Quran, and and that links the Sunnah uh, with the with the with with the Quran, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Because how do you how how do you now understand basira? When Allah is telling you that the way of Ibrahim is on the way of Basira, the way of, uh, of, the way of uh, Yaqub is on the way of Basira. Now the Prophet says, my way is upon Basira. Mm -hmm. right? So I find that uh, very amazing. So that verse is um, uh, Surah Yusuf, verse 108. So this is the, right at the end of uh, Surah Yusuf. And, uh, and again, Surah Yusuf is itself an amazing, um, uh, uh, it's, an, it's an, an, an amazing exploration of the cosmology or, or, the, or the heavens, right? right, right. Or, or getting a deeper insight into the heavens. Right. Because uh, you, have, have, right. you have to send me that. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I might have deleted it in my document, but I've just found it here right now. So if you look at this one here, mm -hmm. uh, the one who created the seven heavens, one above another. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so there's there's many other verses, but yeah, this is in terms of basira. This is how important it is to have insight or deep yeah. insight into, um, you know, beyond the apparent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, carry on. Exactly. Okay. I'm just wondering how much I'll probably try to cover this and maybe leave for the rest. But uh, let's let's just see how how are you doing. Are you okay? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, yeah. good, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying it so far. I'm not, I'm not sure about everyone else. Okay, alhamdulillah, that's good. No, no, you. Good. And, and apologies, I apologize. I keep interrupting Mafia, right? No, 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 that's cool. That's cool. This is what I wanted anyway. Um, okay, wait, hold on. Let me just see. Okay, so the greatest, most difficult creation. Uh, the next bit now. Um, so Allah says, surely uh, the creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind. But most of mankind do not know. Once again, yeah? once again, um, yeah, I don't think people do know. See, again, they say, "Why are you obsessed with how this world is created?" But then, what does that tell you? So, if most people do not appear to know that there is something greater than ourselves, so now when you mention insignificance, I'll say yes. In that sense, yes, definitely, we are insignificant because Allah says there's something created greater than us, which is surely the creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind. So back to that. Yeah, why are you obsessed with uh, the earth design? Because it's greater than us. Am I right? 
there's there's no there's a there's an interesting thing here of course in terms of complexity the mm. heavens obviously are much more complex mm. what what ibn abbas says uh, anh, is that the 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 creation of the heavens uh, heavens and the earth took seven thousand years right mm. it actually took seven thousand years mm. and a lot you know this is a time like each day the se- each day of creation is a thousand years oh right? okay I see. So, this, so this is what ibn abbas says so in terms of in terms of in terms of greatness of time and 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 energy apparent energy then of course the heavens you know are much more and the creation of adam and Islam took a very short amount of time when allah created but when allah created adam allah created adam with his own hands mm. do you see mm. so that's why actually the the you know in terms of the intimacy that allah has with the creation of adam even though it's 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 like a blip in time it's almost almost as equal as the heavens in terms of significance right mm. And, uh, and so, yeah, but in terms of the, specifically in terms of the heavens, yeah, the heavens took uh, a thousand years, like each day was a thousand years. So it's a massive amount of time, you know, right. that, was, that was taken. Right. So that's why, in the, in, and that's one of the okay. meaning. And so that's seven days is 7,000 years. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, some, that's part of the meaning of the heavens and the earth. The creation of the heavens is greater. Right. Meaning right. Because, of the, because of the amount of time that it took. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah. So uh moving on from that well not moving on but further to that um yeah are we looking basically are we too self-obsessed and not looking up enough that's what i was saying earlier on are we looking too much at our black screens our black scrying mirrors if you like yeah that's great. <laughs> yeah and the events of our lives and other people's yeah. lives and about the coordinated and manufactured dramas unfolding in the world today are we more focused on that are we looking at all of this rubbish rather than looking far out beyond and far up above us um so let yeah so just going into some bigger sections now so let us look at some of uh, some powerful sections in the quran that might help to fl- might help us to flip things back the right way around again the way of the fitra the way that allah originally created everything so from surah an naziat so this is a very important one from ayah number 27 it begins are you a more difficult creation or is the heaven so this is another one, by the way, Shanuria. Yeah. So if you look at the last one, hold on. so if you look at this one is 4057. Surely the creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind. But now in this one, are you a more difficult creation or is the heaven? So obviously Allah is saying the heaven is. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, you have to take that for what it is. Allah has said this word. This is difficult. Yeah. Are you a more difficult creation or is the heaven? He <laughs> constructed it. There, 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 there's something as well is that not just the, the the heavens and in terms of its material structure but it's everything that's contained in the heavens there are yeah. beings there yes. are there are creatures yes. in the heavens yes. that, that are more they're, they're, they're more significant than us in terms thank of you, our material yes. creation yeah so it's very interesting yeah. yeah he raised he raised its ceiling and proportioned it uh and he darkened its night and brought out its brightness i've checked all of this okay look at this look at this yeah, yeah. so in the heavens there is a night and day in the heavens right, right. okay you see so here look here so Allah is, yeah. Allah is saying that in the heavens mm-hmm. there is a night and it's and there's a day right? right interesting okay yeah and after that he widened the earth so this is that famous egg one it's not an egg yeah the ostrich egg and after that he widened the earth it just doesn't fit does it anyway even if you were to and, and, and look at this look at this so yeah. look at this yeah, yeah. And look and, and look at this so 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 if it, if it is a sphere if they're talking a sphere allah is saying that there was night and day before he created the sphere right how, how does that how did how did they equate exactly. exactly you can actually bring that to someone who believes in the globe and right. says you believe in globe because you believe that the the world is spinning yeah. right and that's what creates the sorry sorry you believe in night and day because mm. you believe that the globe is spinning and that's what right. creates night and day but Allah is saying there was night and day before the earth was mm. made into a sphere so right. how do you do you see what i'm saying Allah yeah, saying yeah, after that absolutely. Allah saying after night and day did he yeah. did he make the earth into a after, sphere thank you yes very good point very good point yeah, and after yeah. About the, yes absolutely and after that he widened the earth he brought forth from its water and its pas- uh, pasture and the mountains, he made them firm. Again, Arsaha is yet another one. So in doing this, in the last one, I focused on Rawasia, which was the mountains, yeah? Firm, firmly set, fixed mountains. And something that is firmly set and fixed does not move, yeah? But now, in doing this, I found Arsaha, uh, which is, and the mountains, he made them firm. So that's another word for firm. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to skip over the ostrich egg thing. Um, okay, so the camel, the raised heaven, and the fixed mountains. I'm going to see if I can just skip the speed through some of this, actually. Um, so there is something to the camels and, uh, uh, yeah, the connection, because Allah mentions the camels quite a few times, actually, in close connection to this construction of the heavens and uh, everything else and the earth. So just looking at Surah Al-Ghashiyah, the way it goes, and then do they not look at the camels, how they are created? And then the next one is, and at the heaven, how it is raised. Yeah, we'll come to the raised bit later, but I'm just focusing on the, uh, ca the camel connection. And the heaven, how it was raised, and the mountains, how they are fixed, yeah? And the earth, at how it is, uh, how it is leveled out. Uh, so remind, so this is one for us, actually, by the way. <laughs> so remind, you are only a reminder. You yeah. are not over them a controller, just one second. You are not over them a controller, but whoever turns away and disbelieves, then Allah punish him with the greatest punishment. Indeed to us will be their return, then indeed upon us is their account. Yep, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that um, there is something about all of these uh, things that Allah is paying specific attention to. And mm. it's almost uh, like um, these are exceptional features. These are things yeah. that don't, they're, they're, they're almost, um, they, they, they point to a deliberate type of, uh, like a design, you know, yeah. like, 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 um, like a, a camel is very unusual creature. Right. If you look at the camel in relation to all other animals, yeah, uh, it has very unusual features. It doesn't, like it looks like a what is this like and it looks like a hodgepodge of different features put into an animal right right and then the mountains how they're fixed as if like wait a minute the mountains don't belong on the earth maybe they were actually sent from somewhere else into the earth yeah, right? yeah. meaning it doesn't make sense the, mm. and the earth how it leveled out mm. you know how it is leveled out so these are these things are these things point to a certain type of um, deliberate intervention or a deliberate type of action right that's outside of the ordinary, mm -hmm. right? And that's what it is. The, and Allah is, paying, Allah is telling you to pay specific attention because these are the threads. That if you start pulling at them, mm -hmm. then the rest of the tapestry becomes unraveled. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, and so that's the thing. These are like, like we believe, for example, the, the, the mountains came from above. Right. That, that there is actually, there's a theory that the mountains okay. themselves are beings or creatures that exist in some of the heavens that mm -hmm. Allah then brought down to the earth, meaning they don't belong on the earth. I think of Lord of the Rings when you say that. Sorry? I think of Lord of the Rings with those mountains. Yeah, you know? Okay, interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Do you mean like conscious beings or what? Yeah, yeah they're conscious beings. They're actually like humanoid type creatures that, that are not... That they, my that instinct they says he's right. <laughs> yeah, they exist somewhere in the heavens. Allah brought them into the earth and then Allah dug them into the earth, right? So they're not, they were not in the earth. They're not part of the earth, but they were brought to the earth. And something brother, else. brother, 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 uh, let me just add one point to that. There's a narration where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that Mount Uhud is a friend of the believers. Yeah, yes, that's right. Yes. That's right. yes. Not, just, not, not just that, not just that. He said, if I wanted to, I could have asked Allah uh, to make Mount Uhud into gold and then he would walk with me. He would have got go. up on its legs and he would have walked around with me. Right. So this is very interesting that these creatures, they're actually creatures. They don't they don't exist. They're not they're not meant to be. They're not they're not they're not a feature of the earth, but rather they were sent down to the earth. Right. So this is a very interesting in terms of like could you, could you could you elaborate a little bit on that, Brother Shah? Because if they're creatures of another realm, let's just say, for lack of a better word, what it's it might be stupid to ask like this, but what are they doing here? Basically, yeah, exactly. So, so Allah says, Allah says in the Quran that Allah sent down the mountains as a to fix the earth as pegs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They are pegs. They're they're pegs. So if say for example, let's take the humanoid or the the the, the living or the sentient sentience out of the mountains. Let's say okay. they're just pillars in the heavens that Allah mm -hmm. then brought down. The the specific function or their first function is to be dug into the ground to act as a peg right okay. now, in terms of what those pegs are that's a secondary point mm. but here i like that because i'm comparing i'm comparing the stars how they are alive and being given a job to do as well yeah that's, that's right sense. exactly also, also guys guys if you go to the bible so in the, in the story of david mm -hmm. uh, the mountains sing yeah, that's of right. Allah. That's that's right. Yes, Absolutely. Yes. This is this is right. So so the thing is not just this. This is why um, 
this is why when in the beginning when you mentioned that verse like you know when you're going through the um uh, the contents and then you're saying that uh like uh so not to set up rivals with allah right mm -hmm. the, the, we part of our belief is that there's sentience in the, the 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 rivers are sentient that the mountains are sentient that there are elemental beings in the in the in the heaven in, in the, on earth right and for example if you look at like um if you look like like um north america you know like ancient um, not ancient sorry um, american indian uh, like a folk uh, belief right they used mm -hmm. to believe that the forest Native was alive they used to believe that the earth was alive they used to you know they used to touch the earth and speak to the earth yes, they yes. speak to the tree they used to do all of these things so they there is this and it's a very human thing like they have this almost like a, a belief that they're speaking to the river they're speaking mm -hmm. to the spirit of the mountain right mm -hmm. so and that's a very human we can't discredit that and yeah. it's in it's in our history like omar radila he wrote a letter to the river right this is a this is a this is an established event it, it, it could be that uh, uh, the sentience is uh, i mean every every thing everything in the in the earth has an atomic vibration to it so it could be that oh, okay, vibration okay, hold, on. Hold, on, hold on yeah uh, just just uh, what, what i'll say just to finish that point and i want you to say, say what you're going to say sorry brother Saadi, just to think but remember that allah gave the th this responsibility or allah presented the responsibility to the mountain and the mountains rejected it allah presented it to yes, the yes, heavens yes, and the yes, heavens sorry. rejected it right so these mm -hmm. sentient beings we're not just talking about certain vibrations we're talking about actual beings right they're elemental beings the prophet also mentioned that for example certain types of illness like this miasma is um like you know it's it's a it's a it's an actual being it's a it's a creature that 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 roams the place right that you see what i'm saying uh, so the, sh the, sh sh no, let me interject and just uh, can somebody bring up a surah al isra uh, ayat number 44 yeah I will read the translation because I have it here. The seven heavens and the earth and whatever is sorry, in sorry, them sorry. exalt Al -Al Allah. Sorry, if I can just bring up. Uh, which number is that? Uh, 1744. That was my point, what Brother uh, uh, Yusuf just said. That I, I was going to yeah, say that every, everything ah, has yes, like an... You gave me that and I'm adding that. Sorry, yeah, carry on, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I, I, I meant what Brother uh, Yusuf just brought up that everything has a vibration, everything has an atomic vibration, mm -hmm. and that vibration itself could be that the mm -hmm. object is exalting Allah, it's reciting right. something. It, so, look, if you think about this, if you think about the human body, apparently the human body is composed like eighty percent like bacteria. Like we, we, if you like, we, we are, we are. There's so many living beings in us. You can take a single cell and then say that that is its own living being, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's interconnected, meaning it's it's contingent upon another um, a part to exist, yeah. And then in collection, then you have stomach, heart, all of these things, and then all of that together is the human being. But Allah refers to the human being as a single unit. You yeah. know, Allah is not referring to all of those cells as as being you know in, independently isolated yeah. uh, beings. So in the same so, way, we have to also, earth, consider, um, you know, the, the heavens and, and the mountains and the rivers. When you say the earth, that's what you mean, I think, that it, everything com comprised within the earth. Exactly. Is, it's, uh, it's, it's, like made, it's made of isolated, exactly, isolated beings that are not just, it's not just the, 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 the mankind and the jinn, but also you have all of these elemental beings as well, right? And, and so that's why... If I could just say one thing, even the animals have been tamed and subjected for us for a specific term. Even the sea as well, it's just been tamed and subjected for us. Yeah, but it could true. go out of control and drown us all, but Allah Taala tamed it and subjected to us. The wild beasts, the sheep, the cows, all this stuff has been tamed and subjected for us. So that's another way of looking at it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. And, uh, okay, exactly. brothers, brothers, yeah. brothers, just carry on quickly. So my plan is, uh, now there's a uh, Dhuhr beginning time for me here. Uh, before I go for a break, um, so I will I will be continuing this as in like I'm going to pause the recording, but just before I get to that, um, I was hoping that I could just go through part seven, which is which is the real teaser because we haven't really even gotten into the meat of what's coming. Honestly, we haven't even touched on it. Um, so part seven is yeah. So if we can just uh, go through part seven and then uh, go for a break for Lahore. And then just see how everyone is. Um, 
Yeah, because I'm going to keep the Zoom session on anyway. I'm just going to pause the recording, go for my break and come back. And then however anyone is, like I've said, you know, comfortably coming and going, they should do so. Um, give, give, give a time frame. Give, give, us, give a time frame that you're going to um, Yeah, well, I mean, what, half an hour? I, I'm just thinking, uh, I haven't planned this. I'm just thinking an hour. An hour, okay. Yeah, an hour. Hour. It could be less. I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, so just very quickly. So the camel, the raise heaven, the fixed. So, so, so should we say 45 minutes to an hour? Okay, 45 minutes to an hour, yeah. So we'll be back when we do take a break. Hopefully we'll take a break within five minutes and uh, back back again at two o'clock. So wanna, yeah. Um, yes, so. Let's see, but yeah, actually we'll go straight into this. Yeah, so about the camel, I'm, I don't know. I'm, something's telling me that this might even settle this whole debate, you know, about whether the earth is completely flat or whether it's completely round and all of this. You know, those are two extremes. And if you look at this, for me, why would Allah mention the camels before he's describing the description of the heavens and the earth and the mountains? Why does he mention this camel? It's a very strange thing. I, I, yeah. I, I want to interject something about the camel. Yeah? yeah, It's very interesting that the camel's hump, yeah? mm. the camel's hump mm. is made of water. It's a, it's a dome with yeah. water. Yeah? Okay. Okay. And then it, and yeah. it's, it's water. Then, it, then, it, then it's just pure fat and water. Right. And then it comes to his meat, yeah. yeah. Actually, the, the mm. muscle, yes. The yep, muscle. yep, yep. And then yep, underneath, yep. underneath that layer, then it's the stomach and the guts and everything, right? Yeah. And then you have, then you have like the, the defecation coming up one side. So if you think about the the construction of the heavens, mm. it's, it's like that. It's you got dome. That's what I'm thinking. Water, There's got to be yeah. something like this. And then, and then underneath, underneath the muscle, then that's when the, all the hellfire and everything is there. Hellfire, yeah. Hell. So, so so it's yeah. almost like, and it reminds me of you know the shield, you know. Hey. Ladies. You know the you know the Old Testament um, you know that that famous uh, firmament picture of the from mm. the Old Testament mm. yeah I know that Oasis knows this one yeah so mm. so that same kind of construction it's almost like the like the on the camel on the camel yeah flag. yeah 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 absolutely I'm with you it's not and just that the camel is mentioned elsewhere before Allah describes how the sun and the moon or the night and the day wrap so it's, it's, it's <laughs> both it's not just what you just said but it's also something about this as well. Something about this as well. I don't know. Okay, you know? interesting. Uh, but yeah, this, this, and even like, uh, look, on the apparent, yeah. like most, uh, you know, like a neck, like the camel is just so, it's just like, it's miraculous. Like, why does the camel have a neck like that? Right. Right. That just doesn't make sense. Yeah. That, that's actually counterintuitive. That's not, that's, that most animals have a certain other type of neck. Right. This neck is just really, like, that's not right. That's not, that doesn't make sense. It's right. not what you'd expect. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you know, I mean, if you, it's an exception compared to all the rest of the animals, right? right. So, so this type of neck um, structure yeah. is uh, is is a miraculous type of design right. because right. it's almost counter counterproductive, like counterintuitive. Like, how does Allah make it work? And because Allah makes it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and what's the reason for it? There, yeah. there is no real reason for it. Yeah. Right. So, but but the main the main thing is for me the takeaway is uh, with this camel what is clear so wait uh, straight after some yeah so straight after some descriptions of paradise so this is the context that Allah is using it straight after some descriptions of paradise is very interesting how Allah begins the description of things He created with the camel which is then followed by the raised heavens and then yet another Arabic word describing the fixed mountains nusibat so that's another one that's fixed these words are all in Arabic fixed. Yeah, mm. and, to top, and to top it off, this is then completed with leveled or laid out flat. So, you know, these are references people can check out or laid out flat earth. The dictionary shows flat, flattened. Yeah. So whichever way they look at it. Um, yeah, it's leveled or flattened. Where is it? Yeah. And the earth, how it is leveled out. Sutihat, yeah. So that's what they say. It's leveled or laid out flat, flat, flattened. Um, but anyway, just before before we go for a break, this one, and hopefully this will uh, get people uh, really interested in what is coming to follow. Uh, how about the number of the heavens now? So, you know, I, I don't know if you remember, Brother Sadi, we had a session once where we were told the numbers aren't really something significant. We shouldn't really focus on those things. Mm. Um, and, you know, but whereas if Allah mentions the number of days, you know, or the number of heavens. There's yeah, a... it's it's all there's a synchron synchronize synchronicity, synchronicity. Yeah. between and, and yeah, a yeah. significance to why Allah would mention such numbers. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, so and how about the number of the heavens? So this section I've got seven heavens, two days, and the lowest heaven. Yeah. So what you were mentioning earlier, Brother Shano, let me know what you think after you've seen this about uh, where the moon is. So Allah says um, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in ayah number 29, He is the one who created for you what is in all the earth. Moreover, he turned to the heaven uh, uh, and fashioned them seven heavens. And of everything he is all-knowing. So it's clear that Allah created seven heavens. Am I right? Yeah. yeah? That's right. Absolutely. Earth created first, by the way. So which one was first? It says it here. He yeah. then turned to the heaven, yeah? So earth created first and then the seven heavens. Um, the next ayah that I've got here quoted is from Surah Fusilat, number nine. Say, do you, do you indeed disbelieve in the one who created the earth in two days and you set up with him rivals? So there's that issue again. Yeah. yeah. And you set up with him rivals. That is... If yeah, I want to I want to mention that, that yeah, the sure. first hold that thought, hold that thought, yeah, yeah, go on, go on. yep, that is the Lord of the worlds, and He placed therein firmly set fixed mountains. Again, we have to think about this; is repeated so much, and he, repl uh, he placed therein firmly set fixed mountains above it, and He blessed it and determined therein its sustenance in four equal days for those who ask. That's interesting for those who ask. So there's those four days, the two days. So this is apparently the six days of creation, detailed in the two days and the four days. I'll just finish this passage. Then he created, then he directed himself towards the heaven, whilst it was smoke. And he said mm. to it, and he said to it, uh, so that's Dukhan, by the way, the word in the Arabic is Dukhan. Yeah. So then he directed himself towards the heaven while it was smoke. And he said to it and to the earth, Come both of you, willingly or unwi unwillingly, they both said, we come willingly. This verse is another uh, proof of uh, sentience. Yeah. And, uh, and Absolutely. Because we come willingly. They're, right, they're, right. They're, they're sentient. Right. Uh, then he completed, so this is the main bit. This is the point that I'm getting to. Then he completed them as seven heavens in two days, and he revealed in each heaven its affair, meaning the task was given for each heaven of these seven heavens. And we adorned the nearest heaven. The nearest is mm. as sama as sama ad dunya. Yeah. Some say lowest, some say nearest. I prefer lowest because that's a better direction. Nearest yes. could be here. Nearest could be here. Yeah. Mm. But lowest is like this. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Right. So, and we adorn. So, so wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Fi kulli sama in amaraha. Is that that's the that's the nearest heaven? Yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. Oh, so, sorry. So, so was they? So he? Yeah. Sorry. Zina. 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 Yeah. Was they in the sama dunya? Bi. 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 So, so what is the word? Bi. 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 So, what is Bi. What does that mean? Thank you. And this is the this is the biggest one at the very end of the presentation. Why I'm going to prove. I shouldn't get too ahead of myself. Why I'm going to prove that we live in a glass container because most people <laughs> don't realize this. Yeah? yeah, most people don't realize this. Um, so the lamps, Bima Sabi is mentioned only a few times in the Quran and twice it's mentioned in Surah Nur. We're going to get to that. So okay. Bima Sabi is lamps. 100% scholars agree. Bima Sabi is lamps. Yeah. But what is Allah saying? That He adorned. Zina is beautifier. Yeah? Zina, yep, 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 yep. As, -sama as sama is heavens. Dunya mm. is they they all agree. Scholars agree the lowest heaven. Yeah. Ah, Why is it the lowest? Yeah. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf says himself, we don't forget where we live. We live in the lowest dunya. We live in yeah. what is known in the Arabic as the lowest of the lowest. No, look, not just that. Dunya, yeah. dunya itself is opposite to Adam. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, okay. And so, because Allah is Rabbul Alameen. Right. Yeah. Allah mm. doesn't say he's Rabbul Dunya, he says Rabbul Alameen. Right. Dunya is actually, mm. a, it's, it's actually a, the dunya is a, is a deception. Or dunya right. is also means a deception. It's a deception, right? right. Oh, you froze. Or did everyone freeze? Did everyone freeze? Oh, damn. Everyone there?
to do. Mashallah. Sorry, your, your session timed out. Uh, now you're now you're the one with no mic. You're on mute. <laughs> you can un you can unmute him, Ahmed Noor. You're the host for some. Okay. Yeah, brother Ways. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So so okay. that, so so that yeah I anyway I I find that very interesting asama dunya meaning not just exactly not just the lowest but also the 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 the, the sama of deception right? right this place is a place of deception so, right yeah. well it's like uh it's like Allah is almost saying it's a glittery simulation kind of like yeah. there's just there's just lights there, everywhere there, there is a there's something very interesting for example that this the lowest dunya almost exists in a different heaven in the sense that it almost like a it almost exists in a different plane of existence for when when the angels come to this world for example they change size right like uh jibreel wow. alayhisam is actually so big he yep. is so big right the prophet said when he saw him in his real form he, he was the horizon he, he was he the horizon he 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 encompassed the entire horizon but when he yeah. came, and that's him at the farthest place. That's him at the mm -hmm. farthest edges of the of the heavens, right? We're talking about the sixth, seventh heaven. He's up there, over there. But then mm -hmm. when he came to this world, he comes into the form of a human being. Like he comes into this, but that's not his true form. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, so that and and something else is remember every night at the third part of the night, or the last portion of the night, Allah comes to the lowest heaven right mm -hmm. so how does allah come to the lowest heaven you imagine like if this heaven is a grain right how does allah come to the lowest heaven unless the lowest heaven this dunya is it exists in its own pocket or in exists in its own and and even allah alludes to that in surah in in surah mulk uh, surah sajda that allah says um that uh that the affair comes down to the earth at the at the, the, the 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 time the time is a thousand years of your reckoning right that it takes a thousand years to come into this world right for a for 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 you know, for an angel and in another place it takes fifty thousand years for for an angel to from allah meaning from the arsh to come to this world right that this is the uh this is the um you know this is the the, the reality or you can say the this is the deceiving reality of this world right that it, it could be that uh it could be that for the angels to descend they they uh, they take certain tunnels or like uh, exactly exactly what, what do you call them? yeah certain uh, vortexes through which they yes. come yeah. to the, come to this particular dunya yeah. and then once they enter the there are physical laws yes which which cause them to change take morphological uh, changes and but that's right yeah. exactly. that's what happens so, so this I, I think of the transformers movie when you're saying that it's a very interesting look and i find that very interesting in the sense that even the mara ma maaraj like allah even talks about the the ways of ascent into the heavens that there are there are actual you know there are actually doorways and portals into the into the the, the heavens above right and that they you know they're, they're, without a sultan meaning without explicit permission to enter into these um then you can't you can't enter you can't exit so that this dunya you know, it exists in a, some temporal kind of reality that has its own laws, that has its own types of, uh, um, you know, has its own kind of. Uh, I'm not sure, man. How do I, how do we explain it? But like you said, you, like you said, brother Sadi, that it has its own um, kind of unique or exceptional yeah, laws. circumstances, exceptional laws, exactly. Yeah. Right? But I find that word dunya, sama ad dunya. Actually, when you think about it, sama ad dunya, I'm like, yeah, because there's not Allah said Allah is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. He's Rabbil Alamin, but not Rabbil Dunya. Mm. Right. But yeah. Uh, what was your question, Brother Shah, about be masabih, be masabih? Yeah. So, so, so this is uh, what uh, Wais was talking about in terms of now. This is talking about lamp. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Up until now, it's just been really nothing in comparison to what needs to be spoken about. Um, so if you look at this one, Allah says, uh, "Yeah." Then He completed them in seven heavens in two days. He revealed. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to I, I need to mention something here. Sorry, sorry, brother, go, go, go. I'm interrupting you. That you can only see the stars up to a certain altitude. You know that. Okay. Yeah. Meaning when you reach a certain altitude, after a certain altitude, you can't see the stars anymore. And this okay. is actually something that I mean we need to verify this properly, but in right. most of the stuff I've seen, 
yeah. you, when you when you add below a certain altitude, you can see the stars, beautiful, beautiful. But then when you reach a certain altitude, when you pass a certain threshold, the, it's all black. Okay. You can't see the stars anymore. Right, right. And so this is something that I used to think is um, what Allah means by atarik or the penetrating stars. That that the stars, the, the you can only see them when there's a layer, and then you can only see them through that layer. I mean, you can't see right. after a certain point. Right. right. And so that's something very interesting. And I and trust me, we've seen we've seen this so many times when you when you reach the highest, like if you reach like very high altitude, um, and then you see the video, there's no mm. stars, right? If mm. you see the dog cam, if you see so like a I know, I know, I know what you're on about, yeah, hunt from 120,000 feet, th there's no more stars. You don't see the stars anymore. Mm. Right? So I find that very interesting as well. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is uh, all of those NASA uh, NASA people. Uh, saying from both ends, yeah, yeah, you can see so many stars, you can see no, nothing is black. Okay, you can exactly. see so many stars, you can see nothing. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, and we, um, so Allah says that He made each heaven with its own affair, meaning its own job. Uh, the word is kulli uh, samai amraha, yeah, and then was zayyin samaa dunya. So the uh, yeah, the dunya, the nor nearest. So this makes sense. So Allah describes it as being beautified, yeah? So this nearest heaven, the lowest heaven, yeah, has been beautified with lamps. So what are these lamps? Uh, scholars agree that it's the sun, the moon, the stars. You know, it's, it's these lamps that we see in the sky. But check out what Allah says in the ayah after that. So not only does Allah say he made seven heavens in two days, but then he goes further. What, is his, what does Allah say? That he adorned that lowest heaven with these lamps. And then he goes further. Not just lamps, yeah, but... And to God. So it was made to beautify, adorn, Zina. And it was also made to Hivdha, God. Yeah? Mm. Like, that is the decree of the Almighty, or uh, the all Noah. Again, I'm only pointing out what these translations are, what scholars have agreed. So it's clear to me, seven heavens made in two, two days, lowest one given two jobs to beautify... So, so with these so, so bodies, what, to God. what you're what you're alluding to is that uh, there is an illuminating object that is enclosing the entire universe and it's uh, or or maybe just this dunya and it's uh, it acts as a pro protective layer is that what you're saying what i see is that if these seven heavens are going in height in layers allah is describing this lowest one for two jobs so it, that lowest one has our sun, moon, and stars. This immediately mm. uh, um, drops that nonsense that these things are far away. That that's the first thing. Yeah, immediately Allah is telling us it's really close to us. Yeah, it's that close to us. It's, it's in the lowest heaven. So that immediately destroys uh, what they say about it being you know six hundred and sixty six whatever million whatever miles away. Um, so yeah, and the second thing is for them to for it to be guarded as well look, look at this look at this even the word hiv then yeah yep. this is not this is not um this is not a this is not a verb is it is it is that that's not a verb and to is it, no it is a verb it, is it a hiv then yeah god and but is it a verb look hiv then um so hiv hiv then hiv okay Okay, here then. Because yeah, it sounds, it's not a verb. It's not a verb. No? It sounds okay. to me that it's a, it's actual like it's a it's a noun. It's a protection, meaning it's a fixed protection. Oh, so that means that the heaven is that. Yeah, meaning it's a it's exactly that 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 the zina the zina this adornment is not just um like a lamps, but it's also a god. Meaning it's a god. It's not they're guarding the lamps are guarding, but rather it is. A God. Like ah, the sorry. Oh, sorry. See, look, look at that. Look yeah. at that. The brackets too. Yeah. That's why I said and that. Exactly. That's so not that's not. There. So two. Do you see what I'm saying? So they add the two there, but yeah. it's not. It's, it's not a verb. Like it's the egg thing situation. Yeah. All right. So because can you, see where, can you see where confusions can come in translations? Yeah. And because I'm looking at Hivdan. Exactly like brother. Um, yeah. From uh, Jordan. Like brother Yaman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so before we take a break, yep. I just wanted to because. In my document, I show a picture of the Earth at night, right. and it shows all the electricity, you know, all the lights that are on. And this is quite recent, so it looks like the Earth has been beautified from the heavens. If you look, if you're on an airplane, right? But instead of guarding from from good, it guards. It basically, I'm trying to make a connection here because 
all that electricity, all that stuff is basically the zen of the earth, the beautifying the earth, so you can get lost in it. So, no, but that's that that's uh, man-made. It's man-made uh, beautification. Yeah, so it's like the opposite. It's like the reverse. Yeah. So in the it heavens, reverse, when you look yes. at the heavens, it's been beautified and it's guarding. But then the reverse, when you look at uh, the earth, it's also beautified, but it's making sure the kafir stays where he is and and and, and is lost and is wandering inside the um, what's it called um yeah. inside the zina. If you understand where I'm coming from, I think so. I think so. And and you know what? That's what because Allah refers to this world as a zina that he's that you know the that the people you know Allah says was bin nafsaka ma'aladina yadun um in surah kaf that Allah says uh, be patient with those who call upon their Lord morning and evening seeking His face and do not be uh, distracted by the zenith of the of the world. Do not look above them. Don't look beyond these low people, these tawadu people, these uh, um, hum humble people, to the zenith of the world, right? And so, as Brother Ahmed uh, saying, mashallah, that this zina, this distraction, this distractibility, right? This beautifying is not just it's in the heavens and the earth, right? Mm -hmm. But both of them are components of dunya. Yeah. Right. Okay. Both of them are, are in close relation to the word dunya. I'm itching for that break. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. 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 No, no, he's, yeah, mashallah, we've done quite well. Hold on, let me just get rid of that. Come on. If you, if you want to end here, bro, if you want to just uh, like finger here and then, then bismillah, carry on. Inshallah. I yeah? think that would be good. Okay, so... What no, no time is like now, isn't it, I think? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just give me a second. No, because I want to finish this, uh, just this bit here. So, yeah, what we just looked at in the ayah, is the nearest lowest heaven also appears to be given two distinct jobs containing the lamps and uh, as a god so yeah not to god as we just looked but god yeah it's there uh, but i've looked at the scholars what they've said the uh, tafsir and they say that that's made to make it inviolable that's what they say yeah the heavens is to make it inviolable meaning protect from intruders and there's other ayats that refer to these intruders being the shayateen i think we understand right what happens, these, mm -hmm. what we see as shooting stars are actually missiles being sent because of them trying to catch whatever it is they're trying to catch, yeah? Uh, so the seven heavens is also confirmed in the final verse of uh, Surah At-Talaq. Um, yes, it is the one that I mentioned about the like there being thereof. You know, the earth having seven earths, and Allah, Allah is the one who created seven heavens, and the earth, the like, the like of them. So that's like a indirectly saying that there are seven earths as well. Um, that's what it sounds like. Okay, yep, yeah, now I'm done. Yeah. So the next one will carry on from here. I'll stop the recording here. In 40 minutes. Do you want to conserve your wealth the way of Allah and His messengers? using the same method established by the Khalifa Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu and implemented by Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu then consider purchasing gold and silver coins and bullion bars from sunnacurrency.com where they use astonishing Islamic designs on mint 24 karat gold in pure silver Sunnah Currency is now certified by and a proud member of the Islamic Monetary Council IMC this is the Islamic solution to the current global uncertainty. This is what Allah made halal for us. Invest in precious metals in the way of the authentic sunnah, which has intrinsic value. Protect your wealth by having it in your hands and not someone else's. Please use the link in the description box to get a special endgame discount on your purchase and get it dispatched today. By using the Endgame discount code during your purchase, you can also help us build and progress on our projects for the Ummah, insha'Allah.
Assalamu alaikum, Wa alaikum Sorry, I'm just sending uh, the email because I just realized it's a new uh, link. Uh, just sending the email just in case anyone wasn't on uh, Telegram or. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay, so uh, that was good. I think that this next couple of hours actually will be even better, actually. Um, inshallah. Okay, I think I'm done. Okay, is everyone ready? Is everyone good? Yeah. Yeah. What's the time there again, Sadi? Good to, good to see you by the way. So it's been a it's been a long time. Yeah. It's 9:08 p.m. Okay. Uh, that's nothing for you. Is <laughs> <laughs> mm. recording, right? Yeah, it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Okay, so I just checked the previous recording. That was three hour recording. Um, yeah, I want to keep this. Yeah, I want to keep this for two hours. And I realized I'm going to go through this anyway because I think it is more important for the general audience to be able to receive a more powerful uh, message. Um, so I might have to go through this, inshallah. But anyway, it's been good. Uh, let's see what we can do in the next couple of hours, inshallah. Yeah, everyone good? Everyone ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, waiting for the main. Shah is here. Minute. Just give it maybe a couple of minutes. See if Brother Sean will join. Yeah, let's give it three to four minutes. Yeah. I think I lost. Ah. I thought I lost it. Thank God I didn't lose it. See, I'm telling you, when it comes to creating these documents, it's it's a headache, man. It's um, you might lose something very quickly, you know, just in moving things around, and um, and it's such hard work as well that you might have lost. Um, yeah. So I'm glad. I just realized I didn't lose it. Okay. How many have we got? Six people. Once I was writing a document mm -hmm. and I lost it, but Alhamdulillah, I was able to rewrite it quickly because. But it was very, very annoying. I was very shocked when I when when I couldn't find it anymore. I c I can tell you of similar cases with some of the videos that I've made for Endgame. I I've had to redo two hours worth, um, in doing um, that flat Earth that big video, the three four hour video. I came close to finishing it and then I went for a break for Salah and then I came back and I lost two hours worth of work and I was so it would have been so easy for me to just say you know what forget it but I just knew it was still fresh in my mind and I just quickly redid everything exactly if it wasn't for the interest and just knowing the things and always constantly pondering over it yeah I would have not be able to write even one sentence of what I have previously written but alhamdulillah this is this is the key to education because I'm in I'm in the education sector. This is the key. You can't get a student to learn something they're not interested in. You can't get someone to work hard on something they're not feeling passionate about or yeah, not interested in. So it's very, yeah, it's very relevant. Um anyway, I think I'm just gonna get started whilst feeling this. Um yeah. Okay. Awud Billah in the regime. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, so just resuming where we were. Um, you, what's green mode? Okay, so so what do you think of anyway so far? Um, okay, brother Imran's here as well now. Okay, so what do you brother think of so far? Imran is here. Yeah, yeah. Which Imran? Our, our, our brother Imran. Imran. I, I'm Imran. Yeah. 
So what do you think of so far anyway? As in like, has, has it been, um, yeah, just tell me, what do you think of uh, what we've kind of discussed so far? Yeah, amazing. Alhamdulillah, let's keep going. Okay. Peel back the layers. Okay, Alhamdulillah. So right, that's that's me, one of our other brothers. Yeah? You it's like you said, like you said right this is just the beginning. Yeah, it's just yeah. the beginning. Okay. And, and I think like the energy that was brought so far, um, mm -hmm. just with everybody's input, it's like this hasn't reached uh, the climax yet, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, the, let's see how these next couple of hours go. Because is a brother, yeah, go on. Yeah, no, it's brother Shah in the in in the uh, latest group, the one you made temporarily, is he in that group? Sorry, which one? Noah, the heavens and the water is above. Is brother Shah in that group? Uh, which one? The Shah that's been mainly discussing with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in the group. Yeah, he's in the group. You should see him. He's got his uh, miswak. There's a photo of him with his miswak in his mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you'll see him. Anyway, um, okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So number eight, it's, it's just like a book, you know, um, a story never gives everything at the very beginning. So that's why I had to kind of go through it like this. Uh, you can't just throw everything at, in at the beginning. Okay, so number eight, insight in the strong, seven strong heavens and God consciousness. So if you look at Surah Naba, Wabanaina fawqakum sab'an shidada. We constructed over you seven strong over heavens. you yep. over, over you, you. Yep. yep exactly can you see why i'm emphasizing all of these bits yeah yeah yep. uh over you seven strong heavens uh okay what is the word for strong she died in this she dada. it's 100 okay. percent. she died so yeah. why would allah emphasize this word i mean include this okay. word in the first place allah could yeah. just have said seven right right i think it's because it says that those heavens have a protective kind of uh, hold, grasp on our yeah. earth, our dunya, basically. That, yeah. That's what I think. So it, yeah. it has a structure. It's structurally robust. That's mm -hmm. what I I am inclined to believe too. Yeah, that's, that's the point of doing this. Exactly, you're right. So as you just said, why would Allah say, strong when previously all the other ayats he says seven heavens but why in this mm -hmm. ayat does he say strong she done and you're right what is your thinking um just like how you said yeah i won't um ruin what you said so and then after that what your own what your own wahaja but like i said i'm gonna say so, see look have a look at this siraj is lamp yeah i think wahaja is burning i'm not sure but that's the thing um, when I do part three, going into the sun, the moon, the night, the day, the stars, that's going to be for part three. I want to focus on the heavens. Um, but that's interesting that they've got lamp here because lamp, as far as I can see, is bimasabi uh, or misba, which we're going to go into. Oops. Yeah. Okay, so the lamp appears to be, the lamps appear to be in the heavens above us, not some far distance, 666, what is it they say? Million miles? I don't know, what did they say? I don't remember. <laughs> Whatever it is, something ridiculous, yeah? They love that number as well. So they say that these uh, lamps are, uh, whatever, 660 million miles, whatever, mile, uh, away. But what does Allah say? The, these lamps are in the lowest heaven dunya nearest to us and that these heavens these seven heavens are strong um so the next bit military strong by the way so if you go into this reference that i've made here 17.5 shidada so you just uh, you just asked me what is strong in arabic yeah shidada so this is also used mm -hmm. in another ayah so this was from 78 12 but if you go to 17.5 shadidin military strong yeah that strong, mm. they say it themselves, the scholars, yeah. That's what that strong is. It's military. This is why I'm believing when I'm putting all of this together. Impenetrable, unbreachable, guarded, protected. Yeah. Okay, so Surah Al Mulk Mulk. This is the bit that I thought I lost, the Basar bit. So Allah Sabah Samawati Tibaqa. 
ma tara fi khalqi rahmani min tafawut farji al basara hal tara min futur thumma arji al basara karatayni yan qalib ilaykal basaru khasi aw wa hasir did you notice how many times i said basar mm. mm. three times there yeah so in these three two times. Ads, three times yeah basar what does shaykh imam hussain say basar 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 right yes yep, yep, yep. insight right. internal insight right so it's here three times mentioned in these two ads in surah al mulk what does allah say in these two ads the one who created seven heavens one layer above one another you do not see in the creation of the most gracious any fault so return your vision can you see any flaws yeah these are brackets but allah just says flaws what are flaws the splits cracks breaks tears ruptures whatever you want to call them those are flaws yeah the one who created seven heavens one layer above uh, another you do not see in the creation of the most gracious any fault so return basar your vision can you see any flaws futur yeah and then the next ah tumar jil basra then return your vision twice again yeah your vision will be will return to you humble while it is defeated what do you think it expands like it is is vast right so and then allah says why have i lost that ah see i'm still editing this document okay so and then in the next ah zayyanna as-sama what is it wa laqad zayyanna as-sama ad-dunya ah so look at that is back to that again in this section as well as-sama ad-dunya bi masabih وَلَقَدْ وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّا السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينِ وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ What does that mean? Mm-hmm. And we have certainly beautified the nearest heaven with lamps. And we have made them as missiles for the devils. And we have prepared for them the punishment of the blaze. Mm-hmm. So my point is, let, let us use our insight. Let us humble ourselves. our egos must first be defeated not only does i can't read what i'm going okay not only does the quran appear to state that the lowest nearest heaven has the job of containing the lamps and to guard against intruders but now the verse above suggests that this is a beautiful military setup these bright mm-hmm. twinkling lights in the heavens directly above us appear to be positioned to guard and attack any devils that approach does that make sense yes yeah are these bright twinkling lights the opposition to god the angels of allah themselves i don't know i'm genuinely asking and the job they have been given is to send missiles to stone the shayateen the accursed and to expel them from heaven does this include the shayateen amongst the ints as well yeah the humans well always uh, yeah. just to stop you there you know yeah. on the previous the previous ayat you were talking about when you look up to the heavens mm mm-hmm. Have you ever gone outside, lifted your head up, mm-hmm. stared at the heavens for maybe like 30 seconds, looked mm-hmm. back down mm-hmm. and then returned your gaze up? Mm-hmm. You like when I do that, I I find I'm dizzy. Really? Yeah, when like when I try it, when I try it in reality, I get yes. dizzy. Yeah. I think sometimes yes. Uh look up. Yeah, yeah, I I I think I know what you mean. Um Yeah so is that what you're saying that's what happens from this ayah then return your vision twice again your vision will return to you humble while it is defeated so you're saying basically it is something that um will send you spinning anyhow when you're looking up there yeah i think it's like double entendre or triple entendre in the meaning right i get you yeah so regardless where so it will send you spinning in the visual sense the actual your eyes uh, and head sense and it will send you spinning or it will humble you in terms of what you really believe and what you see yeah am i hearing you right yep 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 yep, yep. Okay. uh when you say does this include the shayateen amongst the ins yes yeah. as well i mean the ins are already inside so i think for the ins it is the application of going out while for the devils it's coming in does that make sense um not sure say sorry say that again it's like uh you know how the 
like Elon Musk and these uh, people, they their plan the is to colonize yep. colonize the universe, right? Yep, yep. So when when you say does this include the shayateen amongst the ins, the humans yep. as well? Mm. But the humans is it's it's for the ones who want to go out, right? So they are bound in. Yep. But for devils, it's coming in. Mm. So they're bound out. Devils you know coming I mean? in on the devils here on earth as well. As in, like, yeah, but they, they've been banished from, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah, yeah that was unless, unless you're talking, unless you're talking about what happened in the early days when they were apparently, yes, 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 that, that could right. be, yeah, right, right, yeah. okay, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. This all starts to make sense, you know, this story of the fallen angel, obviously, they've got it wrong, it's not angel, yeah, but this all starts to make sense to me this banishment from heaven which is above us they were mm -hmm. there and all of this took place there and then they were banished from there and sent down here mm -hmm. um, so yeah when i say does this include the shayateen amongst the ins because my feeling is that whatever we see happening these missiles being sent is it just the unseen jinn that we see that are trying to capture whatever it is that they're trying to capture or is it also that these guys know themselves that they can't go there because they'll be destroyed they'll be killed yeah, because they've tried it. Their attempts have Absolutely. already their attempts have already failed, and everything else is just to uh, take all of our money for other purposes, knowing that they mm. can't do that. You know. Uh, mm. Anyway, so yeah, so there you go, Basar, Basar, Basar. That was three times in those two hours. This appears to be the only way to block out the illusions that attack our pineal gland. Yeah, so I'll, I'll skip through this bit. But the reason why I say that I think that there's a connection between the seven heavens and us is because Allah connects the two together here. So if you look in Surah Nu, in 7114, uh, and indeed he created you in stages. But straight after that, Allah says, so he's, he's talking about us, he created us in stages. And then straight after that, Allah says, in the next ayah, do you not see how Allah did create the seven heavens in layers? So why would Allah put the two together? Um, mm -hmm. He created us in stages. And then do you not see how Allah did create the seven heavens in layers? I know people will tell us what those stages of us, us our creation is. But I'm also wondering if it's a double meaning because it's connected. It seems closely linked mm -hmm. to seven heavens in layers. And the reason why I said it is because it seems like for a long time, ancient civilizations seem to have known that there are these yes. seven, seven chakra points. Um, although I'm sure that there is misguidance within this teaching, but there, I think you're onto something with their with the yeah. yeah. But there seems to be this. This is what the ascension is, and the reason why I said it is because I now believe if you look at the throat, yeah, you mm. know our throat. That's where our thyroid gland is, yeah. That's under attack. Okay. Our thyroid gland is under attack mm -hmm. massively. And apparently that's the chakra point where uh, you are able to distinct between lies and truth. Yeah. So that would make okay. sense. To me. Yeah. So that would make sense to me that a lot of people can't Makes see it because their thyroid gland is under attack. Yeah? But there is like a metaphysical connection. Yeah. Yes. Again, Allahu Alam, but I'm just saying they seem to be connected. Um, and what is it? So the, also the phrase, if you think about it, I can't swallow that. You know, when someone's telling you a lie, you're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking what you're giving. I'm not swallowing that. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not swallowing those lies. And then the, that's the fifth chakra point. Then the sixth one is um, your pineal gland. Yeah. Pineal mm -hmm. gland. And with your pineal gland, that's apparently where you're able to distinct between illusions and reality so that's a higher level not even truth and lies which is here a higher level is between illusions and realities and then the highest one is where your pituitary gland is uh, mm -hmm. at the highest point and that is apparently where you are able to connect to have true god consciousness so mm -hmm. it seems like these are the stages of trying to ascend to you know um eh, eh, sign if you like so the truths and lies form like lies build up and form an illusion and mm. an illusion builds up to you know a loss of, yeah. loss of god consciousness basically that's that's thank you that's what i think 
Um, that's why I've called this one. Um, yeah, insight in the seven strong heavens and God consciousness. And now have a look. So you've seen that Basar is three times in these two ayats about the heavens, yeah? And um, Allah mentions about creating us in stages along with creating the seven heavens in layers. But what comes after creating the seven heavens in layers? This will be for part three, but just mentioning it, what comes after that? And the moon, and made the moon therein a reflected light and made the sun a lamp. So yeah, my question is, could the stages of man be comparable to physically climbing up a mountain? Because if you look at that word, atwara, tur, mm. you know, Mount tur. Tur. Yeah, it's based on that, climbing up a mountain. You see, that that's a very good connection you made because... Mm. Uh, can you go back to the Torah? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Atwara. So, yeah, why, would, why would Allah say, like, why would Allah use a metaphor for mountain in, in, in like this? Because I think it's it's to depict the human being coming into full consciousness. It hmm. it happens like a, it happens like a it happens in sequence, and yeah. eventually it reaches at this point. You know, it comes like. It reaches a point when mm. you see the truth, peak. basically, your eyes are open. Peak. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a peak. Yeah. So maybe that has a metaphorical connection to the universe as well, in yeah. terms of... Right, right. Yeah, maybe. So, or perhaps, spiritually, like ascending the seven layers of heaven, one tier above another. And is the moon a reflected light? And like I said, we'll come back to the six-day period later. But next one. So if you look at this next line, Surah Yunus, indeed your Lord is Allah, the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then he established himself on the throne, uh, regulating the matters of his creation. There is no intercessor except after his permission. That is Allah, your Lord, so worship him. Then will you not remember. To him, so I'm just reading this passage. I'm going to get to why I'm reading this passage. To him, all will be your return. Promise of Allah is true. Indeed, he originates the process of creation and then he repeats it, uh, that he may reward those who believed and did good deeds in justice. But those who disbelieved will have a drink of boiling fluids and a painful punishment because they used to disbelieve. But this is the bit why I brought this up. He is the one who made the sun a shining light and the moon a reflected light Yeah, and determined for it phases that you may know the number of years and count and the count of time. Allah has not created that except in truth. He explains the science for people who know. And the reason why I bring this up is because of the God consciousness here. Indeed, in the alternation of the night and day, in what and in what Allah has created in the heavens and the earth, are signs for people who are Likomi Yattaqun. Likomi People who are of taqwa, God consciousness. So these are just questions. This is from yeah, connecting uh, the seven heavens, the strong heavens to insight. Um, and is the moon a reflected light? I'm sorry, you Okay. Um, yeah. So we think we know, but we might actually know nothing. If Allah created one of the greatest things He created in that of the heavens, and He raised it high and guarded it. How can we believe that someone breached it? Mm. Do, you get my, do you get my point? Yeah. Absolutely. If Allah has said these things distinctly, how can we believe that someone breached it? Yeah. Because that's what we believe. If we, if we believe they went to the moon, we believe they breached the heavens, which Allah said is unbreachable. Um, yeah. That would be to say that there was a flaw. And what does Allah say? There's no flaw in the design. That would be to say that there was a flaw in its design. And that allowed the deniers and the deceivers to pass. But we know that they can't. Allah protect us from making such utterances against what Allah, his most gracious self, has stated. There appears to be no flaw. There appears to be no breaching it without Allah's permission. And the deniers and the deceivers are the deniers and the deceivers, the type to seek his authority. Because some people have said to me as well, that, you know, when they're looking at the ayah, they say, yeah, but Allah says, uh, you shall not pass except by my authority so they say or oh, by his permission they say yeah the uh, allah might have given authority allah might have given permission yeah that's what people say and my question is do you think they are the type to ask for allah's permission and do you think they are no. the type for allah to give permission 
Yeah. Right. Um, so the pairs, the ships, the seas, and the heavens. Okay, so now on to the ships. So if you look at the word for ships, um, can you see that full, full, can you see? All full, full, yeah. Yeah, full, yeah. So if you look at that. Yep, so Fulka, ships, Fulka, yeah. That's what that looks like. Falak, yeah. Fulk, Falaka, yeah. Fulka, that's your ships. And now. Okay, so there appears to be a strong connection between the ships, the sea, and the heavens. Uh, the one who made for you the earth a resting place and made therein roads so that you may be guided. And the one who sends down water from the heaven in due measure. And we revived a dead land with it, thus you will be brought forth. And the one who created the pairs, all of them, and made for you the ships, the cattle, what you ride. So there seems to be some kind of significance with the mentioning of the pairs and the ships, the ships, the sea, the heavens. I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. And we destroyed the people of Noah before indeed they were divinely disobedient. And the heaven, we constructed it with strength. Here it is again, strength. And with the heaven, we constructed it with strength. And indeed, we are surely its expanders. Okay, and the earth, we have carpeted it. How excellent are the resting place preparers. And of everything we have created pairs, so that you may remember. So flee to Allah. Indeed, I am to you from him a clear warner. And do not make... Okay, so what's the point that I'm getting to here? Madman. Turn away. Okay, so this is this is what seems to be connected. Um, I'd like to know what people think from this, actually. So I've kind of summed it up here. Nur alayhi salam, the great flood, drowning... Uh, the ships, uh, Fulka, the ride, the seas, the pairs, male and female, night, day, sun, moon, warning people, being labeled a madman, uh, reminding them not to commit shirk, because that's what Nuh did. Um, the heavens, the lowest and nearest, the lamps, the orbits, Falaki, the celestial bodies that swim and glide, and the waters above all seem connected and relevant today. Okay, before I continue, I'm not sure if that is clear, so I'd like to kind of get an indication or any questions. Okay, uh, first question always. Yep. You know, when, you were, when you were speaking about um, we constructed it with strength, mm -hmm. do we know grammatically if it's talking about like we use strength to construct it or we constructed that thing to be strong do you mm. see the difference yes i do i do where is it um, I, I i couldn't tell you from the grammar because obviously mm. i'm not uh yeah, we Arabic, constructed but, uh, over you yeah. well all i can say is that strong is the adjective given to the seven heavens that's all i can say yeah no it's not sorry what was the two options that you gave we Sorry, um, I was wondering, uh, we constructed it with strength, the heavens, mm -hmm. so we no, used it's strength to construct it's it, one. or it's, no, it's no, not, it's not that yeah, one, yeah? It's not that one, okay. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, because Allah's giving the adjective to the heavens. We constructed over you seven strong, yeah. So it's not even heavens mentioned, but it's in that context. Um, so we constructed over you seven strong. It's the adjective given to the seven that's been created, not to the, like how you said, how it was built with strength. No, not that. But yeah, that's a good question. Okay. Um, okay. The orbits swimming in the waters above. 
Um, okay, Sean. Will... Sorry, I'm just going to wait for Brother Sean to join. Assalamu alaikum. I think you're still probably connecting your audio. Okay, so number 10. Yeah, brother, always when you put uh, Noah, the waters above in the title, were you thinking of the flood as well? Yeah, yeah. So because there is a connection to the flood, I, th I think, big okay. connection. Can you hear me? Can yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Apologies. No, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, so Noah, yeah. So this is, okay, so I have this listed here. Yeah. Maybe you just might want to let that kind of sink because I'm going to go through. Um, so you just said the flood, yeah? So I'm connecting. Yeah. I feel that there is in the Quran itself a connection between uh, the flood of Nuh alayhi salam these ships, which are in Arabic, Allah says, Fulka, and the orbits. So the orbits are the sun and the moon above, yeah, that is Falaki, uh, which Allah describes as being bodies that swim and glide. Mm -hmm. That swim and glide. So the waters above. The reason why I'm doing this is because, am I right in understanding that those that kind of reject what we're talking about, um, they reject that there is such a thing as the waters above. Am I right? Definitely, because uh, I will tell you one thing. Uh, yeah. If you're if you're familiar with Graham Hancock's work, yep. So uh, I was sure. uh, for those who are uh, yeah. Graham Hancock was saying that now he they he he has evidence that the fl uh, the flood was 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 not a it, it was a tidal wave. Mm. And it said that there was so much water that the in entire world uh, was uh, engulfed in water. So it, right. it, that means there's a theory that there had to be water from above coming right. in. And I heard it from uh, I I heard from another person, this uh, scholar from Pakistan. He was saying that uh, Sahil, Sahil, his name is Sahil Adin. He was saying that uh, during the flood there could have been uh, channels that opened from the sky vortexes mm -hmm. which brought in water from from the from the sky like mm -hmm. from other pl pl other places mm -hmm. and it it happened such that all the water in the in the earth in the oceans in the skies all gathered in one place mm -hmm. and then that 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 occurred as a tidal wave and that caused right. the flood right. so i think that connection uh, it this is brilliant be, it's, it's, it's because now we're going to hear from Allah exactly what happened is brilliant. So you've just uh, set yeah. the stage. Um, so yeah, the orbit swimming in the waters above. So in Surah Yasin, and this is actually probably one of the most powerful ones, actually, this ex this whole passage from Surah Yasin, it probably encompasses everything that we're talking about in terms of cosmology and Shah, Brother Shah Nur will be very, very familiar with that as well. Um, so in Surah Yasin from 36, so 36, 36, yeah. Glory be to the one who created in pairs. Um, of all what grows. So it's, uh, okay, I'm not going to read everything, but it's about the pairs. Mm. So the pairs is mentioned here. Uh, yeah. um, Sorry. Yep, yeah, that's fine. The pairs is mentioned here. And then what does Allah say after mentioning about the pairs? He talks about which pairs? Night, day. That's a pair, right? Yep. Night, day. That's a pair there. Then he talks about the sun here in this ayah, 38, and in 3090, Allah speaks about the moon. That's another pair, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So you've got this, um, and the sun runs its course to a pointed term, okay? And then you've got the sun is not permitted for it to overtake the moon, nor can the night outrun the day, but they are all swimming. 
The word is swimming. Swimming in an orbit. Yep. So if you look, wakullu fi falaki yasbahun. Yasbahun is hundred percent swimming. Some might even say floating, but what do you float in? Yeah, not the face. You don't. You don't, you don't swim or float in vacuum. Definitely. Right. Right. Uh, unless you believe the cartoons that they've been selling us. Yeah. Um, there's a there's an interesting thing just on that point. Um, you know, before I actually believed in, um, before I before I understood about uh the heavens and then and then there's a there's a there's a dome or there's firmament and then there's water above mm. to the next heaven right and then the, yes. so on and so forth i used to believe in space i used to believe in space um and i used to think okay how does the sun in terms of the the light reach the earth in a vacuum right mm. um and you can't you can't the light cannot travel um in a in in well it can travel in a vacuum but what is the medium so there's the ether uh, have you guys come across the ether yep. before? Yep. Yeah. So, so just as heat travels through the air, um, you know, it, like through vibrations in the air. Similarly, light, they say, travels, um, you know, how does light travel? It travels through the ether. So the ether is meant to be like air. And we know air is a fluid, right? So yeah. there, was a, there was a theory that also the ether is another type of fluid, right? Um, but if we just take the the mm. air as a as being like a fluid, like water, because air air behaves like water, right? So anything that travels within the within the within the air is almost like it's swimming, right? Right. You know. So so in the same way, like uh, yeah, what you said yeah, before yeah. about the ether, in the same way. So, but the fact is that it's not ether; it's actually water. It is water, mm. right? You know, the you, air, air, air uh, gets uh, gets less and less. Or what does he say? Um, you know, as uh, as you go higher and higher, it becomes uh, air becomes thinner, right? Mm. And then you get to a point where the, the where the air is so thin, but the air is still there. Um, and then um, possibly that's when the that's when the water, happens. Um, the water. Yeah, yeah, that's when the water starts. Yeah, exactly. the barrier. In my opinion, could, could, could you repeat the last sentence, Brother Shah? Or where does the water start? Okay, so 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 exactly. So the water is above. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so there's a there's a very interesting thing. Like, is the firmament actually like a, like is it is it uh, how do I say? Is yeah, it I understand. A, a tough yeah. material or acid? Is it water? Yeah. Right? Is it water? Yeah. Is it a layer of water? So so mm -hmm. there's this video. Of oh, air. sorry, sorry. Just quickly. Or is there waters and then that firm? Mm. at the top and then the water again yeah. In, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. so this yeah, is a very yeah, interesting yeah. point there's a there's a there's this video of a rocket that's going up mm. and yes, uh, it's a it. very interesting rocket it's a very interesting video so it's going up 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 and then it's looking down at the earth as it's going up and then suddenly it's spinning it's spinning mm. like uh, very fast mm. and then it suddenly poof, it stops but it doesn't smash it just stops as if it's it's it just goes and stops mm. and then it's like that Mm. And, and it's incredible and it sounds as if it hit water right it sounds as though uh -huh. it hit water so so that's a very interesting i'm not sure if you come across that video. but water in so many uh, with such pressure that uh, it's like in, impenetrable kind of yes so, exactly yes exactly. yes but but, and, but it's soft but it's soft meaning that it's mm -hmm. not a hard it's not yeah, a hard yeah, surface yeah. it's a soft surface yeah right? yeah um but yeah i find that very interesting that it also, could be uh, yeah. I think, brother Shah, you will be able to come up with a reference for this. Uh, where does it say that Satan puts his throne on the water because he wants to mimic Allah? Uh, yeah, do you so know the, the reference for yeah, this? Yeah, so this is a hadith. This is actually a hadith. Yeah. Um, it's a hadith. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a hadith. It's not in the Quran. Um, okay. Is it, is it is it is it a what what is, what is your opinion of this hadith? Is it a Sahih hadith? Is it it is trustworthy or not? Yeah, yeah. As far as I know, but I I need to obviously like um. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, pro, uh, prov provided that hadith. Yeah. Would so be... so 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 yeah. So this is a. Uh, so this is Sahih, authentic. Yeah, Jabir radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, okay. "Satan places his throne upon water. He then sends his troops. The nearer to him in rank are those who are most skillful in creating mischief. One of them comes and says, I did such and such.' To which Satan replies, 'You did nothing.' Then one of them comes and says, 'I did not leave so and so until I separated him from his wife.' Satan brings him near to him and says, 'You did well.'" Mm. Al Amash said, I think he said he then embraces him. So this is Sahih, authentic. Mm. Yes, but, uh, I, I, I read somewhere else that Satan uh, places his throne on the water because he tries to mimic 
Yeah. Of Allah's uh, arsh. That's so why, 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 why that would imply Allah's arsh is in a in a situation where where, 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 where there is water and there's yeah. vast amounts of water. That that yeah, is. Right. So if Allah's arsh is the highest point of of creation, as yeah. we established earlier, that yeah. means that point has a vast uh, vast concentration of water. <laughs> That's so right. th th that would kind of tell you water is engulfing the entire uh, domes, so to speak, basically. Uh, uh, and, and it's very interesting what Uwais, uh, uh, that verse he just had. If you go back, Uwais, just go mm. back to the, like, and Allah stops the heavens from crashing onto us. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, I just want to go back, go back. You mean uh, further behind oh, in Surah Yasin? Yeah, and so it's not it's not in Surah Yasin. Uh, you just you just had I'm about here. to come on yeah. to that. What you oh, okay, about? okay. Sorry, so me. Yeah, he so, so, yeah. So Allah says Allah is full of kindness for us, mm -hmm. and He stops the heavens from crashing. That's on very us. interesting. I'm so glad you brought this because now you're completing that word, the, the ayah when I bring that up. Yeah, uh, yeah. If we if we can wait. Yeah, 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 that's, that's so, yeah. No, that's brilliant because I didn't know, but you just completed that. For yeah, me. And, and just to say, just to just to think, it's to tell you like uh, so. Like for example, Tabari says that Ibn Abbas Radilan mentions this that Allah separated the water from the water, so mm -hmm. Allah created a pocket of space. Yeah, yeah? yeah. a pocket, and yeah. that's where this kind of world exists. Yeah, right in this pocket. But yeah. everything else is water, and Allah's throne is above the water. Right, right. The waters. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, now I'm going to quickly try to get to that now. Okay. Yeah. So, and a sign for them is we carried. So, check this. Have a look at this here. Yeah? So, I just established Allah says in Surah Yasin, the pairs. Then we got one pair, night and day. Then we got another pair, sun, moon. Then uh, Allah says that they are swimming in an orbit. And I've just told you about falaki and the ships, yeah? Sa similar Arabic word. And ships swim and orbits swim, yeah? So, can you see how they're connected? Mm -hmm. swimming down here in our sea and swimming up there in the sea, sea above yeah that's right um, and a sign for them and if you were in doubt have a look and a sign for them is we carried their descendants in a laden ship who is allah speaking about yeah no alayhi salam no alayhi salam yeah can you see that connection there's no yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. direct connection but can you see that no yeah. alayhi salam the pairs the ship absolutely uh, now now i can see it more yeah can you see it? Yeah, I know. It's all uh, wow. forming this metaphorical connection that, that yeah. is there. Right, symbolic. Yeah, Absolutely. but the, look, what, what, what I find interesting, what I find interesting is that, of course, like the, the symbolic meaning is quite clear, mm. but but there might be an actual physical relationship. There might be actual mm -hmm. physicality yeah, to yeah. this, in the sense that, right. like in the skies above, these are ships. These are they. They could be things that are you know they 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 actually. You know, they're, they're vessels in the mm. sky, you know, within water, they're swimming through the water, right? right? And there is a, in, and that is a theory. The theory is that the stars, or at least the planets, are actually their platforms or their mm. actual, uh, actual, like ships or, cre um, you know, like they're, 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 they're things that have creatures in them or like they're, they're platforms or garrisons that ha are, are, are manned by angels. I liked how you said that. Yes, I know. Yeah. 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 So called spaceships. Yeah. Space, spaceships. <laughs> Interesting. That's, a, Interesting. that's Interesting. absolutely yes. right. So you've said yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's I right. Spaceships. They're says, spaceships. Yeah. When it says, um, Kulun fi falakin I don't know. I mean, I don't know Arabic, but because hmm. falak is related to the word ships. And then yeah, it says, fi falakin. And then yasbihun swimming. It kind of like makes sense like that. Yep. And, Okay, yeah. Exactly. So the falak, falak, falak means um, fa, was it falak means ship, right? Yes. Fa, yeah, falak oh, well, uh, falaki is ship. Fulk, uh, fulk is ship. I think. Sorry, fulk. Fulk. And yes. Fulk. So, yeah, fulk. Fulk. Yeah. Yeah. Fulk. Sorry. Fulk. And then yeah. yes. And uh, and sh um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. 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 No, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Fulki yeah. Mashun, yep. So Fulki Mashun means a laden ship. So right. means uh, full, right? Mm, and wait, and a sign for them is we carry their descendants in the laden. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I haven't checked that. I would assume so, yeah. Yeah, Mashun. Okay, uh, yes, I'm so. thinking this has to do with Noah's story. But right. Brother Shah, uh, could you elaborate on what you meant by the gar 
the planners garrisons. being garrisons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so one thing I think I would have added to um, Brother Oasis uh, in the beginning is Buruj. So to add Buruj onto his description of the um, heavens and the earth, because Bu Buruj means um, structure, not just does it mean constellation, mm -hmm. but it also means structure. So Buruj by the constellations. So, so the whole, um, so the heavens is a constellation made of mm -hmm. separate constellations, right? It's one big structure. And yes. so that's why they call it the zodiacal signs, because there's not just one part of the zodiac, there's many parts of the zodiac, right? And all of them together make the buruj, make the big structure above us. So, and how, what, where Allah is referencing this is in reference to um, the uh, Fir'aun and Thamud. And these were very militaristic people. They were, you know, very martial. They, they, they had armies. They had, um, like, I think, I think, uh, I think um, Firaun had the largest standing army in the world at the time, like a million mm. soldiers or something. So it was a very, you know, it's, uh, it's a very imposing, um, you know. Uh, so Allah, is in re so in reference to him, Allah is, uh, and his army, Allah is saying by the Buruj, right? Meaning there is an army that is looking at you at all times. Mm. Yeah, mm. and then because Allah is referencing that they, by the by from the sky, there's missiles and things that, and it's all pointed down towards you. So from this dome, it's it's dotted by all of these garrisons. This is what I believe, and the garrisons are my manned fit, by my angels. fit. Red, my fit, my instinct tells me you're right. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you you're saying that the, the inside this dome are the planets the that yeah. we know yeah. that we know and love, yeah. and these these are garrisons. Yeah, exactly. From which, from which okay. exactly. So you have so you have fixed stars, you have fixed garrisons, and then you have the the retrograde stars, which are the planets. They're not very they're not planets, but they're just stars. But they move in random uh, movements, right? So they the planets are basically the stars that are not fixed, right? So the whole heavens are fixed except for the planets. The planets move on their own kind of different things, and those these are the and that's the re, that's the reality of the stars is that they're actually you know manned by these angels who then fire onto all of these um, shayatin that that try to come. And the thing is, the shayatin are not these little small little creatures. They're, if you know like what Tabari mentions, what Ibn, Ibn Abbas mentions is that they these were massive creatures, like they were. They were so imposing. They were so fierce and so magnificent in their creation. They, they were like, you know, like these fantastical fantasy battles that you see, right? That's Dragon. the type of existence that they had. And they were able to am do amazing feats and they created all of these massive structures and things. That was the Shayateen, right? I'll, I'll, send the you, I'll send you this book, uh, Brother uh, uh, Shah. If you, if you, if if you, uh, okay, inshallah, uh, and, 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 and I hold you to that, brother Sadi. And but something amazing is that you know the book of Solomon, right? The, the keys of Solomon or something. There's a book that has descriptions of these um, of these shayateen. They, they they're not they're not these little kind of imp like things. They actually they were like magnificent. Yes, creatures. yes. They're, the seventy two demons. Yeah. Yeah, the seventy two demons, and these are the generals you could say of uh, of iblis. Right. Well, uh, we get uh, when uh, the when Allah was creating Adam, and Adam was a lifeless, uh, lifeless vessel. The the angels protested and said, "Will you create another species that will create mayhem on the earth?" Yeah. Uh, because the angels were speaking from memory, so they yeah. remember yeah. another species, sentient, intelligent species, who yeah. caused such mayhem on the yeah. on in the universe yeah. that that caused them to. A question Allah that will you create another of these and it's so not they just, were they were speaking from a uh, yeah as, from a past experience they were, they were witnesses and, to a cosmological war basically. and 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 what and what Ibn Abbas says is that this war this is a war this is very interesting so that this war lasted 2,000 years meaning there was 2,000 years of bloodshed and and turmoil on the world and mm -hmm. what he says that the, the 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 warring and the blood was so much that the, the horses would wade in the blood right horses would wade in the blood of these jinn these jinnat right so it's horses very interesting. Would wade. yeah okay. it's wading wading like there was a rivers of blood meaning that's how much how how in how numerous they were but and that's how much how fierce the battles were right mm -hmm. and uh and, and very interesting also is that um that uh, that the Prophet ﷺ said that sure. when when the shayateen came to attack him, right? Um, he like uh, one of them came with a flaming uh, sword, right? And the Prophet ﷺ grabbed him, 
and he grabs him and then he said that he could feel the cold spit on the hand on his hand so so when he grabbed him by the neck the the, the jinn side dribbling from his uh, mm-hmm. mouth and the frozen said the co- the cold saliva was 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 dripping from his hand and wow. then he remembered the dua of, of Suleiman and that oh, Allah give me a kingdom that no one will have after me right mm-hmm. otherwise he would have uh, he would have he would have bound him to a pillar and then the people would have seen him the next day so yes. and but the interesting factor is that the 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 jinnat have a physicality to them right they spit the saliva that in, comes from them right in so fact there is a there is a thing brother shah because uh, yeah. sorry sorry to interrupt you no, no, the thing is uh, uh, when adam was created he was sent as vicegerent to the uh, to the earth right yeah. And I, w- I think I was reading a book and it says that the main agenda of the jinn uh, on mass, I mean, the disobedient jinn, which are the majority, uh, their main agenda is to reclaim dimensionality, which means yeah. that, that after that, that major war, the jinn were exiled to the, to the dimension of the ghaib. I mean, they became a very lowly being. In fact, you know how human beings uh, uh, right. say that we're, we're going to create artificial intelligence and this artificial intelligence is going to enslave us, basically. It will turn against us. So that theory, that uh, uh, that book was saying that the jinn had such advanced technology that, in fact, it destroyed them. And uh, that's why they were relegated to, the, to an invisible realm. And they hate us so much that uh, they want us to be destroyed so that they can reclaim the physical dimension basically yeah. interesting so, it, so that's it, it, it's it's and and it's, it's interesting it's, it's very interesting that um that a that the like like uh, even ibn abbas he, he like not ibn abbas sorry so tabari mentions in some of the ancient um persian um, um history right they they mm-hmm. had the first kings the, the first kings of the world they had even flying fortresses. He said that they had flying castles and they would fire down from the castles onto their enemies, right? And uh, so this was the type of technology, the type of things that they had in the first generations, right? And this is from obviously coming from um, ancient Persian history. Um, And in terms of uh, the relationship that some of these jinnat before the Prophet so these are we're talking about you know for you know they say ancient Egyptian you see even in the engravings and stuff these big giants with human beings right so yeah. these big creatures and with these human beings serving them and uh, and 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 that's the type of lifestyle that they enjoyed in the past right mm-hmm. these these jinnat even so meaning the ones that are summoned but they say after the Prophet that was like the final straw that Allah gave a protection since the time of the Prophet that the jinnah, they couldn't, they couldn't gain the strength anymore. They couldn't gain that type of uh, dominance that they once had in the past, right? And this is only after the advent of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So that's a very interesting thing that it was after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, the heavens were now locked off. And then the, there, was a, there, was a, there was a new phenomena. They said that when we would try to now penetrate the first heaven, we were met with these um, garrisons and these angels with flaming swords, right? This makes sense. So, so that could be in reference to the stars. That could mm. be in reference to uh, certain, uh, you know, phenomena, a new phenomena. Okay. I mean, mo- most ancient uh, advanced civilizations. I mean, that's another uh, thing that science, mainstream history has lied to us about. They said that we were basically primitive uh, cavemen who came out of the cave. And then we first learned how to use fire and then stone and all of this. And now it's, it's the pinnacle opposite. of hu- now is the pinnacle of human civilization. In fact, now there's so much evidence that human beings were so much more advanced than mm-hmm. fifty thousand years ago, uh, yep. even millions of years ago. Yep. So I mean, and you the first it. civilizations yeah. were worshippers of this jinn because they used to see, they saw these jinn, and some of them used to call them the Anunnaki, basically, mm-hmm. and. I mean, they have made art uh, depicting that how they were yeah. in prostration to these jinn, how these jinn taught them, uh, taught them knowledge, and that's how they became advanced. Uh, the, the, so the, there's a there's a very interesting, like even yeah, in the try, Old Testament, try, try not to get too carried away. Yeah, no, I, I just mean, <laughs> it's really good. in the Old Testament, for example, there's creatures like there's a there's a shemir worm, like there's a worm that can actually cut rock, 
right? Mm -hmm. That that Suleiman and Isham actually sent some of the jinn to to go out into the world and look like they went on a quest to search for this type of worm, and the worm can cut through rock, right? Mm -hmm. Allah knows how this is like some from fantastical it's, creature. It's all there. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, but it's all there. But so this is a very interesting type of uh, yeah. It's the, you know this is this is the this is our cosmology. I think we should have we should have another session just talking about this is. Yeah. This is another full topic that you yeah, can discuss. Right, right. right. Because this, this kind of explains why there's so many legends and fairy tales and quests and all this stuff happening. But up like for a thousand years since Islam and 1,400 years, you don't hear of new legends, new quests, new fairy Some, tales. Something, something very interesting, like Ahmed is saying, mashallah, is that remember, there was so much knowledge. We're talking about, they say, a million books during the time of the the the, 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 the library the, of, at the library of Alexandria, which was which got sacked. That's right. We're talking about That's that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They say that. Can you imagine at that time a million books? Mm. How much knowledge was lost? I'll give you another. I'll give you another thing. Now it's the Vatican. Uh, the Vatican Library yeah. has fifty miles of yeah. books that nobody has ever seen. Oh my nobody God. has touched. <laughs> And I, I wonder what is in those That's 50 right, miles. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. You imagine 50 miles. So when people say, uh, sorry to waste but I don't want to stop you, inshallah. We, mm -hmm. we carry on, inshallah. But when people say, oh, there was a consensus, like we don't, we had so much of our material lost. How can we say there was a consensus? Mm -hmm. On what? On Based on what knowledge? But, but, but the, the point is, yeah. even if there is a consensus, who cares if there is a consensus? What makes a consensus right? That's right. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Go, go on, you, carry on. Yeah. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just name name drop and name drop the book. Uh, it's yeah. called I'll send I'll send it to your brother Shah. Yeah. It's called the Co the the Cosmic War. It's by Joseph P. Farrell. It's named ah. the Cosmic War, yeah. Interplanetary Warfare, Modern Physics, and Ancient Texts. Interesting. It's a very interesting book. Right. Okay. So just quick, very quickly. So as I was going through, Surya Yasin is very powerful in. Us thinking about this whole cosmology just from 36, uh, ayah number 36. So I've called this section the orbit swimming in the waters above. I believe this section in Surah Yasin shows that. So you've got the pairs here, just one more time the night and the day in the next ayah. You've got the sun and the moon in the following two ayats. And then in the ayat after that, you've got the swimming in the orbits. Um, and not to mention, look at sign. Look at how many times sign has been mentioned. So you've got an assign for them. And you've got here as well, and a sign for them, yeah? So you've got sign twice. Again, I'm just saying not one of these things alone is enough, but when you start putting these things together, it kind of gives you a bit of a picture that there are signs being given here. This is my view. Uh, and we created for them the likes which they ride. And if we will, we could drown them. So if anyone is wondering about whether there is water, swimming mm -hmm. is water, uh, what else? Uh, the ships is mentioned, that's water, and drowning. Yeah, is water. Um, okay, so very quickly speeding through science for people who think twice. So, by the way, you missed this bit, Shanur. I did find those ayats where Allah does mention Basar twice uh, mm. in these two ayats. Anyway, I'll leave that for now. Is that is that is that mentioning Basar what, uh, twice in the same ayat? In the same ayat. Have a look. I'll just quickly yes, go yes, through yes. it again. So, uh, where is it, Bas? Eight here, yeah. So I've got it in insight in the seven strong heavens. So if you've got this, we constructed of you, Shidad, yeah, seven strong he heavens, seven strong heavens. So what I say, yeah, here's the Basar bit. So in Surah Mulk 67 3, the one who created seven he heavens, one above another, you do not see in the creation of the most gracious any fault, yeah. So mm -hmm. return your vision, Basar. Here it is. Matarafi Khalfi Rahmani Min Tafaud, Farji al Basar, Altara Min Futur. Three times in two ads, twice in one ad. Then return your busser twice again. And what is Allah referring this to? It's all about the insight and the heavens, yeah? And, and not just that, this is Surah Mulk. This is the dominion. This is wow. the actual kingdom. Thank so you. Allah is talking yeah. about doing busser on the kingdom. Yeah. This and is not just that. Amazing. And yeah. not just that, there's no flaws in this heaven, yeah? So that means there's no splits, there's no cracks, there's no breaks. No, there's no ruptures, 
um, no breaches. Yeah, I've yeah. already gone through that. No breaches. Well, mashallah, mashallah. This is right. It's like the first time I'm reading it. I read Surah Mulk almost every night, man. This is my point. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is how the truth is. It's right in front of us. It's only when Allah decides for it to be presented. Yeah. We can be looking at the same thing again and again. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So very quickly. Um, where am I? Yep. So Surah Yasin. And then, then, and then uh, in Surah Al Anbiya, so base, uh, after Surah Yasin, if you go to Surah Al Anbiya, if you look at this, ah, so if you're wondering about the water, this one makes it clear. Have a look for yourselves, guys. Tell me, does that mean anything other than what Allah is saying? We made everything with life from. Water, everything. Water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so here, so look, do, do do those who disbelieve not see that the heavens and the earth were joined entity? Yeah. Yeah. And then we parted them, yes. um, and we made everything uh, with life from water. So even uh, even Abbas al says that the earth itself was made from water. Mm. That there was a big, basic, there was big water. Then mm. Allah separated one part of the water to the other part, yep. and th when the one part Allah dried it. Mm. Right? Allah dried the this water, and then Allah, from that Allah made the earth. Yeah, right. So that it's very interesting. Everything is made from water. Everything, um, and the earth is alive. The earth is made from water. Yep. Yeah. And uh, if you look at this, and we made the heaven a protected canopy. Yeah, mahfuda, sakfam mahfuda. Um, but they turn away from its signs. Yeah. Amazing. Look at that. Subhanallah. and We are turning away from the yeah. fact that this thing is. A roof over us. Basically, is our, Allah is telling us firstly that the heaven is a protected canopy; it's yeah. enclosed. Yeah. And then immediately He says, "We turn away. We turn away from it. From its like, signs. Pro, yeah. When we when we look at it, we should see that it's we a see. Yeah, protected canopy. And, and not just that. Look, um, Subhanallah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so protected mahfud and it's a protected canopy. Protected, protected canopy. Wahum. No, wait, it's a protected can canopy. Wahum and ayatiha. So ayatiha. So it's not just it's not just a protected canopy. It's one sign, but there's multiple signs yes. in this canopy. Yes. There's multiple ayat here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you turn away from that. Beautiful. So, uh, amazing. So it's signs. It's signs. Ayatiha. Mm -hmm. So it has multiple signs. This canopy yeah. is is an ayat. Multiple ayat. And probably the, the one that everyone should be focused on. And if you never focus on anything other than that, that might even be enough. That's the emphasis that I'm being given, you know, I feel here. Yeah. Um, and then the next eye after that is, have a look again. And, and, look, and look at this, look at this. It's not just, it's not just hivdan, this is mahfudan. Right. right? It's a, it's a, so, so, saqfan mahfudan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you think about that, this is something that is continuously attributed to this canopy. Yeah. Right. So Guardian, it's something that is protected, protected strong. Yeah. You've yeah. got all of these descriptions, not for any reason, except for those who think, those who see. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, go on, carry on, carry on. Yeah. And then the next ayah, after the protected canopy, and after uh, here as well, what I'm saying for everything made from water, and he is the one who created night and day. Here it is again. Uh, and the sun and the moon, each in an orbit swimming. Again, in this other passage, yeah. Um, so are each Allah says kullum, which is each, are each of these celestial bodies swimming, yes bahun, yeah, which you'll find in this reference and that reference, in the water, al ma above us, also known as the heaven above, as sama. Yeah? yeah. This would make sense as the Arabic word for heaven and heavens, plural, mm. sama. A samawat contain the Arabic word for water. Look again. Mashallah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So ma is in there. Ma is in a sama. So if people are getting put off, this is such a, this yeah. is such an amazing find. I, I must yeah. commend you, brother Yusuf. Mashallah. Yeah, that's the, exactly when I first saw this as well. I was like thinking, subhanAllah, waste man, what have you done? Mashallah. It was by accident. I wasn't looking for that. Yeah, but that's but, what this, the, but these are that's this, what that's how discoveries are made by accident. Right. Some of the discoveries, yeah. some of the some of the most important discoveries are made by accident. Yeah.
Alhamdulillah. I mean, it's uh, it's like uh, it's showing that because ma itself is water, but sama, it's almost like showing the water is the water encompassing, encompassing exactly. the exactly the, the heavens. Basically. Yeah. So, what does that tell you about those who reject the whole concept of the waters above? What does that tell you? What are you rejecting? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And not just that. Like you know, you know, if you if you if you. I mean, I mean. Sorry, Brother Shah, I just got excited a little bit. I mean, this is unden undeniable. This, this, sama, this, how can anyone deny this? This is, yeah. this is right here, you know, this is right. not denied. If, if you, if you, if you listen to some of these uh, explanation and narratives by NASA and stuff, they say, we think there is another planet with water. Right, mm -hmm. they're looking for water. They they always talk as if like water is such good a point. rare commodity in the sun. That's the such a good point. That's yeah? such a good like point. they say, oh, water. You know, we might find water in this speck of radiation somewhere in the distance, like you know, in Nebulous Five or something, or two two one subsection four. You know, like there's a there's a little planet here. We think there's water there. Yeah. But Allah is saying that there's water. Like is so much water. There's the heavens are literally water. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And then you think like what, like anyone, that's what, that's the thing. Anyone who critics, like anyone who looks at this with Basira, they cannot uh, accept the mainstream um, cosmology. They can't, all right? Yeah. They can't any, on any point. We're talking about mount on geology, on, on the, on the, on the, you know, even in the, like. You'll you know, vomit it. Hmm? You'll feel sick. Yeah, you feel, you feel, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, mm -hmm. that was my experience mm -hmm. when I looked at this, like critically, I was like thinking, no, the Quran and mainstream science just doesn't fit. It yeah. doesn't, because I'm trying to look critically and I can't find mm -hmm. it. I, I don't see the connections. Yeah, we, if you the do. The Ummah has been apologetic for far too long, trying to reconcile the two. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And it's just, you know, when you, when you look critically, when you look truthfully, Right. There is no, there is no, uh, they, they don't conform to each other. There's, no. yeah, and, and not just that, the mainstream has a stench to it. It has like a, like yeah. almost like a, what is this? Like it's yes. such a, yes. you know, the, there's a cohesiveness to yeah. this, um, to this, uh, to this cosmology that we're building that yeah. it makes so much sense. It just naturally fits. Yeah. And then it just does, like, and then it, like, uh, when you look at the mainstream science and how the mainstream, like when I look at a globe now, when I look at, everything now after detaching from it for so long i can see it for what it is yeah. it's so alien it just looks so like what is this i'll, I'll tell you something i mentioned we, we have been being lied to since the renaissance yeah. Yeah. they have lied to us about everything they have lied to us about our history yeah. that we were prim primitive cavemen we came out of nowhere everything is random they lied to us about evolution that we came from bacteria mm. i mean what is this come on yeah, they lie. Right. They they lie to us continuously. What makes yeah. you think they're not lying now? You know, absolutely. Just... That's right. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, uh, bro brother Yusuf shared with me this ayah from which we just mentioned earlier, 1744, and it matches with what I'm just showing here right now. So we've I've just sh shown <clears throat> that the word of <clears throat> that the uh, word for water al ma is in as-sama and as-samawat but this would make sense as the arabic word okay so i've just said that look again is it is also interesting to note that just like the arabic word for ships is closely connected to orbits the arabic word for swimming is also closely connected to praising and glorifying so we just mentioned this earlier um but it's fun yeah so if you were in doubt have a look thus be and everyone knows what thus be is yeah when you're doing tasbih, what are you doing? You're making glorification. Glorification. And that's the same root of swimming. I, uh, I, yes, I, I, what's very interesting here is that the Prophet also said in the heavens, yeah. the heavens creak, like there's a weight to the heavens, right? right. Mm -hmm. And he says that there's not one space that you can put your hand, mm -hmm. but there is an angel glorifying Allah. Right? Okay, now, 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 right now would be a really good time to bring up 1744. I just did. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Yeah, I just did. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, I just I, mentioned your name as well because you sent it to me. <laughs> oh, mashallah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so this is a very interesting thing that there is not like the heavens is full of the glorification of Allah. Meaning, it's it's a sea of glorification. Yeah. It's yeah. a sea of tasbih, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But but um, my, my point is this: What is glorification? When you're in a state of glorification, is it possible that you are in a state of true floating or swimming? 
in this yes. world. That's right. You know, for me, it you, sounds you, like you're raising it, your spiritual sense in that floating swimming sense. And, and, and you know, in something else, something really interesting as well is what is flying, right? Yeah. Flying, flying. If you think about flying, you're it's using air. Air is a fluid. So yeah. in, in ways, in, 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 there's a, actually, there's a, there's a very good case or an argument to be made that when you're flying, you're actually swimming, right? right? And also you, on people... Yeah, yeah. Does it, does it make people, sense? Yeah, and also people that don't know how to swim, they're just flapping about, they're waving their hands about, they're kicking, they're like not at peace. But then when they start breathing and accepting and just like just take a That's deep a breath, point. they start to interesting. Flow. Very interesting. That's, That's, yeah. That's very Relax. interesting. So so there, there's actually what they say about. I don't understand. Swim. No, like like did you, you, did you don't understand. Yeah, yeah. if you don't swim, you, yeah. if you don't swim, you drown, isn't it? If you don't yeah. swim, you're yeah. gonna fall. Yeah. So people who are, who don't find uh, a peace in their life, like they they they're almost, like they're yeah. 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 they're almost like they're drowning. Yeah, they're almost like they're drowning. But the people who yeah. find uh, Deen, they find Islam, they find uh, contentment in their worship. It's as if they're swimming. Yeah, as yeah. It's, it's as if they're. So that's the more symbolic uh, meaning. Yeah. But yeah. So, something very interesting is that, um, of course, air is a fluid. So anything that floats on the air is almost as if it's if it's as if it's swimming. I was th- yeah, I was thinking. Um, that. And, uh, and, and something amazing, something very interesting is that, um, again, I'm going to go back to Ibn Abbas. He said that when Allah first um, sent Adam to this world, Adam was so big, his head used to penetrate the first heaven. Right. right? His head used to penetrate the first heaven and he used to look mm. at the angels uh, wow. worshipping Allah. So, wow. Right? And then mm. what happened is, l- 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 listen to this, this is so amazing. First of all, it's not fixed, meaning he used, his head went through, yeah? His head went through. He used to look at the angels worshipping Allah, and the mm-hmm. angels used to get, uh, they used to get uncomfortable because he, they said, they complained to Allah and said, Oh Allah, Adam is looking at us, mm-hmm. right? He keeps staring at us. Mm-hmm. And that's when Allah then decreased the size of Adam right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I find that fascinating that this is from Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas says that uh, when Allah created Adam, Adam's head penetrated the first heaven, he used to look at the angels. So the first heaven, when you pass this heaven, there are angels everywhere. Uh, yeah, I, I, have to, I have to mention uh, that. When uh, Brother Imran just said yeah. that uh, yeah. when Isa a.s. will descend, his hair will be wet. Very good so point. Oh, there, there, there's That's some. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Salam, salam to our brother. I think he's at work, but he must be listening. So yeah, Jazakallah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing. That's uh, very interesting, mashallah. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point. His hair would be wet. Oh, right, and, right. Uh, but but very- yeah, so so just continue on this swimming and uh, floating. So if you look at this ayah uh, from Surah Naziat number three, was sabihati sabha. Look at that. They're both the same roots, yeah? Yes, bahun, tasbi. Sabihat, yep, 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 sabihat. Yep, sabihat. Absolutely, it's all the same root. Yep. It's all the same. And by those who glide as if swimming. And who's Allah referring to? It's the angels, yeah, in this one. So there is swimming taking place in the waters. Um, I, I, I Just another point. What's interesting is that there is a, there is a cohesiveness, not just a physical in terms of the, cosm- the cosmology that we're building is very cohesive. Yeah, but also intellectually, like you can see that everything, even the etymology of the words, everything is connected. Yeah, right. Yep. It's like you can see that there's a is it syncretism or some there's a there's a connection. There's everything yep. is fitting. Synchronicity. Yep. Yeah, synchronicity. Even the language. Not yeah. syncretism. Not not synchronism. No, that's a different word. But um, there is a uh, I got confused with synchronization. But there is um there is a even the etymology of the language. Yeah, there's not even correlation. There's a link. Everything is linked, even Directly the language, connected. intellectually as well as physically. There is a link between the two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. All right. So I'm going to skip through some. I've, uh, I've just selected the rest of what I think should be covered today. So I'm not going to go through everything. I've just selected some. So yeah, I do mention also that there's. Uh, I emphasize about the no fatigue in six day creation. So it's right here. Why does Allah say uh, specifically no fatigue? Uh, where is it? The, the, the fatigue, I think, is in reference to the fact that it was 6,000 years or it took 7,000 years. Well, for me, for me, it's yeah. incredible that mm-hmm. Muslims get upset with the Christians when it, they say that he rested on the seventh day. And it's mm-hmm. amazing that Allah makes it clear in the Quran. That tells me that Allah knows that yeah. 
the, in this book, this will be clarified, you know? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Very um, interesting. Because that was the common belief. The common belief of the people at that time yeah. is that this is how long it took to create creation, mm -hmm. right? Um, something else is that when they were asked, when the people of that time, we're talking about the early generations, there's a narration, I think, in even um, Imam Haddad's book, you know, Book of Assistance, yeah. right? Um, uh, you know, Haddad al-Alawi, a very great scholar. Um, he wrote this book, Book of Assistance. At that time, there was a time when they was asked, how, how long was the creation of the earth? They said, uh, 7,000 years, meaning how long would the earth last? 7,000 years, meaning that's the understanding of the people of that time, right? These are the early generations of Muslims. That was the common belief, right? That was mm. the common belief of the time. And we can't, we can't think, we had that, that's something that you shouldn't, you can't ignore that, right? That was the common belief of the people, right? So it's very, it's a very interesting type of, uh, um, you know, so that, that was the cosmology and that was the time frame that they were, the, the, that was the common belief. Yeah. Okay. So um, I just skipped over uh, Great Jihad. Okay, so but I do want to mention, I'm going to skip this chapter, but I just do want to emphasize that Allah does say, uh, yes, this ayah. So do not obey the disbelievers and strive against them with it, the Quran. The previous ayah is talking about the Quran. Yeah. Strive against them with the Quran, a great striving, meaning do a jihad, yeah? So we're supposed to do a jihad with this Quran. Well. A jihad and kabiran, yeah. wow. Yeah. Exactly, not just a jihad, a jihad and kabiran, exactly. SubhanAllah. Um, and... Yeah, so I'm not going to go through that right now, this section, but I just wanted to pick that out. So some of these numbers. Yeah, yeah I, I, I like what you said. Are you waging a war with this Quran? A great war. And then yeah, a great war with this Quran. Amazing. Where is, it? Where is it? Where is it? Beautiful. I love that. Yeah, the last page. You, you, you skipped it. I'm spinning. Um, yeah. Hold on, hold on, oh, yeah, okay. Here. Yeah. And where is the ayah? The ayah, it's here, and then I must. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, this, this, yeah. This, this, yes, I agree. Well, yeah, exactly. Are we certain we know what th these two C's are? Yeah, but like I said, I'm not going into the two C's at the moment. I'm gonna skip over that and this, but I'll go to here now. This is the important bit. So, the waters above meeting the waters below. There's a reason why mm. this is called Noah, um, the heavens and the waters above. Uh, so if we agree that Allah's throne is or was on water, which is in this reference that I put here, 11.7, and that everything is made from water, yeah, this reference here, and that the word for heaven, as sama, has the word for water in it, right? Does this confirm the biblical narrative of the waters above? That's what I'm Absolutely saying. Absolutely it does, I think so, yeah. If so... It's, un un it's undeniable. Also, there is archaeological evidence now uh, that yeah. the entire world was submerged in water. So, yeah. like, it's just... Yes, apparently, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Look, apparently, because uh, something inter interesting as well is that you know, of course, on, on the ice wall. Let's 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 use the ice wall as uh, in this. The, the ice wall also is a perpetual um, te testament to the fact that this flood existed. Meaning mm -hmm. that the water rose to that level, and when it receded, because those areas are in perpetual cold, mm -hmm. they, they don't they don't lose. Like you know, do you see what I'm saying? That that water that 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 rose that turned to ice stayed like that, right? Oh, I see. Since, since the time of the floods, I meaning that argument saying. can be made. That I argument can saying. be made, you see? And not just that, that, that ice wall then blocked off the, 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 the outer regions, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So it's very, because remember, something very interesting is that the people, they spread across the world, right? Um, and these were giants. They were, they, they were great giants. They were people. Of, so apparently there are still giants that that you know that live mm. the, the, on the outside on the outside beyond the ice wall yeah right so the ice wall again is like a testament um, yeah. to the fact that this flood existed it covered the it covered the earth mm. it existed for that time and 40 days in those frigid environment those frigid environments is enough time to to ice over right right right, right. Mm. and so when when the waters receded those ice walls didn't mm. so that's an argument to be you know that's a that's an argument that so there, there, there is a there yeah. is a person uh, with the name of Robert Shaw, who uh, he came on the Joe Rogan podcast once and he was talking about he has a he has a hypothesis which is called the Sphinx water erosion hypothesis. So basically, I'll just summarize in one line what he says. 
he says the erosion uh, pattern on the Sphinx before it before archaeologists thought it was wind erosion, but he proved that it's water erosion actually. Mm. So imagine how big the Sphinx is, and mm. he's saying the entire Sphinx was submerged in water. So this tells you two things. First of all, the Sphinx was there in the time of Noah, mm. and it was uh, subjected to this uh, flood. Great flood where the, the waters ah, the, and the sphinx. The sphinx was a hybridization of yeah. It was a gin. It was a gin. Oh. It was a. It's what one one thing very amazing is that exactly exactly these are megalithic structures. These are structures that date you know from ten thousand years. They say ten thousand years. They say they they say the actual you know these are ancient structures, right? And it's very interesting that even the the pyramids of Giza, the 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 the, the, to, the top. That you see a little bit of the top remaining, but the rest has been uh, taken. They say they, these were stolen. It was stolen, but there is a theory that it was the water that 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 you know this is the damage of the that the water did mm -hmm. to the structures that caused them mm -hmm. to lose its uh, you know again again erosion. The, the erosion mm -hmm. happened because of water, right? Um, and again, this is in reference to the to the great technology and to the great civilizations that the jinn had. Mm -hmm. Right, these were not. Remember, they used to. They, they had an advanced civilization for thousands of years. Their war lasted for two thousand years. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so this is not something small. This is something significant. Yeah. So, on on the waters above, meeting the waters below. Um, yeah. So now, now going into a little bit of the the story of Noah alayhi salam uh, in the Quran, the flood of Noah alayhi salam. So in Surah Al Qamar. Um, it's interesting. So I've, I've taken out this bit from ayah number nine. The people of Noah denied before them and they denied our slave and said a madman and he was repelled. It's good to know, you know, in these times, yeah, that we're in good company. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> it is not, because honestly, I, I think I'm crazy as well sometimes. Okay, um, probably I'm. Anyway, so he called his Lord. I am one. I should be thinking seriously with this. All right. Yeah, it's just it's good to Actually, someone, good someone else, someone else read for me. Take over. Look, look at this. Look at this. You've just um, spun. Okay, so should I read? Yeah. Uh, wait, hold yeah, on. Go on, go on, go on. Let, me, let me just, let me just uh, make it. How do I? So the gates here, Abwab, yeah. you know, amazing. You know, Ulul, Ulul al Bab, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting, mashallah. Okay. Gates. Okay. So wait, actually, I'm yeah, I'm just gonna speak through. So he called his Lord, I am one overpowered. Interesting to know that you know he mm. got to that point, he got to that desperate point where he can't he can't do any more. And then you know he said ask for help. And what happened at that point, at that desperate point? So see, we, so this we, was the verse I was talking about. Yep. Right. So we opened the gates of heaven with water pouring down pouring down being right. channeled to, to now this tell me exactly now tell me look at that just the eye alone abwa yeah. yeah the they, they, yeah. They, gates these, these these exactly they they say this is metaphorical they say that this is undeniable this is undeniable undeniable, undeniable. they say they say it's metaphorical they say that these are big clouds of rain that came and then but we you know, know we're, we're living in the... upside down times where they I mean, there's a big yeah. There's a big difference between a cloud, which is just a body, and a gate, which is a connection right. between two right. things. Yeah. Right. A gate opens from one place and it enters into another place. Right. So right. the gates of heaven open and, and the waters and besides, of heaven come pouring down. And besides, is Allah trying to confuse us? Based on what they're saying, would Allah try to confuse us? Yeah, exactly. The right. gates of heaven. Why didn't Allah mention the clouds of heaven? Why didn't exactly. Allah mention that's what the? I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. These things what? would have been mentioned because this book explains everything. This Quran explains everything. So have, yeah. just have a look at that alone. Abu Wab, Bab, Abu Asama, right? We've already established. And look, Bima, yeah. So the water, the heavens with water, the yeah. doors. Yeah. What was it? Pouring down, Munhamir. Yeah. Yes, and and right. exactly and Imran Bay mentioned something. He says that these gates are the gates that need um, authority. They authority, need commission. Yeah. They yeah, they yeah, are yeah. the they are the gates that you know that the Prophet Sallallahu when he went with Jibril Alisan, like you know he had to gain authority. He had to gain permission. I wish I wish my bro I wish my brother could speak. I, I miss I miss his uh, his uh, little uh, insights. Yeah. yeah, mashallah. I wish I wish Imran Bay was uh, also. Speaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but this is but but that but that's the thing. This is 
like this is all in Quran and there's multiple references to this. Yeah. Ma'arij, the ways of ascent, like, you know, there's, there's different pathways into the heavens. There's the gates, even in uh, the, the Sunnah, in terms of the Hadith tradition is filled with these stories, filled yeah. with the stories of the gates opening, the angels coming down, going up, right? There's that famous um, Hadith about the last two ayats of uh, Surah Baqarah, mm -hmm. right? Um, where 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 Prophet was with with Jibril and they heard a sound. Yeah. They heard a sound as if a gate was opening, and then they looked up and then Jibril said, "This is an angel who has mm -hmm. never come to the earth before." Mm -hmm. And then um then and then the the he addressed he 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 sought permission to come before the Prophet and he says that Allah is now giving you a a, a choice, right? Um, and then uh, there was a choice between being either being um, staying on the staying on the, 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 the staying in the world forever and, uh, as a king or, or, or being a messenger. Yeah. And then uh, and, and, you know, so so he so there was a choice he had. But then um, the, the but he came with two verses of Quran. Right. So um, and this is a this is something that was reserved for this ummah. Uh, but obviously put that to the side, but the fact that the, uh, the, the, the gates, you mentioned that the gates opened and they heard a sound, there was a sound, like, you know, there was a structure, there's a something that was physical that was opening, right? Um, and even the Prophet said that the, that the, 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 the heavens creak, there's a creaking sound it makes mm -hmm. because of the weight of the angels in the heavens, yep. right? Yep, yep, so, yep. So, so wait, for this, wait for this bit though. So you thought that was good, the gates of heaven with water pouring down. What about this next bit? And we cause the <laughs> earth to burst with springs. So the water... See, see I, was, I was telling you about this, brother always. The waters you, met. That's what yep. I'm saying. Everything you guys mentioned, I'm like, please wait. We're going to get to the... <laughs> yeah. And we <laughs> cause the earth to burst with springs. So the waters met. Yeah, The word is there in Arabic. It's yeah. met. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, what, wait, and uh, uh, which words? Yeah, so this was the springs. So, what, what's the so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look for it. Hold on, I can't remember. Hold on, let me get out of here somehow. Yeah, so, so the, the, the meeting is the taqal, yeah, is it 54 yeah. 12? So, you know, like, it, 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 uh, yeah. oh, what's the word? I forgot. It's a call, you know, to meet. Um, liqa, liqa, liqa is to meet. There you go. Oh, yes, you got it. Yeah, there it is. Taqa. Yeah, fal yeah. yeah. So they met. Yes, fal brother Yusuf, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So they met. Okay, it's amazing. Look at this. So, yeah, brother Yusuf. Okay, yeah. So, um, in the, I think it's 5411. When yeah. it says that uh, they're referring to the gates of heaven, yes, mm -hmm. is that is that being referred to in the noun sense, or is it metaphorical language? Uh, this is this is this is literal. This is look. What's amazing is that look, I, I that's amazing. You actually look. This is literally. I'm how do you, uh, my look. question is how do you make something metaphorical? You know, for me, this is a good thing that we're talking about because for me, you only make something metaphorical. When you can't reconcile it in a literal sense. Yeah, exactly. Meaning, That's if they, order, if, it's not the other way around. Yeah. Something is metaphorical and you prove it to be it, literal. It, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. In the hierarchy, in terms of when it comes to the Quran, you have to approach the literal before the metaphorical. Like the the, the literal takes precedence over the symbolic, right? right? The majority of the Quran, you have to regard it as literal before you regard it as symbolic. Meaning, if there is no clear reason. For it to be regarded as the opposite. The um, only reason to take this metaphorically is if you believe these scientists. That's the only that's, reason. That's right. That's well, right. Uh, but yeah. and and, and look at this. I think Brother Yusuf is asking about the grammar, right? What, what is, what is uh, that before entail? before we go to before we go to um, like uh, yeah. So so faltaqa. So faltaqa is a thing. Is a this is um uh this is a this is a a, a, a verb, right? Um, because then they met. They met. So both met the water to these two waters. They met. Two waters met. Yeah, the water from the sky, water from the earth. The waters from met. below. They met, and and then the tidal wave, basically unstoppable tidal wave. And these, and, and not just that, wave. not just that. Allah even talks about the size of these tidal waves. They were like mountains. The 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 waves were like mountains. Meaning, there's a physical reference to what they what the, their size differential. Like there was the water was so much. 
that if the water is so much, then the then the 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 wave is a small indication of how much water there is. The bigger the wave, the more water there is. So if the yes. wave is like a mountain, how right. much water does that mean? There was yep. Yep. right. Makes sense. So, Makes sense. So I'm saying. So if we look like, for example, if we just look at a mountain like um, Mount Ohud is a good reference, right? For, because this is what the Prophet Sallallahu you know, has mentioned as a mountain, right? Yeah. Mount Ohud is massive, huge. Yeah. So if the waves were as big as Mount Ohud, yeah, that's just the least we're talking about. There are mountains out there that are miles high, right? right? Yeah. So, so what? How much water are we talking about, mm -hmm. Brother Ahmed? Yeah. Did you want to add something quickly? Uh, yeah, um, also, you know, in Surah Khafir, um, Fir'aun tells Haman to build him a tower so he can, like, see the waves into the heavens so he can look upon the god of Musa. But right. the word that's being used is Asbab, okay. which is uh, close. So, like, I think that's that's interesting that Fir'aun yeah. uses so the that doors. Word, so You're asbab. connecting to the doors, yeah? Yeah. The doors, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, carrying on, the waters met and we carried him on an ark made of planks and nails. Uh, sailing, yeah, sailing before our eyes, a reward for he who was denied. I'm underlining these because it's all about the water, yeah, it's all about the connecting of the water. Ark, sailing, uh, and we certainly left it as a sign. So, is there anyone who will heed its warning? Yeah, what happened at Nuh alayhi salam's time? Um, okay, yeah, so from this passage, you see that the madman Noah was denied, repelled, rejected, overpowered, and so he cried out to Allah for help. It appears that at that point of desperation, at the very limit of what his soul could bear, the gates of heaven were opened with water pouring down. Um, the water of the earth, the water from the springs were also burst, allowing for the water below to meet the waters above. Anyway, so yeah, just gone through that. And... Yeah, so Brother Imran mentions um, about uh, the, the the two seas meeting, right? Yeah. Um, and I think this is uh, this is very interesting. Like it's it's actually reference to to it could be reference to this, right? Um, and that between them there is a barrier. There is something here. Um, also. Well, um, that one. I, uh, see, I did skip over that section. Well, uh, just I think the Surah Rahman one is uh, talking about separation of the waters, so salt water and sweet water. Like yeah. they never mix. So but here Allah is saying He caused these waters, which might be of a different nature, because one is coming from heaven yeah, and there, one is there of is the earth. Some, is well, have, have a look. Have a look. Okay, I was going to skip this section because Brother Imran mentioned it. Um, I'll go back to that. So if you look, uh, Allah describes the two seas as being, and it's not. I think it's different. The water above and the water below is different to these two seas because uh, Allah says the two seas, one is fresh, sweet, pleasant. The other one is salty, bitter. Um, and you see the ships plying through them. So these seas are down here because Allah says you see the ships. This, this is, look, look, um, this is not, uh, yeah? um, and not unlike other two seas. Yeah, bah 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 Bahran is different to a Sama. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sama is heavens, the waters are heavens, and Bahrain yeah. is the seas which we understand down here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. I the, the thing is, look, the, the, the there's a there's an understanding, or there's a there's something that I believe is that um, you know in Surah Kaf where mm -hmm. you had the um, when when Musa listened with with Yusha bin Nuh and when when they see Khidr right and then the fish came out of the water right? sorry came out of the basket and then it went into the water and it swam in the water in a certain way right Majmal so, yeah so 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 my my what i believe is actually that's when he came to that's when he came to the the next sea or he came to a new he came to another 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 like it's almost like a different you know he he entered a different um um, geographical space yeah. a, a geographical space yeah. right um that 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 where where Khidr, where, where, where Khidr was and 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 the water that he came to was uh was was different it was like a different this is a different um like a different reality almost yeah. right yeah I mean, so, where, where the, so, the, the physical, yeah. Yeah, anyway so anyway yeah, that's, yeah no, that's fine yeah but on that so look have a look if you I think that is different because just simply, just because Allah uses a different word, He uses Bahr, yeah, Bahrain for the seas, 
and I think as sama or ma as the indicating about the waters because the water down below is the springs that Allah mentions that burst forth so that's mm. down here that yeah. we drink from the springs burst forth and the as sama is above whereas bah Bahrain is always these seas that are out there but if you look at this one so I skipped over it but when I mentioned about the jihad with the Quran so what I skipped was those two ayats after that so Allah says, do a jihad and kabirin with this Quran. Look at the next eye after that. And he is the one who has released the two seas. One palatable and, and sweet and one salty and bitter. And he has made between them a barrier, a forbidden partition. And then the next eye, and he is the one who created from the water human being. So what I'm, ask, what I'm asking is, is mm -hmm. this not just a geographical two waters that we live and see? Is this Allah speaking metaphorically as well? Because Allah says, do not obey the disbelievers. And he says, use this Quran to do a jihad against them. Could, could, could then, you repeat your question, brother? Is, uh, always? Sorry. Are my you, question is, yeah. is this metaphorical and not just mm -hmm. geographical? Because I think the scholars have agreed that these two seas that Allah has created a partition between is something mm -hmm. geographical. But my question is, is it also possibly metaphorical? Because look at the context in which Allah says that. He says, do not obey the disbelievers. Use this Quran to do a jihad against them. The next thigh is, he's, uh, Allah is describing these two seas. One is palatable and sweet. The other one is salty mm. and bitter. And then the yeah. next, one, next one, he mentions us, human beings. So look at that. In between this ayah of these two seas is sandwiched one about us and one about them, the disbelievers. Mm. I, I, yeah, exactly. One is sweet, as, in, as if the yeah. believing people are sweet and 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 uh, palatable mm -hmm. and the other one is salty and bitter so yeah. do not you know do, do it's not... a jump it's a jump it's a leap yeah it's i don't know it's it's, it's a reach it it's a reach but yeah. but it's but, it's there but it's, but it's yeah. not it's not yeah. outside of uh, yeah so i'm okay with that because i'm not i'm not banking uh on this kind of you know thinking on anything else i'm just saying is it possible um anyway so but, but yeah. there is there is an argument to be made for um, disbelief being promised. So Allah has promised a certain people yeah. that they that they are, you know, they're they're they're, they're promised the fire. Yeah. And for example, if we talk about the Yajuj and Majuj people, these people are, you know, according to the hadith, they're promised Jahannam. Like they these are disbelievers and they and and they, you know, they're they they're lost. They're a lost people, right? And they will make up like the majority of the hellfire or something. So we know that, for example, if you were to you know, if you, you know, again, if you were to stretch, if you were to kind of take a leap, you know, imagine that these are, and Allah has made a barrier between the two, right? Um, but yeah, again, it's a, it's a leap. It's a leap. Okay, yeah. So that's why I kind of skipped over that. Yeah. yeah. But um, okay, so the water's above meeting, the water's below. So sign. And yeah, I'm going to jump to now 15 uh, visual perception. Okay, yeah, 15. Yeah, visual perception of raised high. And I am going to actually mention this in the recording. I won't mention any names. But someone did Someone did say, I'll try not to get cocky here, <laughs> but someone did say that those who believe in this shape of the earth are falling for Dajjal's tricks because they've got no depth perception. That's what some, you know, people are saying, because they've got no depth perception, so they're seeing with one eye. Now, I've called this visual perception of raised and high because depth perception, I've studied psychology, depth perception has got nothing to do with being able to spot the jal or not. Yeah, Depth perception is something that a baby learns as it's growing up to be able to tell where it might fall, you know, on a, on a platform that looks similar, like a checkered board. How, how does this yeah. belief in any, forget this mo model, how does belief in anything have to, in any model of the universe have to do with depth perception? Uh, I don't really, really, really depth perception is something else altogether. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's yeah. my point. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. But you know, I just thought I'd mention that because I've called this visual perception. And I remember depth perception was yeah. apparently a, a, a reasoning why we are wrong. Yeah. Um, but anyway, visual perception of raised and high. Um so, this is this, this is uh Swana, this is very interesting because um it this ayat, for example, establishes a, a, a objective um, uh, up and down, between up and down. So mm. you have, do you, say, you see, the earth is down mm. and the heavens are up, right? You can't have 
up being in this direction and not that's being in that exactly direction. Right. I said, right. I did the same thing. You can't have up there, but yeah. up over there, yeah. or someone else over there. Yeah. Yeah. And not just that, if up is down this way, then that means you're you're above Allah as well as being below Allah at the same time. Right. Not just that you're you know you're you're facing Allah, but you're also got your backside towards Allah at the same time. That yeah, can't right. you can't you can't do that, right? That can't be the case. That's you're the, you're just adding more to why this has to be done. This is crazy. It's madness. It's, there's yeah. nothing. So so now that so for example, you not just you have a, a metaphorical or a symbolic hierarchy of up and down, meaning there are for example, uh, light is higher than darkness. Between the two, light yeah. is higher than darkness. Right. right male and female male has a has a has a has a degree of a female in some respects yeah, yeah. so you have this hierarchy which goes yeah. all the way up yeah, up, yeah until you get to allah but in the physical world as well there must be a hierarchy there must be a up and down right, right. because if you imagine the the highest thing is the arsh and the arsh isn't this some lump some like some round thing that's encompassing the whole world on all sides like where's the seat like there must be a seat to the throne, right? Like it's an ob it's an object that has, uh, like the, even the Prophet ﷺ said, there are angels that are holding the throne. Right. Yeah. There are angels that hold, meaning it has legs, or it has certain kind of uh, uh, things that, like what do you call it, like pegs or something that the that the angels are holding on to. Right. This is how I imagine it. Right. And the Prophet ﷺ said the distance between the earlobe uh, yeah. to the shoulder is five hundred years. Right. right. So it's 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 an actual object that has like a, it's like you know it has a certain kind of physicality to it, right? right. And then you have the throne, you have the seat. Now yeah. the opposite of that is then you have the earth, and below the earth is the hell, is the hell, is the hellfire. Right. Is right. The object well, is well, on that I did come across someone uh, asked uh, where is hell, and I think there was some narration that a Jew said it's in the sea. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. someone confirmed that that Jew was correct. And, and down in the depths of the sea. Or well, I think the seas are transitory points to transitory points. Exactly. Of, uh, and and hell. Something, yes. something very interesting. Look at this. So this when hell is, will be opened up on that day, it could be um, from the Allah. I don't know. There's this now something else. I want. I want. I want to. I want to. I want to share this with you guys. Yeah. What I believe is that where the sun yeah. um, sets into the earth, Allah says. Uh, Allah says, "Ain in Hamia." Yeah, that this is a a, a spring of hamia as like um you know the hamia is like a, a a boiling type of fluid a black boiling fluid, Allah in mentions the drink of the people of the hellfire will be a hamia, yeah mm -hmm. they will be drinking this type of fluid. I believe that some of this fluid bub bubbles up onto the surface of the world, right? Volcanoes, and, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, and I believe that if you were to go to those places, and apparently in Hayat al Sahaba, for example, there is a story where Dhul Qaranayn um, goes to the rising and setting places of the sun, where he uncovers the treasure that Adam and Islam buried the, mm. at the setting place of the sun mm. or, or the rising place of the sun. And, and uh, sorry, the setting place of the sun. Mm. And it was at the Ayn and Hamia. It was at the place where the, this, this fluid bubbles up to the surface. We're talking about the fluid in Jahannam bubbles up. Right. You know, these are the places. So it's very interesting that there is a connection, like uh, like you're saying that it's in the sea. Yes, there is a connection, and if you go deep enough, that's where you find the hellfire. Makes sense. And some of that fluid does bubble up to the surface, apparently. Makes sense. Makes so sense. this is a theory that I have mm. that's connecting. And and Hamia is mentioned in the Quran as a drink of the people of the hellfire, yeah. and it's mentioned as the place where the sun sets. Right. Into the, the into yes the pool of that kind of liquid. So Brother only, Shah uh, Shah Umid. Yeah. He said something nice. He's throughout history, I mean, in many uh, cultures, hellfire is known as the un underworld. Yeah, underworld. Yeah, underworld. Uh, underworld. Yeah. And but that's good. the opposite of the heavens, right? So wow. there must be a hierarchy. Sense. So look, look, what you're doing there is basically what this chapter is about. It's what is your understanding of high and what is your understanding of low. So now let's have a look at what Allah says in the Quran on that. Visual perception of raised and high. I've said that in particular because these are the two Arabic words that Allah uses to describe them. Yeah, a revelation from he who created the earth, the highest heavens, yeah. was samawati, was samawati ula. So it's al-a'la. How do we say Allah the most high? Al-a'la, am I right? Yeah, al-a'la. So yeah. that's the word. Was samawati ula. Now, if Again, you want to believe like, but, the word high means one thing to us for our entire lives, and it means something a bit different when Allah specifically describes the heavens as being uh, al-ula, highest, 
then that is up to you. If you prefer to live in their corrupted upside down world, what is interesting, however, is that Allah uses this Arabic word only twice in the Quran, which appears later in the same surah. Look at how Allah uses this word in the same surah uh, later. Let me just get to it. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll just read that. But whoever comes to him as a believer, having done righteous deeds, then for him will be the highest ranks in position. Yeah. That's how Allah uses the word. Again, so if you're in any, if you're in any, you know, doubt, uh, I find it. I find it very interesting that, um, again, like like Basit, yeah. like uh, Bas, I say Basata, but which is the word? Basata. Yeah. Yeah, basata. Yeah. So that is that is in relation. Uh, that that's in relation to the the name of Allah. Similar yeah. here, it's in relation very to the name of Allah. Absolutely. Meaning, it must be something so significant. Yeah. It must have almost like a like it must be so great in nature. Yeah. Right, yeah. that it's not confined to something into like something small or weak. That yeah. this is something big is connected to the one of the names of Allah. This is to the point where it's a it's a significant sign of Allah. Mm -hmm. Right, that if you were to see it or if you were to understand it, you would have an understanding of who Allah is. Yeah. Right? Let's so, have a look. Let's have a look at Surah Rahman, the sun and the moon, al shamsu wal qamri bi husban, wan najmu wa shajru yasjudan. So the sun and moon moon move by precise calculation, and the najm. So I've called it najm on purpose, not stars, because I'm not sure about stars either. I, I've got a problem with the word sky, and I've got a problem with the word stars. But anyway, and the najm and the trees prostrate to Allah. Yeah. So they prostrate. How do they prostrate? Um, but this is the bit. Wasama'a rafa'aha wa wada'al mizan, and the heaven he raised it. So can you see the word there? Rafa'a. Yeah. That's raised, raised it, and the heaven he raised it, and he has set up the balance. So here, Rafa, Rafa Aha, so two, he raised both of them. Okay, okay. So okay. actually, no, no, no Rafa Aha, no, Rafa Aha no. is the plural, isn't it? Sorry, he raised, he raised, is it? Sorry. No, sorry. no, as far as I've seen, uh, it's, yeah, and he raised it. Because here, Rafa because here, Rafa Aha. Why I think Aha is referring to what was just mentioned. What's, ah, yeah, what's Samaa? Rafa yeah. aha. So he yeah. and he raised them. So what's the matter? Because this is plural. So ah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yes. So he's he raised, raised them. Raised them. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Actually, so that should be he raised them. Yes, you're right yeah. about that. Uh he raised them and has set up the balance. Uh so that's that's another one raised. Yeah, Rafa. And then this one in Suratur was Sakfil Marfu. And by the canopy. So this is the swearing, yeah. Was Sakfil uh, Marfu. And by the canopy, raised high. So did you see that rafa? Ah? That's raised. And marfu, same one, yeah? Raised. Mm -hmm. um, raised. This is very careful, deliberate use of words. Yeah. Well, also, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Then do they... Oh, and here's another mentioning of the camels. That's why I said I'm not done with the camels. These camels seems to just come out of nowhere <laughs> and telling us something, honestly. <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> Um, and can't I don't know if this has any connection. Uh, aren't camels the only animals which can contain a lot of water for a long period of yeah. time? It's like yeah. that's, that's, there's something there. Oh, no, there's if Allah's mentioned it like this, there's so much there. For I, sure. I'm very so, interested. I'm very interested yeah. in looking at like a cross section of the hump, hump of a camel, and then. Looking but that's the him. problem, though. That's the problem, though. I think that's where everyone falls into the trap. They look at everything microscopically uh, it's not it's not even microscopic it's not if mm. we're not looking at this thing microscopically we're no, looking no, at i don't mean that look, look, yeah. look so imagine but can you imagine look yeah. because there is a belief that we have right yeah. there is a belief uh, for example um that that the world is actually on the back of a whale it's on the back of the noon fish right? well um, that 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 the noon look so so i'm just i'm just kind of putting out feelings here the, yeah. but that the noon fish is not some small little kind of beast but rather it's such a beast right it's such a massive organism but um that imagine the world is on the back of a camel right so so it's almost like uh you know so so, so like that's why i say it's uh, allegorical symbolic. allegorical yeah allegorical yeah so yeah. so wow. al yeah allegorical symbolic metaphorical um yeah this is what uh mutashabiyat is allegorical mm. uh, similitude metaphorical so yeah, anyway, so the point is on this high concept and raise. So the heavens aren't just above us, they are high above us, and they appear to also be made of water. 
So my point is, I don't know about you, but this increases my mind. I don't know, how does it make you guys feel when you know that these heavens are above us, raised, and they've got water? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, not, not just that, what does Allah say? He says that, he says that because of his kindness, mm. he, he, he holds it back. Meaning, yeah, that, so that that, is by its forward. nature, right. it's, meant to, it's meant to fall on top of you. That's right. But yeah. Allah this is what it means by roof without pillars. Yeah, this is what it means by roof without that, that you can see the pillars yeah. that you can't see. Yeah. So there are pillars holding up the mm. sky from falling on top of you. Mm. And, and Allah says that He did that out of His kindness. So mm. it's almost as if we need to be perpetually aware mm. that by because of Allah's kindness, only because mm. of Allah's kindness, yeah. that this thing hasn't fallen on yeah. top of us. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's that, yeah, we have to be walking around like thinking, Ya Allah, thank you. Ya yeah. Allah, you know, Alhamdulillah that you did allow this to fall on top of us like you've mentioned in the quran so yeah and according to ibn kathir he says mahfuda and he refers to it as the dome yeah mahfuda he refers to it as the dome means safe and well guarded it means high and protected from anything reaching it so forget what i'm saying this is what they say there also has to be some thought 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 into this thought experiment that yeah. why did early Islamic architecture have such an obsession with domes? Mm -hmm. like what was the, or, yeah, what was the other one as well? Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. What, what was the origination of this idea? Yeah. I mean, there, there has to be some absolutely. digging into. You're this, absolutely yeah. right. I was thinking about that as well with this whole yeah architecture, the domes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. number 16, the heavens as a protected canopy. Um, um, always listen, bro. I, I need to disappear for about 10 minutes, 10 15 minutes. So, just uh, if I if I make it in time, inshallah, I'll make it in time, okay? Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Yeah. Jazakallah, care for uh, coming for this this long, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, inshallah. Salam alaikum. Alaikum. Okay, so the heavens as a protected canopy. So, are you believing that the can protected canopy? Let me just make this smaller. okay. Yeah. So are you believing that the protected canopy that Allah created high up on purpose, specifically, are you believing that what Allah created high up, guarded and protected has been breached? Yeah, this is the question I'm raising. I personally seek refuge in Allah from such thoughts that contradict what Allah has made clear. And why would I personally choose canopy, although roof and ceiling also appear to be good translations? Have a look at their definitions and examples for yourself. So have a look at this. So brother, brother, always we should uh, uh, perhaps elucidate, clarify here, whether it's one in canopy that is enclosing all seven heavens, mm. or is it a canopy, one heaven, then a canopy, another heaven? I, so, I, you know? I, yeah, I, it's a good question, but I can't answer that. I can only point out what's clear is that Allah mm. says, Allah says the heaven, meaning all of them, then he refers to each heaven as samawad. So Allah says sama, meaning the heaven, yeah, which is all of them. And then he also says samawat, which is the seven. And then at the same time, you've also got another word for this canopy, the roof. So mm. um, mahfuda, I think. Wait, the heaven. See, look, here it is in this one. Wajalna sama saqfam mahfuda. And so the heavens, sama, no, so that's the heaven, a protected canopy. So that tells me that yeah it's just protected uh from anything from anything happening to it except for what allah's created it for it to happen and as far as i can tell if you look at that there's enough evidence that this is uh, kept to contain us and those heavens are for those um well we don't know what those other heavens have but allah's made it clear mm -hmm. in the quran that's the that's the other thing allah's only made clear what the lowest heaven has got he hasn't said anything about the other heavens uh um, okay but yeah, what you're talking about, the protected canopy. So yeah, all I can go according to is what they've agreed upon, that canopy mm -hmm. is, is a translation. And I prefer that over roof and ceiling, because if you look at canopy here, what is a canopy? An ornamental cloth covering hung or held up over something, yeah? Held up over something, mm -hmm. especially, look at this. This is the definition, especially a throne uh, or a bed. Allah has mm -hmm. described his throne in relation to the heavens. Mm -hmm as well as the earth being made a bed. Mm. The earth is described as a bed, yeah? And Allah says by his throne. So this is a canopy, but have a look at another canopy. The upper. This is what I was referring to. This, right. this is the canopy that I was talking about. Right. Yep. 
So this is another definition of canopy. Oh, the yeah. upper, uppermost branches of the trees in a forest forming a more or less continuous layer. This is the key. The samawat, the continuous layer of foliage. You'll find that the canopy appears to be the closest uh, to describing what Allah would create with elegance, beauty, and grace. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Not a roof. Not a, what was the other one? Not a ceiling. Not a ceiling. Yeah. So it's a canopy. Um, yeah. So before we wrap up, or should I say fold up? Um, yeah, I won't go into this, but Allah also describes the heavens. Yes. Yeah, so have a look at this. Uh, on the day of judgment, the heavens will be folded in his right hand. Allah says the heavens will be folded. He's definitely folded. And the day we will fold the heaven like the folding of a scroll. Yeah. The folding of a <laughs> scroll. This is clear. It's 100%. Like the folding of a scroll for records. Yeah. So that's the folding of the heaven. And okay. So now number 17. Is there any God with Allah? Five ayats. Are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this was uh, when you when you were running through the contents, I was yeah. thinking about this question. Like, what does this mean? Right. So this is the contentious one. So I only came across this because I was looking at 2761. So um, the first ayat. Or is he not the best? So Allah is uh, asking questions before this. Are they best or, or is he not the best? Who? created the heavens and the earth and sent down for you from the heaven water and we caused to grow thereby gardens of beauty. Okay, so I'm not going to read everything, but the emphasis mm. I'm making here is, if you look at this, Allah says, A ilahum ma Allah. Can you see that? Can you see where my cursor is? Yeah, ma Allah. Yeah, A ilahum ma Allah. That means, is there any God with Allah? And if you look where mm -hmm. my cursor is again here, is there any God? Mm. I picked it up because mm. of this one. Or is he not the best who made the earth for a firm abode? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's Qararan, yeah, firm abode, and placed within it rivers and made for it firmly set mountains and placed between the two seas a barrier. I think I know where you're going with this because, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. That uh, what what uh, Brother Shahnoor and us were discussing about was that uh, in this model there is a hierarchy that the Sidratul Muntaha is the most extreme of the universe, mm -hmm. and then you have the Arsh, and then you have the Kursi, mm -hmm. and Allah is encompassing everything. Right. But in the uh, quote unquote NASA model, uh, you can say that the place there is God. no such hierarchy, uh, and it creates for the gods coming and coming with spaceships and teaching us as, as, as they try to show in that new Marvel movie. I forgot the name. Yeah. And as well as many uh, of the lore of history and civilizations. So am I, am I right in saying that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, mm -hmm. is, that is the point. So if you look at it, so what does Allah say after that in this one? No, most of them do not know. Yeah, most of them do mm -hmm. not know. Uh, and it repeats here. Look, ilahum ma Allah. Here it is in the sixty-second ayah. Ilahum ma Allah. Again here, ilahum ma Allah. And here again, ilahum ma Allah. Right. So, what is my point? High is Allah above what they associate with Him. Yeah. High is Allah above what they associate with Him. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the land. He's talking about the sea. He's talking about His creation. He's talking yeah. about what He created. Allah. All of this. The heavens, the water, yeah, everything that Allah created, how He created it, uh, who originates the creation. Say, produce your proof, yeah, if you are truthful. Uh, Allah. So, what is my point? Moving briefly away from the heavens and back to the earth, I now have. So, I've just seen. There's one more proof that the earth is firm as well. Here it is. That 2761. Uh, Qararan. Amman ja'al al Qararan. Yeah, that's firm. Something that is firm, it is not moving. Yeah. Um, so that's that. In part one, I pointed out that if you reflect, yes, yeah, so I'm going to skip through this because I've done this in part one. Yeah. So basically, if something is firm, you tell me, Sadi. If something is firm, can it also be something that is moving? That's an oxymoron. It cannot be. Right. 
And uh, you know what the response was given to me when I said this about Rawasia? Yeah. What, uh, what, what was the response? I was told that it does not mean firmly set or fixed, which I checked again, it does. And I was told it means entrenched. Yeah. It's the entrenched. It's the same thing. If something is entrenched, it means it's been dug in and stuck. It's fixed. Yeah. You do the dictionary search yourself. You'll find entrenched, firmly set, fixed. All mean the same thing. Yes. Yeah. But anyway. In green, yep. Right. So we can argue until we're blue in the face that this is not clear about the mountains being firm. So even if they, it is entrenched, entrenched. Yep. Uh, how is it not entrenched then? You know what yeah. I mean? Right. right. <laughs> yeah. But but it's, it's a play on words really and truly. Allah uses one word, yeah? But because of mm. the English the language, we've got all these words that can make you probably move away from what it means. Yeah. But if you find that it's firm and people have agreed that it means firm, scholars agree that it means firm. And some of them, they say it means firmly set. And you look at the synonyms, you'll find that means it's it's basically, what is it? It's immovable. It's stationary. It's motionless. That's what it means. Um, okay. And... Yep, so this, this is the emphasis. Allah says five times. Why would Allah say five times in succession? Allah. My point is this. Those who are denying this truth are allowing the sun god to have a place with Allah. Yeah? You cannot ascribe false equals with Allah. You cannot ascribe heliocentric as being equal option with geocentric. Uh, let us all seek refuge from shaitan's tricks. Um, how is heliocentrism? Uh, committing shirk okay yeah i don't want to go there <laughs> but i'll leave that for others to do but yeah okay. yeah i don't want to go there um but what but i will say this much what does shirk mean you tell me what does shirk mean association of other entities with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right okay so do we have to be careful uh yeah. can i chime in can i chime yeah. in yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. i would definitely. say yeah. I, I i would say that uh shirk is the belief that something or someone has mm. power independent of Allah. Right. Yes, that's a better that's a better definition. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yep. So, but at the same time, brother Yusuf, would you say that we should be careful? Then are we, if not if not going there, are we edging on going there? With with this specific point, it's yes. a very. Uh, it's a very contentious, uh, controversial thing that I yeah. can't really speak on, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's um, true. but me neither. you know, it's it's a it's a great it look for me. It's like a gray area, but hmm. we should always be on our guard about this yeah. issue. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not a light matter, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's a light not matter. a light that's matter. Main, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's it's, it's a serious matter. thing that we all, as Muslims, yeah. need to take seriously, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, uh, uh, it's not a blanket statement. To, uh, we're not saying that uh, heliocentrism leads to shirk it, uh, because, the, of course, there are sincere Muslims who yeah. are just fooled by this. Fooled, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or just uh, they, 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 they cannot still perceive this model. But the thing is, uh, for those who say that the geocentrists are following and will, will follow the judge, so to speak, because Dajjal wants us to believe in this. Does isn't Dajjal going to come to the majority? And isn't the minority going to flee from Dajjal? Mm. So if the Dajjal is coming to the minority, mm. minority being the people who have an alternative point of view, yeah. isn't That's that fine. contradicting Dajjal himself? The Jal's agenda itself. So absolutely, absolutely. And you just chimed that in at the right time with about the whole issue about the Ijma, yeah, consensus, universality. Uh, agreed upon by the majority but the, the other question is how does Allah speak about majority and minority in the Quran Allah says no most of them do not know so what does that tell you about Ijma I don't know that's another question yeah brother Yusuf you can you can just yeah, talk yeah, brother Yusuf, you can just you don't okay. need to raise your hand okay well what I, what I would say is is that if Muslims mm -hmm. were to discover that something has the origins of paganism tied to it, yeah. they should be very skeptical and worried about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say at least that 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 should have that much concern that hey, this had pagan origins. Something is dodgy here. Yeah. I'm not mm-hmm. accepting that's what it as I a default. I'm it, not not, yeah, not ex- it needs investigation, 100%. Yeah. 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 I think um, Al Spantula tells us one way of how the world was created and that he's doing all of this. And then when we hear from science that the earth took millions of years to be created, it did this, it did this, it was a ball of rock, it came from, we all came from stars, all of this. And then people start to believe that when Al Spantula says, is, is, is it not my way? Is it not this way that I'm telling you that I created the heavens and the earth? But yet you want to say it was created in a different fashion yeah. by randomness? Is yeah. there a God besides me? Is there another way that was it was created? So I think that's when it gets dangerous. Yeah, contradicting basically what Allah has said. But the way... I think that point right there is, is, is probably closer to mm. uh, what it is that uh, we're, we're commenting on. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah, yeah. Okay, and uh, so this section I have called Are We Assisting the Disbelievers? Uh, so Allah says... It's with shaitan. Yeah. Party of shaitan. Satan. Party of Satan, yeah. Um, so Allah says very clearly, do not be an assistant to the disbelievers. Yeah. So that's something people should think about as well. We do know that they disbelieve. And are we assisting them? That's my question. If Allah says, do not assist the disbelievers... And never be of the polytheists, yeah? Um, and do not invoke with Allah another God. Okay, the lying, deceiving, denying. And this, this is the other thing. Allah says in the Quran, do not, yeah. So they are deniers, yeah? The muqaddibin. al muqaddibin, which I've mentioned. Wailu yawma idhil muqaddibin. Ten times in surah mm-hmm. salat. And the same to Kadhiban in Surah. Well, yep. Uh Mukadhibin, I think it it has in common with Kadhab lying, yes. right? Lying, that's right. So it is rooted in lying. Yeah. So yep. I think yeah. Yeah. But what's so we're being li- is- so so who are we being lied to? Right. Who, I mean, who is lying to us? Yes. The people who lied to us about COVID. The people who lied to us about their history, the people yep. who lied to us about uh, electricity, they say we need to burn petroleum to generate electricity. But Tesla said there is electricity everywhere. Yep. So they lied to us about everything. everything. So they are they have lied to us about uh, this as well. Um, and yep. so they are the Mukaddibin. Right. So yeah. And then, then, and then isn't, isn't there a verse in the Quran where... I'm paraphrasing, right? When a when a sinful yeah, person yeah. comes to you with a report, verify it. At least yeah. if you act on it, you will harm people. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome back, brother Shano. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah so if you basically what I've said, Surah Rahman, the Tukadiban, the Surah Al Mursalat, Al Mukadibin, they're the same people that Allah is referring to, the deniers. Yeah. So what you said is right. In that root is lying, which is kadhab, yeah? Kadhab, yep. kadhab, kadhab. But there's something significant about the tukadhiban and the al-mukadhibin that Allah does, because he repeats that one in a very rhythmic fashion. Uh, Allah is just changing the morphology to yeah. hearken back to the lying, basically. Yep, right, absolutely. Right. So at, at that, if you read these verses, you just have to think, mm. okay, the root words have similarity. Who are the liars? You can point to the liars, the people right, right, right. who have always lied to you. you know? yeah. They lie to you about your money as well. Yeah, so, yeah. But what does Allah say? Yeah. Do not obey these same people that he refers to 31 times in Surah Rahman, 10 times in yeah. Salat. Allah says, do not obey them. They wish that you would compromise. So they would compromise. That's what Allah says. And, and one more thing, Brother Yusuf mentioned when a, when a, kadha, when a liar brings a report to you, you verify it. So we should ask the Muslims the who uh, throw stones uh, uh, throw stones at us. By the way, l- l- let the one who has no sins cast the first stone. <laughs> so we should ask those uh, Muslims that uh, they're throwing stones at us, but how do you verify a report? You verify it through skepticism, through questioning, yeah. mm-hmm. as, as what we're doing now. So like... We get hate just for verification. So our, our, we're following the Quran, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I'm going to skip through this. I don't want to emphasize on this. Um, but 
Allah does say very clearly in the Quran as well, do not take my enemies and your enemies as allies. And these people, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Are they I think I think just 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 one one just uh, just to you know yeah. emphasize on the point that uh, Brother Saadi made yeah. is absolutely that's that's absolutely paramount. Yeah. What he said, like you know, the fact of verifying and and without this type of scrutiny, without this type of investigation, you know, then how are we gonna how how do we arrive at the truth? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is the whole process. I mean, like rather than just accepting. Yeah, again, rather than right. just accepting. And this this also establishes or gives us some sort of integrity. Like, you know, as Muslims, do we not have our own independent kind of uh traditions? Thank like, you. do we not have our own independence from Alhamdulillah, we do. Brother exactly. Shah, like like what does science claim to do? Its purpose is they claim to verify the truth, right? Exactly. But, but so that's we're the thing. Performing we... science on their science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get it, right? This is yeah. 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 this is this is the, the but that's the thing. Now it's come to the point where the, the the whatever they say it's become opposite. So if they make a claim, they 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 make an opposite of that. Like like you know, they say, you know, but but when injecting you with the poison, they're saying we're giving you the cure. Right. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah. When when telling you they're giving you the solution, they're actually giving you the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what we're living in those times now with whatever claim is made. The opposite is the reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but that's also the, the opposite as well. Like, you know, the yeah. crazy people are actually the ones who are actually the, no, the, the normal people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we were told, isn't it, that in the end times, the truth teller will be deemed a liar and the liar will be deemed as a truth teller. Yeah. Um, yeah, so these, everything is flipped. Yeah. So, 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 so it's not science. So basically, whatever they're projecting as science is not science, it's a belief system, it's the religion. Yeah. You know, as, right. as it's commonly understood, scientism is mm -hmm. the religion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the, um, and the conspiracy theorists are actually the scientists. They're actually the yeah. real well, scientists. Well, I, I would say, I would argue that what we understand as being good science is not actually called science. It's just simply called investigating the truth. It's truth. It's, yeah, it's just the truth. Investigating the truth. Yeah. Yeah? Right. Investigating the creation of Allah. But okay. what they have invented as science, I would say, has, seems to only have satanic roots to it, even though it's got good with it. Yeah. And it, like, it, it all came from the Renaissance. The right. they 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 perf they perfected the scientific method, which is basically truth in a test tube if you cannot prove it in a test tube it's not true mm -hmm. how ridiculous is that Can yeah, yeah. The, hamzi Yusuf mentions this he says the weapons of mass calculation right since the renaissance era there was this time there was this thing of quantifying everything measuring everything you have to like you know getting everything to a exact precise amount and volume and quantity right um, and even though that gave a lot of predictability in terms of you can predict and you can kind of make estimations, but still that also mm -hmm. brought with it lots of, uh, you know, lots of, lots of curse with it as yeah. well. You know? So anyway, I, I am wrapping up here. I'm getting really okay. close to the end now. Um, so people should just have a look at Surah al munafiqun yeah? If you are wondering how we are deceived, look at the Surah of the hypocrites themselves, yeah? How Allah describes them. Allah testifies that the hypocrites are surely are liars, yeah? They're telling lies. Uh, what does he say? They take oaths as cover. So they, they tell you, they swear things, yeah? And they take them as a cover. Allah's telling you, as a shield. So that they turn others away uh, from the way of Allah. So there are these people that exist. Allah's telling us. Oh, subhanAllah, this is, this is amazing. Mm. So take their oath, Aymanahum. So that's their oath. Yeah. Junnata. Like the people that say, we do this for God. Don't just take their word for it. I mean, you have to kind of see through some of these people. They do this. Look, Fasaddu, Fasaddu an Sabilillah. So in this is very good. So jun, Junnatan. So what is Junnatan? Yeah. Is a shield. Junna is a yeah. shield, right? Right. So take they take their oath as a shield, as an ashil shield. So it's like a it's interesting, like they it's a shield, their oath, like, oh, I swear by Allah, I swear by Allah. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. And, and what and, do they do? They wear the queen's, what is yeah. it, the medal given to them? They, they wear the emblem of the shield. But also this, but this is a characteristic of the munafikin as well. Yeah. There are Muslim, wallahi, there are Muslim people who do this. They, they know. oh, we're doing it in the name of Allah. They, yeah. they, they actually, but they're not, they're doing it for some, and they say, oh, this is for Allah's sake. They, you know, oh, brother, you can't investigate me or you can't say i'm lying yeah. you know but the main point i want to put here is that appearances are deceiving people shouldn't yeah. just take them just because they say something or they dress in a certain way or they look you know 
appearances can be deceiving, even words can be deceiving. So that is because they believed, then they disbelieved. Um, if they speak, so this is the interesting bit in Surah al munafiqun if they speak, you listen to their speech as if they were pieces of wood propped up. That's interesting, yeah? Mm. Um, so you, anyway. Okay, well, this verse is interesting. What just is, just, what uh, just go, go, go back to the, so, so, um, so, so if they speak to you, listen to the speech as if, um, this man, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no. yeah. All right. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. No, that's fine. I just um, uh, maybe in the future probably yeah. can delve into this. Uh, um, no, 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 that's fine. Uh, do not take my enemies and your enemies as allies, and whoever does it among you, then certainly he has strayed from the straight path. Yeah. So we have to be careful to make allies with the right people and not the people who are outright, outwardly, outright against Allah. Yeah. In rejection of Allah. Um, if they gain dominance over you, this is what they tend to do. The enemies, yeah, they desire that you would disbelieve. This is what they, they do desire. Um, anyway, I, I would I would say, brother, if this is as a is a is a better thing to say rather than sure. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll just add that. I agree. I agree. Say say again. I didn't understand that, Yusuf. What did you say? Uh, you weren't here. I think when I was kind of touching on the whole shirk and kufr issue. Um, I didn't want to go into it, but I can't help but think if you think about what shirk really means and what you think kufr really means, we're treading dangerous ground, aren't we, with what we're believing, but don't really want to go there. And Brother Yusuf was uh, saying the same thing that we, you know, we have to be careful, but this is better to focus on. You know, that's what he's saying. Rather than focusing on whether it's shirk or kufr, we should focus on what Allah says, who our enemies are, look, who look, our look, friends are. So, and something else, look, this is, and also this behavior here, look, Allah is saying, if they gain dominance over you, mm. they would be to you as enemies and extend against to you their, their hands and their tongues with evil. There, there's this thing here with the Muslim ummah is yeah. always trying to show up the evil of the, um, of the kufar, like, oh, look at how evil you've been, right? Yeah. As, if, as if, like, they, are, they have the power, meaning yeah. they enable them. Yeah. They say, oh, look at Israel, like, don't they know any better? Look at, look at China, you know, don't they know any better? As if trying to shame them into good behavior. Yeah. Allah yeah. is establishing that if these disbelievers gain dominance over you, this is their default position, meaning this is by default, they're going to do this. You cannot shame these people into becoming good people. And that's what the Muslims are trying to do. They have this inbuilt inferiority where they go to do the marches and the protests. They don't, they won't march and protest for the, for the poke, yeah, for the jab. <laughs> they, won't, they won't march and protest for their own hypocrisy. They will march and protest at the hypocrisy of others. Mm. Right? Mm. And they'll say, oh, look, you know, the India, India, please, India, look how shameful you are, right? There is no martial spirit. There is no... Basically, the thing they, is, won't, they won't uh, protest what their fitra should be telling them to protest. They'll protest what their uh, government or their organizations yeah. or their leaders will tell them to protest. Basically, they will protest what doesn't bring them risk. Right. Yeah. Muslims have been obsessed with safety, safety and security. Yeah. The thing is, they are so safe, in, in, in particularly in the West, and they have such good uh, lives, they will never try to risk it. So it's, instead of instead of striving to fight against the beast, they, they stay within the beast and they try to uh, protest against any, anyone that, that has a risk of alienating them. So yeah. they just want to avoid alienation. This and is, they want security. That's it. And, and absolutely right. And and Sadi, Mashallah, is mentioning right. And that's the that is wahan. That is the wahan of the end times. Mm -hmm. That is the love for life and hate for death yeah, that will yeah. infect the Muslims. Very good, very good, point. Saying, very good, point. Very good point. And this is specifically for the Muslims mm -hmm. that the Muslims will be filled with this love for the world. For the world. Yeah. And 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 their love for life, love for yeah, their hate fear, of death. Fear of death. Yeah. Yeah. The fear of death. The pandemic showed that to the nth degree that mm -hmm. there were big big ulama. Their beards are this long, and they, the mm -hmm. kurta and everything. Mashallah, amama, everything. And these were the people. Oh, brother, no fitna, no government. You know, don't get the. Don't be they intimidated by the police and all of this rubbish, right? And you can see how fickle and weak and brittle they were, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning Allah showed us the reality, yeah. right? And this is what Sadiba is saying. This is the wahan. The yeah. wahan is why we've allowed these people to have dominance over us because, you know, mashallah, bread and circus. As mm -hmm. long as they get, we get, they're giving us the bread, bread and circus. the bread, bread as long circus. as we're getting the bread and the circus, mm -hmm. we can watch literally our ummah being destroyed, killed because <laughs> of our own inaction. 
Yeah. Right? So, so for me, the solution to that is, <laughs> obviously I'm, I'm biased in this, but for me, the solution to that is, is to increase or remove what it is that's disconnecting you from Allah, connecting you to them. And this work, what is taking place here is, look, is kind of that, you know, look, 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 that's right. That's right. And something very interesting also mm. is that remember Allah says in the Quran that if you turn away, mm. that Allah will raise a new people to replace you. Yeah. And they will love Allah better. And mm. trust me, there are people who are being raised because of something even as trivial as they call it trivial as flat earth they are loving Allah they're coming yeah. back to Allah they're coming yeah. back to divinity through yeah. this mm. and they will replace the old people right and you can see it happening right yeah. I, I remember talking to some brothers even like they're not practicing even about that about this subject and it makes them even more want to come closer to deen mm. it makes them more want to come closer to Quran it makes it do you see what I'm saying and this is the replacing the, yeah. and, and these people these new people are completely removed from the old people, right? I I, I have a contro absolutely it makes perfect sense. And I have a controversial viewpoint about this. I think I think that people, even non-Muslims, uh, people who have a, 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 a thinking mind and an inquisitive mind are are closer to Allah than even Muslims who are just engaged in empty rituals devoid of any any truth Basically, any con contribution to truth they're, they're just going through the motions yeah. i think people even atheists agnostics who think and question yeah. are closer to and and who think question as well as defy evil are closer to allah than uh, muslims who are engaged in that pointless reminds me, uh, that reminds empty me what, ritual that yeah. reminds me of what brother yusuf said to me when i said um I, I equate, and I think you've heard me say this before, I equate scientism with Salafism, yeah? Absolutely, it's the same thing. To, but same I thing. found it interesting what Brother Yusuf said. He said, he goes, he said to me, he goes, no, scientism is even better. Why? Because they're encouraged to think to yeah. somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, in my, in my, uh, just, just, be, just um, before, just, I just want to interject really quickly. Um, and uh, and uh, I hope I didn't offend anyone there. <laughs> No, 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 it's not, it's not that I lost my thought. Okay, you, I, mean, that's my, I lost my thought. In, in my document, it's kind of long because I can't, I'm, try, I'm just going to, what, what I'm doing is um, I'm talking about how ridicule, how um, being heedless, mm. how there's different things that Allah Taala talks about which turns the people away from the truth. Mm. Like if I start ridiculing something straight away mm. or if I just say, oh, forget about this or, or if I, there's certain things that can like turn you away from, yeah. from the truth. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, as I went through at the very beginning, um, if you don't love the truth, then, yeah, you'll fall for the tricks. Basically, that's what we're taught. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, just trying to quickly get to this last bit, uh, because I do want to save the right energy for that last bit as well. Um, so, yeah, about the Munafik, Munafikin or Munafikun. Um, oh yeah, th th this this what I was going to mention. Sorry, sorry to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. For example, brother, you know, you know, brother Andrew Tate, he's become Muslim, right? Yep, yep, yep. So, so one of the reasons oh, why he's, he's celebrating <laughs> the circles, mashallah. Someone, by the way, someone should send this video to him. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I, 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 I'm thinking he's already all, all over this. You know that he's yeah, got yeah. that energy. He's got that type of uh, mind. But I, he has I, he has that questioning. Yeah, questioning. he he because why is he celebrated by certain Muslims? because he attacks feminism and liberalism in the way that many mainstream Muslims don't in the way that we're talking about mainstream scholars mainstream people like the upper echelons of the Muslim intelligentsia they'll never touch it but someone like Andrew Tate like they, some people say that he's more Muslim than veteran Muslims right you know because of his love of truth meaning he just says the truth as it is right mm -hmm. and it's very interesting that some people come to guidance through their arrogance meaning they have such an like arrogant um attachment to um, Omar 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 um, and Hamza. Hamza is more the, the person who actually became a Muslim out of arrogance. He okay. said, Oh, you're gonna punish my nephew. I'm okay. gonna I do you know that I'm a Muslim? And he actually wasn't a Muslim, but he said it out of like you know out of arrogance to Abu Jahl, like you're all right, you're gonna touch him, touch me now. So no one touched him. And then when he went home, he was thinking, Oh, why have I done? Right? So there are some people who actually come to Islam, they come to truth through their arrogance. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing. Uh, yeah. Um, so with with the hypocrites, uh, Allah says, you know, don't um, don't make my enemies and your enemies as allies. 
So um, in case people have forgotten, again, thanks thanks to Sheikh Imran Hussain, um, Allah makes it very clear who our enemies are and who our friends are, uh, in case anyone has forgotten. Surely you will find the strongest of, of the people in enmity to those who believe to be the Jews and the polytheists, yeah, the mushriks, the Yahud and the mushriks, and they come in various forms. This, this is my uh, opinion. All of these, you know, the Yehud and the Mushriks, they come in various forms. But uh, those who will be closest to us will be those who say that we are Christians. And I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, a lot of the truth is coming from them as well. A huge portion of the truth is coming from them. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting because also the Sifat, the Sifat of the Christians is that they're not arrogant. Right, right. And that's another, like, and you can see that there's arrogance, for example, in some of the Muslim intelligentsia. Yeah. Like you would say that these are, these are the, the modern day Sanhedrin like type Jews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they lord over their scholar, scholarship mm -hmm. and they're like, they're so arrogant, meaning they, they, they don't allow for any type of discussion, any type of anyone to kind of critique or give any, you know, they're very arrogant people. And because of that sifat, we're talking about Muslims here. And the Prophet mm -hmm. said that the Muslims will follow the ways of the Bani Sa'id. Yeah. Okay. So just quickly trying to, all of this is me quickly trying to, but yeah, just one more bit now. Um, yes. Inshallah. Okay. So just two more bits, I think. The heavens being off limits. And we have all day. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. What's that? We've had, we, we have all day. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep, keep going, bro. Yeah. Not me, man. I have to. Um, I can't do this for long, but I can do this on a one-off occasion. Uh, yeah, I'm just being sarcastic. It's yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Now, Alhamdulillah, is good. Um, and, and I appreciate everything that everyone has done, playing their part. Uh, but these are the two most important sections now. So if everyone can, kind of, I think maybe it's a good timing. Brother Shah, are you uh, vocal now? Are you available? Shah, local. My brother Shah, are you there? Shah Ahmed. Or me? Uh, unmute, unmute. Mute. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Nah, you still got a problem with your mic. I don't know what it is. <laughs> never mind, never mind, never mind. Not not meant to be, unfortunate. Okay, um, but anyway, yeah, good to have you. Yeah, but keep messaging if there's anything to say. Okay, so the final two sections, the heavens being off limits. Okay, right. The heavens being off limits. Sanaf lakum Soon we will attend to you, O oh, you too. Yeah. Does, is everyone familiar that Allah is referring to two here? Sanaf rugu lakum. Sanaf rugu lakum. Dual. All right, dual. Uh, for bi ayi alai rabbi Is everyone familiar that this is dual as well? <laughs> yeah, kaziban. And then Allah makes it clear in this ayah as well, our assembly of the jinn and men. And I think, was it Sheikh Imran? I'm not sure. But so whether it was or not, it's a valid observation. When has there been a, an assembly of jinn and men together? Um, Allah alam. Anyway, but the point is here, if you are able to pass beyond the regions of the heavens and the earth, then pass. You cannot pass except by my authority. Who is it that is obsessed with trying to go beyond the heavens and the earth? We know these organizations. We know what they seek power from, who they connect with, right? Am I right? Yep. Yeah. The, uh, do, they, uh, do they only partner with the mankind? Who do they partner with? The, the jinn. The jinn, right. And so the next bit. Um, no, not just, no, but the thing is, the interesting bit, not that just not just the jinn, but also the, the, the elemental spirits, right? So meaning the element, not the spirits, but the, there are elemental beings, right? Right. And it's very interesting because in even in the um, even in the Old Testament, it's mentioned like uh, for example, the wind mentioned the certain beings that, mm. are, invoked, that are invoked that are mm. that are like like and and we're talking about actual like we're talking about before the sentient beings when mm. they would do certain rituals like they would they would they would sacrifice the girl to the you know to the to the river you know to the tree spirit all of these types of things right and they will actually get a result meaning something would happen right so right would, right uh, uh, there would be an exchange reward for the sacrifice to the god exactly and it's mm. not necessarily the, the the sacrifice but rather it's it's the it's the intent and it's yeah. the it's the human element yeah do you see what i'm saying uh, so so there is a and and these are not jinn 
yeah. if these are actual element these are the elementals yeah right so there's so there's that aspect as well that can be explored anyway. so i have a, yeah go on sorry yeah. oh sorry uh, but, uh, you, he asked he had a question if he wanted to say something basically what i was going to say is um i want to say it after you've completed the presentation okay okay that's fine yeah you just remind yeah. me inshallah and brother sorry you were going to say something I was going to say if the brother Shah, if the elements are return are kind of engaging in this transaction, then aren't the elements defying their fitra and disobeying Allah because aren't they loyal to the to, to the bone, so to speak? No, I, I don't I don't think that's the case. I think it's not that they have an intelligent, it's not like a, it's not in how do I say it? it's like for example, when Omar and um, sent that letter to the river Nile. Yeah, there was mm -hmm. already a tradition in place where they would sacrifice a girl, uh, a virgin, to the river, and then the river would come back up again. But then, if they didn't sacrifice, the river would stay uh, low. Yeah, but when he sent that letter, he said, "If you flow for the sake of yourself, then we don't need you. But if you flow for the sake of Allah, then then flow." Right? Um, there, there, there is a there is almost like a reciprocal kind of like a, let's say. Um, how do I say? It? Like, there's almost like an exchange. It's it's almost simplistic. This this interaction between the elementals and humankind is a very like a, a given. No, it's not. It's not. It's, you don't argue or barter with them. It's just something that they've come to learn. Um, uh, like when you do, if you make a certain type of action, you get a certain type of result. Right? So it's like they have this built-in system of glorifying glorification of Allah. But at the same time, they are they are there to serve human beings. So exactly, they're to serve human beings, right? And if you do certain actions, for example, look, for example, the the Old Testament, the, the magic of the Old Testament in terms of the, the gematria, in terms of the numerology, still is relevant mm -hmm. today. I Meaning, it still mm -hmm. works, right? Mm -hmm. Even though the Quran has now superseded the Torah, there are elements of the Torah. There, there, there's, there, there's, there's still the Torah still has its effect in the world otherwise how you know the jews they they study this stuff to the nth degree like they study um and then they implement this stuff and it works for them right mm -hmm. so, so you have to mm -hmm. think like, what is it about elements of the torah as well as elements of the injil right mm -hmm. maybe there's aspects of it that still is relevant to this day uh, and 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 what i find very interesting is that these are uh, like um you know these types of uh uh, these kinds of you know folk tales about um, uh, you, like because for example the Old Testament is filled with a lot of folk mm -hmm. stuff right it's a very uh, like fantastical like they say like one of the stars is actually a woman that turned into a star right so there's all of this type of uh, folk story but there's there could be some truth hidden in that right somewhere mm -hmm. somehow okay. and, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. about them taking advantage of that like they obviously they understand these things better mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, so it's about taking advantage of all of these types of hidden mechanics of the world, but still not having imaniyat in Allah. And remember, it's shaitan also telling them this stuff. Shaitan yeah, is revealing to them the, 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 the mechanics yeah. and the machinery. of. The so we know world. there's, yeah, playing around with him. So back to the text that is not played around with. Um, yep, yeah, so we just went through the ayah where Allah says they cannot pass beyond the heavens and the earth. Can you guys tell me what you think about this ayah now? after that so i haven't really focused on that so if you look beyond that where allah says uh, they cannot pass without except by his authority look at that again and then after everything that we've just uh, gone through about the lowest heaven having the lamps the mis having the gods yeah, uh, having uh, what you call it, missiles being sent. Yeah, am I right? All of these words are in the Quran about these lowest heavens, and Allah has just said that you cannot pass beyond these heavens and the earth without His authority. What does Allah say after that? Will be sent against both of you a flame of fire and smoke, and you will not be able to defend yourselves. Hmm. Can you tell, can you tell both, me? Both, yeah, both man and jinn. Right, but can you tell me? Does that sound like nuclear uh, disaster to you? Or does that sound like what happens, you know, the missiles being sent against them when they try to uh, approach the heavens? 
Interesting. I, I don't think that's the case. I think mm. I think it's something that's isolated to the sky, right? Okay. Um, because, you know, in terms of like nuclear, the way they say nuclear weapons exist, I mean, they, they don't, I'm sorry, but they nuclear weapons don't exist, right? That's my point. What yeah. I'm saying, for me, this sounds like, look at that, will be sent both of you a flame of fire and smoke. For me, that sounds like to me, uh, a response oh, to what okay i get it, I get it. a response to what allah says ah. yeah, that's that's the point i'm making i'm with you look okay. Allah says okay. oh, assembly of the jinn and men if you are able to pass beyond the regions of the heavens and the earth then pass you cannot pass except by my authority and what right. does Allah further say he says yeah if you try what will happen we'll be sent against both of you a flame of fire and smoke and you will not be able to defend yourself. Okay, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And could this be in reference? To, like, think about this. Yeah, remember Oper Operation Fishbowl? Yes. When they, apparently, they started I sending think of that as well. Yeah. Could it be that whatever probes they were sending, the yeah. response was all of these massive explosions? Thank you. And yeah, very interesting. And That's that is saying. these are the weapons. So That's these are saying. the weapons. But can you see how easily wow. people can believe that in the end times that we're facing some nuclear disaster because of this ayah? Can you see that? It's interesting. If, if you so, don't know, if you don't know the reality of the earth, you know, from all of these things. So, could, so could it be that they they are instigating such fitna in the sky that yeah. the response is all of these missiles being thrown into the onto the right. world? And we've right? seen we've seen such things when we've seen these things going up there. What do we see? We see we've seen uh, examples of um, you know trails of smoke coming down or. Uh, yeah. something flaming you know the shooting star whatever it is there, there's, there's, there, there's yeah. a there's a very interesting thing there's an interesting theory mm -hmm. that i had is that when we see the you know they say oh the the meteor shower right yeah they actually i i sometimes think that are they getting righteous jinn and sacrificing them to the sky or something you know like they you know because or something like you know they're, they're pushing some jinn out into the into the into the sky and then they're getting rained down by the meteors right. Right? I, I come I sometimes used to think like what's going on up there? Mm -hmm. What is because we know that these are not meteors in the in that sense. Yeah. Right. These are actually a response from the sky. These are shooting, they're, they're being shot down. So mm -hmm. something is being shot down. So what did they send? Did they send gins up there? Did they tie up gins or something and then put them up into the sky and then they get automatic like laser laser turret response? Like, brrr, they get start getting shot down. What's <laughs> I used to, I used to, I used to sometimes think, what's going on? Yeah. But, yeah, but, now that you, but now that you mentioned the big one, like you know, yeah. the fire and smoke, I'm like, that's thinking, what I'm saying. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, so, so, but the main point is that Allah has made clear that the heavens is off limits, it's unbreachable. The word, by the way, which I haven't gone into here, so the word that is used for unbreachable is the same word used for uh, chastity, by the way, impenetrable. Yeah, yeah, the, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, I don't want to go into it, but basically, you know what I'm saying, mm. yeah, it's impenetrable. And it's also used to describe how pure Maryam alayhi salam was. The same word given to the heavens being described as unbreachable, by the way. Dude, uh, this, is, this is what? Say, say again, bro. The heavens being described as being unbreachable. Yeah. yeah. I, and this is in Surah, was that in Surah Maryam? Uh, no, not in Surah Maryam. I'm saying that the word used for that is the same root connected to describing our chastity our guarding oh. our pr private parts oh, um, how pure okay. Maryam AS was impenetrable basically guarded protected yes, yes, yeah, yes, it's the same connection sure. that's right yeah um okay so last bit now okay yeah, are people aware of this so I just went through Surah Rahman are they aware of Surah Al-Mursalat uh, being repeated like this are you familiar with this hmm yeah yeah woe, woe that day to the deniers yeah and deceivers yeah? yeah so if you look at this bit alam naj alil awda kifata have we not made the earth a receptacle yeah so i just went through in surah rahman about reminding people from part one that allah has made it clear that they cannot go beyond the uh, regions of the heavens and the earth and in this one allah makes it clear as well that how has he made the earth he's telling them he's, he's not saying what he's made he's saying have we not made the earth a receptacle? Have I not made this a place? So what is it? It's a place of containment. Yeah, yeah. they're trying to get out. But Allah's telling them that this is a receptacle. What is a receptacle? A receptacle is a container. Here you go. What is a receptacle? It's a hollow object used to receive and contain something. That's how Allah describes the earth. Yeah. Mm. 
but most people don't use receptacle. Most A lot of translators have said container, but most translators have used one of these two words, receptacle or container. Yeah. So why are we receptacle? I mean, yeah. what's even interesting is like, like uh, there's uh, the Quran website, and yeah. even though the, the translation is different, the, when you hover over the word kifata, it says receptacle. Right, so, right. So, like you know, that, that's the that's the that's the default uh, translation. Right. Now keep this in your mind, yeah. As I do this final part now. So these two, Surah Rahman, Surah Musalat, can't can't go beyond these heavens and earth. You're in a container. Now we get to the best part, which is at the end. So the lamps, gods, and missiles in a glass container. Before we get into these lamps in general, it might be a good time to mention. A major problem in understanding the true nature. Actually, I'm going to skip this. So that's the. See, I'm still, I'm still doing this document. Uh, yeah, back to the, back to those seven heavens that were created in two days, with the nearest heaven having gods and lamps. Let's have a look at the ayah again. Forty-one, twelve, Surah Fusilat. Fakadahunna sabaa samawati fi fi yawmaini wa awha fi kulli samain amraha. You're asking, yeah, what's the word for lamps? Here it is. Bimasabi, yeah. Are you can you see that? Bimasabi. Wahivza. We've already gone this through this, but I'm I'm bringing this up again. Uh So God, yeah, to God. Uh, hmm. that is the decree. So he completed them as seven heavens, nearest heaven, lamps, and God. So as mentioned earlier, this ayah appears to be clearly informing us that the lamps, which is sun, moon, and zodiacal signs, we see up above us in the heavens are much closer than we believe. Do, do you agree mm. that these are much closer than we believe, yeah? As yeah. they are in the lowest heaven, the heaven of this world. So it's called dunya. Dunya is what we live, and it's the lowest, yeah? This world. And that the nearest, lowest heaven... The heaven of this world also appears to be given two distinct jobs to contain the lamps, masabi, yeah, masabi, the lamps to God to make it inviolable, never to be broken, infringed, or dishonored, or in other words, to protect it from intruders from the shayateen. Are, are we agreeing so far? Yeah. Okay. As further supported previously in this ayah as well, walakad zayyana sama dunya bi masabi. Here's another mention here. Yeah? Masabi, and we have certainly beautified again. So they're given this job of beautification, the adornment of the nearest heaven with lamps, and we have made them as missiles. Missiles, yeah? For the devils, and we have prepared for them the punishment of the blaze. Stay with me, brothers. Yeah, almost finished. Hmm. So, Masabi, lamps, um, missiles, beautification. I'm asking now, when you're ready, Brother Shano. Yeah. I want your full attention, please. Okay, sorry, sorry, Murphy, Murphy. Yeah. Sorry, speak to me. No, no, because it's the most important bit. Okay. So my question is, the final question for today, and we are done. Is there any more description given to these lamps? Al-Misbah, yeah? I've just shown you. Here, Bimasabi, nearest heaven to God. And then again here, Masabi. Missiles, yeah, for the devils. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah, in the lowest heaven. Is there any more description given to these lamps on Misbah? Let's go to this uh, Surah An Nur, the Surah of the Light. Okay, yeah, this is, yeah, of course, yeah. Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Allahu Nurus Samawati Wal Ard, Mathalu Nurihi Kamishkat. Kamishkat, by the way, is a niche. What is a niche? A niche, I've got it here. Can you see this? What is a niche? Kamishkat. It's a, a, recess. a recess or a hollow in a wall. Are yeah. you with me? Yeah. So Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The example of his light is like a niche. Mm. Yeah? It, yeah. In it is a lamp. Let's go through this. Kamishkati fiha misbah. Al misbahu fihi al misbahu fi zujaja. Az Zujajatu Kaannaha Kaukabun Duriyui Shajaratin Mubarakatin Zaytunatin La Sharkuyatin Wala Gharbiya Bear with me, bear with me. Hold that back, Simon. Hold that. Subhanallah. Go on, carry on, carry on. The example. So what is what is the topic of this ayah? 
Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. What is it about? Yeah. The heavens and the earth. Am I right? Yes, the hmm. heavens and the earth. So the in the heavens. Of his light. So Allah describes the heavens and the earth yeah. as the light. Yeah? Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And what does he say further about that light? The light is like a niche. And what did we say the niche is? It's a recess or a hollow. A recess or a hollow. <laughs> in, the, in the heavens. In this hollow, in this recess or hollow in a wall. Yeah. In it is a lamp. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. In it is a lamp. <laughs> the lamp is in a glass. Zujaja. Yeah. This is Zujaja. Yeah. These very same lamps are in a glass. Zujaja. Oh, the glass. Mm. Zujaja too. Like a brilliantly lit star. And, and the brilliantly star, what's the wording used? What, brilliantly lit star? Yeah, brilliantly um, star. Find, find the brilliantly star. Kokobun Duriyui. Kokobun. So it's star. It's star. But more than, it's... more than Kokobun. Duriyui. Duriyum. Duriyu. 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 Kokobun Duriyu. So that's, that's a brilliantly lit star. A yeah. brilliantly star. So this is Kokob. So it's actually a star. It is a star. Yeah. Yes. It's a brilliantly. Possibly. Yes, you're right. You're right so, about that. So my focus is on everything before that, though. Ah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Let, let's let's finish finish this uh, verse. And let's okay, okay. Yeah. analyze it. As if it were a brilliantly lit star. Uh, yeah. I'm going to read the Arabic as well. Hold on. Kokobun. Uh, so wait. The glass as if it were a brilliant, brilliant star, which is lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree, neither of the east nor of the west, whose oil would almost glow even if untouched by fire. Light upon light, Allah guides to his light whom he wills, and Allah is the pres Allah presents examples for mankind, and Allah of everything is the all knower. Allah so this verse uh, okay, there's uh, something powerful. Sorry, I think it's the most I mean, powerful this, verse. This is amazing. Like what what yeah. there's two things here. There's two things here. There's one is that this Kamishkatin is the recesses in this um sama. So the first sama mm. has these recesses in it, right? And the, this is where the stars actually are. They reside in these recesses into the, the Burj, the Burj, the construction of the heavens. Mm -hmm. has oh, wait, hold on. But wait, hold on, hold on. Because what does Allah say? Look, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, yeah? Yes. So he's the light of yeah. up there and down there. Yep. And he's the a light that encompasses light. all. Yeah. He encompasses all, exactly. Yeah. So now he's... And then the example of his light, Yes. his yes. light... Is like a is like is like is like a, a niche, yeah, which is what, what's the word? Uh, kamishka, yeah, okay. which is a recess so, so, in a wall. So the example of his light is like a niche mm -hmm. in it. In his light is a is a is a in, is, in the mishkat meaning in the kamishkat in, in, in the, yeah in the mishkat is in a, this space is basically in yeah. this space. In, yeah in this recess in this yeah. recess I mean contain stuff uh, contained within Allah's light as, yes. right our oh, brother is yep, yeah yep, yep. is is okay. is 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 a lamp yeah and then that is no, no, the no, enclosure no. of no, no. like like so okay so meaning the source of his light is not that the niche is his light but rather his light comes from that star that is in the niche get it no no his Allah's light doesn't come from anywhere because Allah is no, 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 of course, but no, meaning, meaning the example of his life, not his life, mm. but the example yep, yep. of his life yep. is like a, a look, Mathalunuri ka mishkati, yeah, ka is like a mishkat, mm. and inside the mishkat, inside the niche is a lamp, is a right? lamp. The lamp is in a glass. So, wait, so wait, let's slow down, let's slow down. Are we agreeing that the niche is a space here? Yeah, yes. it's, it's a space, and are we agreeing that there is a lamp in this space? Yes. Yeah? yeah, so misba is in this space. Then going further, the lamp is in a glass. So we've said the lamp is in this space, but that lamp is also in a. He says it here. Yeah. The lamp is in a glass. Glass. Yeah. So Allah says that in it is a lamp. So in this space is a lamp, yeah. but the lamp is in a glass. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the, the lamp the, is in a glass. Look, look, there's look, this. I think there's something extra here in the sense that, of course, the, the masabi in terms of uh, the, the missiles that they 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 have like a, a construction. No, 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 Mis misbah is not missiles, misbah is lamps. 
Uh, no, I know, I, know, another one. I know, I know, but that's the thing. So um, that the same kind of like, uh, you, you know, if it's a glass, right? If it's glass, the um, like uh, in terms of putting that to the side, in terms of where the stars are, or what, meaning in terms of what the stars are, yeah. the, it, it could be because the mishkat is a recess in something, yeah. right? Yeah. It, there must be a recess or like there must be a wall and, yeah. the, and the wall is recessed. Mm -hmm. It has a hole or, or some sort of opening mm -hmm. in it. And in that opening is a is a is a is a glass lamp, and in the, inside the inside the glass is a star, like or is the is the is the is the light source. Right? What I see, because others translators have said that it's not just glass; they've said glass container. What I see in here is that Allah is describing both the heavens and the earth yeah. are in a glass lantern-like thing. Yeah, that's what I mm. see here: the, yeah. the heavens and the earth, and mm. He's describing. That I think what you said earlier that the whole thing is like a star in itself, is like a brilliantly lit star. The glass, because the glass is containing everything, is glass. You know, you know how they say glass don't. The, 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 right, the, so, the so canopy. Okay. All right. Yeah. So your understanding is that the entire thing is glass. The entire thing. Oh no, no, as in, I, I can't, I can't be sure of that. But Allah is saying, wait, hold on. What does He say? Uh, the heavens and the earth. We know that He's talking about the heavens and the earth, and He's saying it's in a space. Um, in it is a lamp. In that space is a lamp, uh, the lamp, and we know that lamp. Uh, Allah has used that word only to describe the lamps uh, of the heavens. Yeah, the lower heavens, misbah. Mm -hmm. That lamp is misbah. So we know it's the sun, the moon, the stars. So the lamp is the sun, the moon, the stars. Yeah, um, the celestial bodies in that lowest heaven. But what's not clear because it says kokab. I know that because kokab exactly. Allah mentions kokab. Allah doesn't mention but yes. this is why I'm not there yet. With part three, I'm gonna go into because there's Buruj, there's Goku. But but, but there's that's the thing. I think what you've done, I think what yeah. you've done, as, at least for me, yeah. you've given me a a definitive description yeah. of what a star is right. in the first heaven. Meaning the star isn't just some kind of arbitrary kind of light, but right. rather it has a construction to it, right? It has a physical kind of reality, and that's being described here. That the star itself is 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 sorry the light itself is a, first of all it's not like the light of the of the sun it's a star mm. right? right and the star itself is inside a glass structure like a lamp which right. is inside a recess right. in the first heaven okay right? so do you see do you see that we are in this glass no, no. Uh, no. brother Shah can you uh, what can you tell me what picture you have again and brother Oris okay. as well. Okay, so what I see, what I take from this mm. is Allah is describing to us yeah. what the stars look like, right? Mm. So I don't see that because Allah says as if it were a brilliant star. No, no, that, no, that as star. if he gives, he gives the he gives the description of the glass. For me, the topic of this is the heavens and the earth, and the description given is the lamp and the glass. No, 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 no. The so subject, look, the yeah. subject here, the yeah. subject here is the uh, Allah's light, mm. right? Not yes, the, heavens, yes. yeah. the light. Yeah. So Allah's light is like yeah. that, right? Yeah. But now, if you now, but what's interesting is here is being given a, a an actual literal description of, of mm. something, um, something physical, right? Mm. And Allah says it's it's as if it were a brilliant star. So meaning the star, where is the star contained? The star is contained in this type of object, mm. because Allah is saying as His light is as if it were a star, mm. right? And so it's not about the heavens and the earth, but rather it's his light. His light is like a star, which is embedded in a glass, in a, in a mishkat, in the, in, the, in the heavens, right? Okay, so what does the word glass for you do here? Because for me, I'll be honest with you, for me, looking at this and knowing that Allah has only mentioned a zujaja twice in the Quran, and it's both in this ayah, mm -hmm. and no one's ever talked about this before, mm -hmm. in the way that the Christian flat earthers are basically, I'm just going to be honest. The way that the Christian flat earthers talk about the glass dome. Mm -hmm. And for me, it seems like no one has pointed out that it's in the Quran as well. That Allah talks about the heavens and the earth having this glass. Now, what the specifics are for me, I don't know exactly. But for me, it's good to see that Allah has confirmed the glass in the structure and the nature of our heavens. Ah, okay. All right. I get it. I, I can see it now. So right. I was coming from top down. You're coming from 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 down up, right okay. you're coming from the, that the that the that the earth yeah in in the earth there is a there is a there is a lamp and the lamp is inside a glass structure no no is no no, no. 
because you did, you did say correctly that this is about Allah's light. But more specifically, Allah says Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. So this is about Allah's uh, light that's given to the heavens and the earth. Yeah. So that's that's more specifically what this is. And so we are looking at what Allah's put in this heavens and the earth, or how Allah's put this heavens and the earth. Are we in agreement about that? I, mm. yeah. I, I look. I, I mean, look. There's, there's, there's. I did not ways. expect this. <laughs> I, okay, no, right, because I'm trying to think. What you, what you, what are you saying? Like, what are you referring to? Literally, sorry, bro. I'll, I'll be honest with you. For me, it's very um, simple and just ex ex explain, explain what picture you're getting. Who me? In your mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Explain. Oh, brother, I've, so I've got, certain, I've got a certain image, but I want to know what are you saying. Right. Uh, yeah, I just simply see the confirmation of a glass dome. Because uh, it's, okay. in, it's in taf Tafsir Ibn Kathir about the dome as well. And I just see the confirmation of Allah describing the heavens and the earth and saying that in this space, there is a glass. It's like a glass. Yeah. Um, so uh, something that we can relate to. We know what glass is and it's only mentioned twice. So for me, there's a significance of Allah mentioning this glass twice but, but, in this ayah. And for mm -hmm. me, it just confirms that our earth and heavens has got a significant glass structure to it. I look, look here, look, look at this. Yeah, what, what's the what, the important word here is kokab. Is that is the it's as if it was a brilliant star. Meaning mm -hmm. Allah is saying this structure is like a star. Right, right. Mm -hmm. star, I, I see your point. I see your point. So that's the important bit here because, like for example, there's another meaning here is that this is actually in reference to the Prophet Muhammad So mm -hmm. if you Talk yes. about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being, um, because the example of his life, because Allah, it, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the light of Allah, yeah, is, right. is a light of Allah. And his light, if you were to imagine in the world, you know, is, you know, is, is, is in a niche and the niche is the world and yeah. the niche and the, and the, and there's a, there's a glass structure, you know, and then that's the Nuraniyat. Because if you, if, because the people of the heavens, when they look down mm. to the earth, the, the earth shines like stars. Mm -hmm. like, and these are the places of dhikr, the places of worship. They they shine like stars. So the greatest light is the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we reverse that, and then we look, now look from the earth towards the sky, then we would see the stars, and the stars are actual object, like there's it's physical object, right? Right. Okay. And 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 what kind of machinery or what kind of uh, um, shape and and form does it take? It takes the form of a recess in the burj that mm. has a glass uh, like uh, container and in the container is where the star shines right mm -hmm. and then look and something else the, the second point i was going to say about this is that it's lit from a blessed olive tree like uh, from neither of the east nor the west there's something we believe in called uh, sonoluminescence right mm -hmm. there's the phenomenon called son sonoluminescence they call it a star in a jar mm -hmm. this is where where vibrations are sent into water and right. it makes the it, it, it it makes a light come where the, the water vibrates so fast and so violently that mm. it creates a small explosion, right? right. And it could be that the, the, the star is, is, is in a liquid, right? Or the light is being generated from a liquid that's vi being vibrated, but an eternal vibration, right? right? You see what I'm saying? So it's possible that what we can replicate on earth for a split second, mm. Allah is, for Allah, it's like a, it's, it's a perpetual thing, right? right. And so they call it star and jar. It looks like it's 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 a light that's made in water, and mm -hmm. it looks like a star, mm -hmm. right? So that's a possible explanation. But what I find amazing is that the kaukab, the that the, the star actually is given shape, mm -hmm. a recess and mishkat mm -hmm. within the wall. The wall has a glass container, and inside the container, that's where the star is. So that's right where, now, where is this glass? So so what in my mind, if mm -hmm. I was from the earth looking up, mm -hmm. I would say that the canopy. Yeah. That the, the, the canopy is the structure within the canopy are mishkat, are all of these uh, uh, niches, mm -hmm. and within the niche is the fixed star, right? And uh, and and that's where the stars are. The stars are fixed into the like uh, gems into the sky or something, right? Um, Isn't know, this verse talking in a you singular? Sorry, sorry, you didn't answer my question, brother. So, where is the glass? <laughs> Oh, the, yeah, so so look, it is in a glass. So Allah is saying the lamp, the lamp is in a glass, right? Because think about the lamp itself. Lamp doesn't mean like a glass lamp. It means the fire, right? The fire has to be contained in something. Right? Oh, so you're and, saying that the glass is not a literal glass? No, no, I'm saying it's literal, 
But I'm saying that the lamp, look, the lamp and the siraj, the siraj is different from the misbah, yeah? Because the siraj is inside a misbah. Because if it's water, then it has to be protected, right? Yeah. Or there has to be some sort of, uh, you know, like, you know, some sort of protection here. So where, what, where, where, where are the misbah? So the misbah are inside the mishkat. Uh, no, no, I mean, like, um, in, in terms of heavens and earth, uh, where are the misbah? As in... So uh, the mis so, so the misbah inside the recesses, right? No, based on what we just went through before. Okay, so that's different. So, in, in terms of these, you mean that's a different misbah. So, so no, not that there's a different misbah that the same material is used. Do you because, see what I'm saying? Because okay, this is this is how I logically came to this deduction, because misbah is only mentioned a few times in the Quran. Yeah, sorry, uh, just bear with me on this. Yeah. Misbah is only mentioned a few times in the Quran. I think something like four or five, a handful of times, yeah? Misbah, mm -hmm. maybe not even that. And I looked at, so these are the ayats. There's only these two. I think there's only these two ayats. 41.12 and 67.5. So in 41.12, Allah says that he adorned, that's beautified, the nearest heaven with lamps. That's Misbah. Yeah. yeah? So that's what I'm asking. In your mind, do you know this? Do you realize? Oh, this? okay, yeah, M Mafi. Sorry, I got mixed up with Miss right. Pants. Zujaja. Zujaja means the glass. Yeah, right, sorry. right. Yeah, yeah. So, so wait. Let me, let me, let me, let me build up to this again. Maybe it's because I've looked at this, and maybe forgive me. I, I'm, I might have not made it clear. So Misba is only mentioned a handful. Of, yeah, Misba is only mentioned a handful of times. Hmm. So this is one of the ayats where Allah says that He's put the Misba where, in the nearest heaven yeah am i, yep. am I right mm -hmm. so he's and, put and, the misbah in the nearest heaven yeah so what do we understand those misbahs being all of the scholars agree these are the celestial bodies the heavenly yep. bodies yeah the stars which include the sun the moon and the stars yeah i don't i don't i don't i don't um i don't believe them that, that to mean the the sun and the moon i'm meaning the sun and the moon the celestials but yeah. more specifically is to do with the stars this is the the lamps are to do with the stars right because right. the I, look, I looked at previous scholars and they uh, uh, all pretty much said the the celestial bodies even if you do the uh, search you'll find celestial bodies is referring to sun moon and stars and uh, no, no no look 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 think because in our cosmology right mm. think about it um if if you were to have a lamp the moon is not a lamp mm. right the moon's light is not even it's, it's a light it's a munir but it's not a lamp Mm -hmm. Allah refers to Siraj in terms of Sir Siraj Munira that the that the sun is a Siraj. The sun mm -hmm. is like you would say the sun is a lamp, but not mm -hmm. the moon. And and uh, and so you, you can, the moon can't. The be, moon is reflected light. The, whether it's reflective light or not, it doesn't it doesn't make things apparent. It's, its light is not so bright as to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the moon is is completely dark. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Sometimes mm -hmm. the moon when it wanes completely, like when it turns into a crescent, mm -hmm. you can barely see it. Right, mm. so it cannot be lamp, and these right. are perpetual lamps right, right. because then it would be like, oh, only sometimes it's a lamp, and then sometimes it's not. Right? Okay, okay. Sorry, and, and sorry. Sun, I, I would like, I would like to wrap this up actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. we're wrapping up, and yeah. the sun only appears during the day, and when the sun appears, there there are no stars. Right. right? So it has to be just the stars. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? Right? This verse was uh, kind of. Uh, I I didn't expect this, unfortunately. Uh, but, but, but maybe the, maybe in that there needs to be some clarification in this. This is why this is why it's for me that this is in reference to the, what we believe is only in reference to this cosmology. Whatever they believe, they had a different understanding. Yeah, different that that I have no doubt about because yeah. this verse is uh, referring to this cosmology. But what it actually entails is yeah a bit now, beyond and, him. As and, and exactly so yeah, my, yeah and I'll agree it's not clear. But all, yeah. the main point I want to make is. So when they say about the firmament, the glass dome, I just find it interesting that in the Quran, there's only two times Allah's mentioned the word zujaja, which is glass, 100%. See, when I mentioned this to you when we are at Brother Farhan's, I'm glad you mentioned about the, you mentioned about, what's her name, uh, Queen Sheba in Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam's uh, palace, and you said that's also glass, because I checked it. Because if you look at this, and notice how, uh, yeah, so not to be confused with crystal, which is kawarir. So, so I, you know, I thank you for that because you did mention that. And I looked it up when she enters the palace. So Queen Sheba enters the palace and she thought it was a deep pool of water. And then she uncovered her shins 
to wade through. Indeed, it oh, is yeah. so it's, not, it's not the judge, it's the Qawair, yeah. Qawair. Yes. So th this, this is the point I'm making. Some people think that that is glass as well. They've incorrectly translated that as glass. But when you look at the Arabic, this is crystal and is mentioned again mm. here, Qawair. I, yeah. Sorry, if you just bear with me. So Qawair is used to describe uh, the crystal uh, in the hereafter in paradise. Uh, the type of cups, the crystal cups made of fine silver or something like that. So that's go, that's uh, kawarir, which some have incorrectly translated as glass, but Allah only mentions glass twice, zujaja. And that's that's the main point I'm trying to make here, that people don't, uh, they seem to miss this. The why would Allah mention this word only twice here, um, and everyone agrees that it is glass. But, but, but don't answer, don't answer. I do I believe it as... Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, let yeah. people think about it. I don't want any. We could we, we could perhaps just dis discuss this verse again with fresh fresh fresher mind. I I, I think I think I think what would be good also is if we can kind of make a maybe like a, an illustration or something just to get some kind of a visual component to yeah. kind of uh, understanding this a bit more. But Alhamdulillah, for me, this has been an absolute mind blowing thing because it has confirmed certain things in my mind in terms of what the what the sky in terms of. On, in the canopy, in the Burj, the, the structure of the stars and how they have a physical component, which is referenced in the Quran. So mm. I'm pretty certain of that. But of course, you know, inshallah, there's something to discuss. But yeah. that's my what I've taken from that. Alhamdulillah. So the main thing, so the main thing I'm hoping that can be taken away from this point. And again, I'm trying not to push anything, um, but I can't help it. <laughs> so in the dictionary, you will find, in the dictionary, you will find glass at its roots so but, 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 but look but i mean yeah. what what makes it like what would be so different like you know if the stars are contained in the glass mm. and the earth is contained in a glass do you see but but we we even believe that i hear what you're saying i hear what you're saying yeah. you know what i'm saying like that's like you know the, the, yeah so the main point i want is that there seems to be this thing that's missed about how allah describes the heavens and the earth and whereas if you're looking in science today none of this is even being spoken of right yeah. are you with me yeah that's yes. right Absolutely. do you agree uh, where, absolutely, whether, we get, absolutely. whether we get some of our details differing from each other in understanding but the main point is the main aspects of that none of this is existing in what they're selling us basically that's right absolutely mm. right. in a glass container and and i and i would imagine so i would imagine this 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 world is in a glass container but like we mentioned in the beginning there is a layer of water there is a soft if this is a glass container then it's a soft glass okay i i, I love you i love you again now yeah uh, was yeah. yusuf going to mention something at the end yeah yes please yes please. uh yeah yeah so what i was gonna say is that i think it would be fitting if um we spoke about um the the problem of ridiculing the other side mm. and i think that uh as as the presentation has gone on like there is a historicity to it and there's trauma to it and uh, i've not been part of that so what I'm trying to say is that I'm looking at I'm, I'm looking at this thing from an outside perspective, and I see uh, two uh, lovely groups groups of brothers who are going tit for tat, mm -hmm. and that's what I wanted to speak about. It's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the presentation that you've given is um, wonderful. You've brought a lot of ayat of evidence to uh, substantiate your ideas and your argument. And you're not ridiculing the other side. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Yes. Okay. It's, it's from and, Allah. It's from Allah. And I'm I think, fine. And, and, I, I did yeah, get yeah. I did get caught caught up a little bit before, but I'm away from that now. Yeah, right. yeah. And so, like, uh, so I'm just speaking of the ummah, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to say is that the, the other side um, should. I'm not saying that they should. I I will hope that the other side will, will just look at the evidences that you're bringing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not even and, necessarily and, agree, but just I, exactly. I, I just want to say something, Yusuf, on what you have said. Like what I mentioned earlier, I think there's a new breed, and I think there's a new. Uh, there's, I, th I think these are the seedlings of a new um, paradigm being introduced. Where look at that, us, we are the people of adab now. When it comes to the intelligence of, of you know, of, of the scholarship of, of Islam and Quran, we have more adab than some of the people of 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 uh, scholarship, meaning when they address a topic like this, they do it with ridicule, scorn, they, they humiliate them, they do all of this stuff, and they're meant to be the ulama, 
that we are supposed to look up to. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I, I completely agree with you on that point. And <laughs> I think it, it does, um, it does, uh, it's useful to bring that point up in, in this current conversation, but I don't think we should dwell too much no, on no, it. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There, there, so there, what, what, there, go on, go on, Zadi. There needs to be a scholarly rigor. For example, if someone was to rebut, rebuttal this particular, I mean, our, our disposition, they would have to, they would have to uh, dispel and refute each and every single verse that we've presented. Mm -hmm. And they would have to refute the arguments that we've verbally presented uh, alongside the verses. So they have to, instead of name calling, or saying, oh, you guys are this, you guys are that, and all of this, they have to on systematically dispel each each argument that we have made, and that will that is something that can be respected. The, 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 no, no, I, I I agree with you guys on that point, right? But um, you see, it's coming from like uh, you are right. I'm not saying that you're wrong about it, but what I'm trying to impress upon the other side is that this is not a competition and this is not a fight. Yeah. Right. And, and, and we should not be as brothers and sisters within Islam doing and behaving in such a way that uh, we are um, banning each other from each other's company. Mm. You, you get what I'm trying to say with that? Look. And so, yes, unfortunately, <laughs> that has, seems to have been what has happened. But yeah. moving forward from that, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Moving uh, forward look, from that heuristic. Her Look, even look, look. So, for example, look, Yusuf, I'm, you know, I'm coming from a certain background. Like, I have certain contacts. I have certain people. Some, in terms of teachers and stuff, um, because of some of the things I've said in terms of the pandemic, and even, you know, they found out about me, you know, believing in the world being level and things. I, I literally have been cancelled. I've been cancelled. Like, uh, you know, I'm not invited to certain things anymore. I've been kicked out of certain groups and things, right? And even though now it was, it was proven that we were right about the pandemic. Still, to this day, because of their own weaknesses, they have never come back. They've never apologized. Nothing. They've just oh. as if nothing has happened, right? Meaning, I'm still cancelled. I'm still yeah. completely cancelled. But the right? great By thing, brother, is the great thing is you keep your composure. You keep your adab, like how you said. You keep your love right. for them. You keep all of this. But yeah, you're right. This is a very difficult thing because I do compare this similar, not the same, but similar to the pandemic situation. Yeah. You couldn't. You couldn't people were going to be thrown out about that topic because it was a very divisive issue. It was a very important issue. So I go back to what I said earlier on is through conflict, as difficult as that might be, I've seen good results come through conflict um, because it pushes people to dig more or to prove the other side wrong or to check. Yeah, yeah, themselves. I know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you and I'm digesting all of those points. And mm. had that not occurred, you wouldn't be here today. We're Absolutely. making so the arguments sense, that you're making here today. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, what, but what I'm suggesting or what I'm hoping or what I'm trying to promote is that let's move forward away from oh. that a bad taste in our mouths. Yeah, yeah. And let's treat each other with respect and dignity that is incumbent upon us as Omar. Well, yeah. let's hope this video, after I edit it, inshallah, let's hope that this has the, has some effect, inshallah. 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 Yeah. And, and I, I hope I hope that uh, uh, anything that I might have said just now is not hurting anybody, because that was not my intention. No, 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 no. no. But, uh, it's perfect, my intention perfect is, finish. Yeah, perfect finish. please. Yeah, so let, 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 let us get back to being brotherly, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Uh, I would uh, just, uh, just stay for five minutes after the recording that is okay that yeah is. yeah okay so i'll just finish off with the dua um jazakallah care for everyone uh for attending especially um brother shanur um uh, sadi as well jazakallah care for your input uh, it's made this easier it's not easy to do these things uh, may allah bless you may allah reward you abundantly for all the work that you're doing and um oh, yeah. yeah inshallah inshallah we can we can continue to do better inshallah um, okay, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah wa nashar wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa tuba laik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Do you want to conserve your wealth the way of Allah and His messengers? 
using the same method established by the Khalifa Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu and implemented by Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu, then consider purchasing gold and silver coins and bullion bars from sunnacurrency.com where they use astonishing Islamic designs on mint 24 karat gold and pure silver. Sunna Currency is now certified by and a proud member of the Islamic Monetary Council IMC. This is the Islamic solution to the current global uncertainty. This is what Allah made halal for us. Invest in precious metals in the way of the authentic Sunnah which has intrinsic value. Protect your wealth by having it in your hands and not someone else's. Please use the link in the description box to get a special endgame discount on your purchase and get it dispatched today. By using the endgame discount code during your purchase, you can also help us build and progress on our projects for the Ummah, inshaAllah.